fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. Saying it. Fantastic afternoon, fantastic freedom. No matter where you are in the world, I'm a song piker in this Dawson. I'm uh, coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles. Folks, we're live and alive. This is a 60 degree and sunny day here in California, Los Angeles. Folks, the greatest city and the greatest state and the greatest nation on the planet. I'm live and alive. I'm a song piker in this Dawson. I'm broadcast. And I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today is a beautiful day. Today is a wonderful day. Today is a special day today. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today, well, today's a Tuesday. That's right. It's a fucking Tuesday, lads. Let me tell you, fucking Tuesday, yeah? It's a Tuesday, second day, second day of Ramadan, right? Big fucking day. Every every single day is a big fucking day, but especially on Tuesdays, we do something a little bit extra special in it. We do something a little bit extra special. Ramadan Mubarak, I say to all my Muslim brothers, right? My Muslim brothers, I tell them it's fucking Tuesday, Ramadan Mubarak. But listen up, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, might have fucking said. That we need to do, we need to do Ramadan, we need to fast, yeah? But we need to do a fucking heist as well! That's right! That's why I got the fucking Umma with me, yeah? I got fucking Sean King, Sean King and the ones in fucking Chews, yeah? Recent revert, he's got the zealous, he's got the zealotry. We're gonna get Jihad Joe as the wheel man, and we're doing a fucking heist in it! That's right! It's me, Jihad Joe, and Sean King. <laughs> That's right. We're restoring a fucking caliphate. Get with the program, lads. Uh, man sounding like a bald and bankrupt travel video. <laughs> that's, so, that's only three lines, bruv. Three is all we need, bruv. The fourth is Allah. <laughs> You're looking extra gay today, Hassan Hassel. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> or fuck you. I don't know. Depending on what kind of energy you had with that. Um, what happened to Andrew Tate? What, did Andrew Tate go to jail or something? I genuinely don't know. Why are people saying Andrew Tate in the chat? Wait, what? Wait, a lawyer representing the alleged victims of Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate in the UK told the Swedish publication Afton Bladet that Aiden Ross's message from Andrew, which was shared during a stream about the brothers planning to leave Romania, accelerated their recent arrest. Oh, ha, ha. Ha 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 oh 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 my days oh my fuck 
fucking days, lad. What a beautiful, glorious fucking Tuesday it is. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? It's a Ramadan miracle, bro. What? Oh, that's it. If that get the oh, she oruch bozduk, oruch gigi, oruch gigi. Not that I was already, not that I was fasting, but god damn. Oh, stop, 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 stop. This is too good. This is too good. No, no. It's a Ramadan miracle, mate. Fucking hell. That is crazy. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> if you were fasting today and then you found out about this news and you nutted, sorry, your fast is broken. Okay. It's as though, it's as though Allah sent a piece of shawarma, mate, to your fucking mouth directly, right? It's, it made you come. It made you ejaculate, yeah? It's like, it's like it happened. It happened on its own, yeah? It's like, you might as well take an extra day and fast again. Do it again and get a do-over, right? Extra tahini. Get the extra tahini and the shawarma, mate. And then do a do-over. Make up for it, yeah? It's, it's fine. It's all right. You can't nut during Ramadan? No, dude. You can't nut between uh, sunup and sundown because then you've broken your fast because you got dirty. Um, but you can jerk off after. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest memes usually is like, uh, like on TV, people will ask like the imams uh, if they can like break their fast by nutting. Like this is like... It's like a meta to ask, like, during Ramadan, there's, like, imams on TV that you ask questions about, like, what breaks my fast? What constitutes breaking of the fast? Like, is this haram? Blah, blah, blah. And, like, I remember being young and seeing clips of, like, dudes asking straight up a television imam whether it's okay to fucking nut to break your fast. Does edging break your fast? Um... Oh, my God, that's such a good question. I don't know. Like, maybe gooners actually are clear. Because, like, gooning might be halal as long as you don't nut, right? Like, if you're edging. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. Um, okay. Well, this is a part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, about what's going on in my life. Obviously, we have, like, some breaking news that I just found out about. Um, made specific. Specifically. Um, thank you for the Kaya dancing TikTok. Yeah, last night at the end of the broadcast, um... And then uh, after ending the broadcast, I I saw my girlfriend offer to pay for my haircut. Should I be worried? Does my shit look whack? Yes. Or even if it doesn't look whack, she thinks it does. Hey, hey, hey. Get down, baby. Down. Good girl. Um, Ramadan must be dope. I love breakfast for dinner. Bro, you can have breakfast for dinner without having to fucking fast the whole day. Oh, my God. Every day there's another person that comes in here and says, Dune 2 was mid, not going to lie, trying to trigger me into a three-hour fuckathon talking about how uh, Denis Villeneuve is actually responsible for the next wave of, like, Islamic reverts because of how phenomenal Dune is as a masterpiece. Um, and it's just, like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. This is low-tier bait, okay? It's low-tier bait. Just say you don't appreciate peak and move on. It's okay. Be like, I am just an overall, I am the type of person who overall hates joy. Okay. I am the type of person who overall hates movies. I just, I think that like it is, uh, it should be illegal to make people feel something in the moving pictures. I'm an uncultured person. And that's why I don't like Dune 2, which is fine. Like, that's fine. You can be all of those things. Just you can't be all of those things and come in here and act like your statement holds weight. In this community of all communities, it does not. You can be wrong. You can be wrong in, in a laughable way, and that's cool. But, you know. Bro, did you finally find Vizvim that fits? This is a, um, yeah, this is, I've had this for years at this point. Uh, but yeah, it does fit me. There's like two shirts I own that fit me. Um, but even then, barely. Okay, so. I watched Dune 2 last night. It was amazing. Thank you for hyping it up and convincing me to watch it. You got it, mate. As far as personal news goes, I last night I did a Kaya dancing TikTok. Uh, it did not bang, which is fine. I mean, it's I love her and I, I will keep making I will keep making uh, a TikTok star anyway. Actually, I mean, There's it did fine. My dog started doing, and I'm wondering if it's just my dog or if your guys' dogs do this too. 
First, it's like innocuous and innocent. You know what I mean? Okay, she's not even paying attention, right? Look at this. Watch this. Okay, hold on. Chill. Okay, all right. Okay, you want uppies, huh? Okay, watch this. I'm going to put the camera over here. And I'm going to try to go hands-free. I don't even know how to do that. Look at that. She thinks she's human. Why? You're not human. What is this? Since when? It's crazy. Also, she's so big. Look at how big she is. You're crazy. You're crazy. I love knowing how much you spend on training, and now she does this. I mean, it's fine. I could train her to not do it very easily, but I, but I like that she does it. I think it's cute. But I also am a little worried. Okay, okay, okay. It's probably not a good thing to train her to do this, right? I assume. I don't want 100 pound old her jumping on a kid like this. But it's there's a new thing that. My um, don't gaslight her by calling her crazy. <laughs> So funny. Don't know if you have the thread of her clips from the hearing, but here you go. Uh, I'm sure Thamasius has it somewhere and he'll link it. But yeah, like this is a great take. If she does it to Ray, I think Ray would fall. Like, I think she would kill Ray <laughs> if she did that. They are the same like height and the same weight at this point. So I feel like, like, that's what I mean. That's what I'm like worried about. Um, How come you have good clothes on for one? Shut up, bitch. I always got decent fucking fits. What the what you mean? What you mean? Um, anyway, thoughts on what Ben said here? I don't know what he said. Uh, but we'll take a look at it. Anyway, uh, and then I watched Shogun, and let me tell you, okay, I will move mountains for uh Lady, what was her name? Lady Mikiro. I will move mountains for her. I think uh that Lady Mariko is the goat, okay? She's uh Lady Mariko has been disrespected greatly, okay? I will say this. I will say this once and for all. Lady Mariko, so disrespected, comes from a long lineage. They did the worst thing to her, folks. This is not a spoiler, by the way. Shut the fuck up. I'm not saying anything, like, important because I don't know anything that's important. Lady Mariko, coming from a long line, big disrespect, big disrespect. Believe me, folks. She's working so hard. She's working extra hard. She's working long and hard. Hardest worker, folks. She's trying to do her very best. She's she's Catholic. Loves Christ. Loves Jesus Christ. That's Mariko Sama. Loves Jesus Christ. And now also falling for a Protestant. I don't know. I don't know. Believe me, folks. I don't know where this is going. But I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Believe me. Dude, I, 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 I'm doing like boomer Instagram memes over here because like I need an outlet so desperately to make content, I guess. And because I'm not on Twitter, shit posting, I've resorted to shit posting on fucking on my Instagram. Also, fail son, lame, can't grow a beard, incel, a classic, definitely gonna end the Toronaga lineage. Like easy peasy, okay? Not even a question. That's a fucking lock. You know what I'm saying? sucks absolutely sucks as opposed to smart handsome good sense of humor can grow a beard has a tough side to him obviously but also a gentle kind side as well constantly trying to figure out you know uh what happens when you die okay that's that's actually deep like that's a deep thing tactician brilliant tactician can grow a beard vol cell voluntarily celibate likes to watch doesn't like to fuck could fuck if he wanted to doesn't do it anyway because he's the best okay i'm just saying this guy is the goat okay the real hero most likely the real hero most likely of the story not the white guy because i'm not racist and that's why i see the story for what it actually is okay he is a bit of a cuck he is a cuck i i i know but other than that he's very cool i think he's a vol cell he doesn't care about sex he just doesn't care he's not a cuck he's a voyeur actually he's a voyeur it's different um he's a voyeur isn't this based on the age of the warring states but all the historical names are different yes uh it is historical fiction so it's like from that era and there's a lot of similarities with with what things that actually transpired but it's actually not um but it's actually not historical like it's not historically accurate speaking of historical accuracy i watched alexander i finished it um i will say this much Netflix, come on, season two, chop, chop, pick it the fuck up. 
Um, the lady who is actually working in Alexandria f tr to try and find Alexander's tome, by the way, is literally my mom, but Greek. It's so funny. I think that's part of the reason why I love the Alexander uh, uh, show. The tomb, not the tome, sorry. The tomb, is that how you say it? Like, basically, my mom, but Greek, dedicated her entire life to just, like, archaeological findings, like, trying to find Alexander's, like, uh, body, potentially. So, um, yeah. What is this? The dueling ideologies of Rise of Ronin, pro-shogunate, anti-shogunate, and Western forces. Oh, my God. Guys, it is Ramadan. I cannot nut this hard. Okay? Stop. Stop playing with my feelings. Stop playing with my soul. I have already nutted one time learning about Aiden Ross and Andrew Tate. You are making me nut again. Okay? Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Stop. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Holy fuck, dude. All right, we're gonna do all of this. We're gonna... I'm blasting off. I'm literally blasting off. No pun intended. I've already blasted off in my pants, but I'm also blasting off uh on top of you know the, the on the, the the twitter the platform what is happening to me okay aiden ross gets andrew tate arrested robert oh i started watching warrior as well uh i started watching warrior it's kind of cheesy but i like it uh this was a hbo show that was like heavily recommended and um i i it got on netflix so i was like fuck it finally i'm gonna watch it and honestly <sighs> honestly i don't know it's it's pretty good it's it's a little cheesy though it's definitely it started off a little cheesy it's cheese too many sex scenes warrior got canceled beware <laughs> that's such a funny warrior got canceled beware um yeah kaya is tired because i took her ass to the park this morning and she sprinted for like an hour with other dogs she refuses to play fetch, but she plays fetch with other animals. Okay? She will play fetch with other animals. She refuses to, to do anything else. She will, she literally will be like, oh, no, it's great. Like, I'm at the dog park. This is my favorite. I love the dog park. Look at all the toys I have here. And the toys are not actually toys. It's other dogs. Like, she literally is like, oh, no, this is great. I will play tug of war with a dog. Not like with another dog and a, a piece of rope. I'm talking like she will tug the dog. I'm, I'm obviously exaggerating. Like she's very good at play. Um, she, she's very uh, balanced in the sense that um, in the sense that like she loves she loves dishing it out. She'll she'll do ground and pound like she puts her entire fucking body weight on top of a dog. Like will jump up and like slap a dog down and stuff. But then she'll also be submissive like she gets on her back and uh, and will let the other dog like have fun. You know what I mean? Like she doesn't just dominate. She also uh, will will play the role of a submissive uh, dog as well. It's very good. It's like it's a it's a really healthy, balanced way to play. That means that um, that means that like she's not selfish and annoying and abusive, but instead um, just to have she's just playing to have fun guys stop saying she's a switch and she's burst she's a baby she's my baby and you guys are being kind of fucking weird using sex terms i i'm saying submissive but i don't mean it in a sex term way i mean it in like the normal way in the way that you would talk about an animal okay i thought muslim could have had pets inside not trying to be rude i'm just uneducated in islam bitch i'm drinking coffee right now the fuck do you mean i'm the first of all any rule that any religion has can be fucking totally interpreted differently. That's number one. Okay. Um, a lot of Muslims on average will be like afraid of dogs, I think, but still it doesn't matter. They're more cat people. I think Muslims are more cat people. It has nothing to do with the religion itself though. Other than the fact that cats are canonically Muslim, like across the board internationally. But, um, like my grandfather, my grandfather is not like a religious person at all. Any fucking doesn't understand why I have a dog in the house. You know what I mean? He thinks that like it's dirty and there's supposed to be one rule and one rule only for the dog. It's just a cultural thing. And that's like the dog is supposed to stay outside and it's supposed to protect the house. Like what the fuck are you doing with the dog inside the house? You know, is like kind of his approach to it. Did this annoy you in Turkey? No, you get, you, you get used to it. 
This one is just a double guy, but they also have Zurna too. Like, I'm, this is like, he only has like, um, he's seen only half of the process. There's also a Zurna too, which is a horn. But usually it's double uh, to wake people up for uh, Sahur, to, to eat before the sun goes up. Because like, because if you don't do that, then you're fucked. Uh, Shaoman! YC, the Chinese New York white guys in Turkey has a video out. Yeah, I, I heard he went to a hammam. Isn't that cheating? What? <laughs> no, dude. Why would it be cheating? It's like saying, isn't it cheating if you eat first thing as soon as the sun goes down? No, it's not cheating at all. That's like the allotted window. That's the whole point. Those are just the rules. Anyway. Um, all right, let's blast off. Uh, Aiden Ross gets Andrew Tate arrested. Robert Herr talks Biden's age and senility bro it's shama new york city because he lives in new york in morocco we have medfas um shout out to aiden ross shout out on god that's a w king uh on god no disrespect i didn't know you you were with it like that i didn't know you you had it in you i didn't i didn't know you had that dog in you on god ww can i get some w's in the chat can i get some w's in the chat for aiden w for real aiden that's right. For real, for real, straight up. This man, dude, it's so funny. There's just, that's so hilarious, dude. Yeah, come on. Come on. It, it feels fake. Like, it feels like Aiden Ross gets Andrew Tate arrested. Robert Hurt talks Biden's agent's senility and more. Let's get some W's in the chat. It's like a little treat that we get. You know what I mean? In a sea of, in a sea of like, awful news overall there's like a little bit of a treat that you get i guess yeah i saw the evan hill banger um did you see tate's white supremacy dog whistle this week and it's still weird muslim bros sim for that guy yes bro because a lot of people don't understand first of all american muslims are very different than like uk muslims okay in their attitude in general but also in 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 like the muslim community there are plenty of fucking dumbasses too it's not like it's not like exclusive to white Christians. Like Muslims can be hogs too. And there are a shit ton of them. Okay. And it sucks. And there's not really too, there's not really anything you do about it. Like a lot of these dudes don't realize that <clears throat> they are hyping up a dude who is just a grifter. They're, the thing is like a lot of Muslims also love when, when people convert, like they love that shit. They're like, oh, this is so sick. I get it. Like, they basically think, like, oh, this guy's, like, showing respect. They're used to, in the Western world, what they're used to is hatred. What they're used to is anger and resentment. So when someone actually turns around and reverts to Islam, they're like, oh, how beautiful. This is perfect. And because of that, I don't think they have, like, a, I don't think they have a way of, of, of legitimately reading that when, like, a grifter is doing it. Because they get really excited. <laughs> um, that's it. Do they like Sean King now? I mean, they already been liking Sean King internationally. Sean King, like all all jokes aside, all jokes aside, I think like straight up Sean King Rated is beloved in like in like the Palestinian communities. You know what I mean? And pro Palestinian communities for for the most part. Many of you probably have parents that are like really invested in Sean King if they're Arab. Anyway. Crazy to think about, but true yet. No, I'm telling you, you got some aunties out there who are fucking probably ride or die for Sean King. Many of them don't know his like, like background in general. Um, all right, so let's get started on the clip that got Andrew, Andrea, Andrew Jebediah Tate arrested. Lads, lads. Not every day do you hear fucking beautiful news on a Tuesday about an oil brother like this, yeah. Fucking hell. Turns out, turns out, Andrew Tate in the mo- uh, <laughs> Aiden Ross in the most shitty Anchman way possible. Shouts out to Lil Overall for that joke. Aiden Ross, one of the fucking major tater tots, turned out and turned- Andrew Tate in on a fucking Tuesday, nonetheless. Fucking hell, mate. Fucking hell, lads. Here's the clip. Let's roll the fucking video. Um, Andrew had hit me up. He said, hey, I'm going to be uh, leaving Romania soon and probably never coming back. If you want to come over, 
and do a week of long streams and content before I leave. I think it'll be big and it's never, it's, I'm sorry, he said it's not, it's basically now or never. Um, so there's nothing funnier than, okay, I thought this was just Andrew, uh, uh, Aiden Ross being stupid. Turns out it's Andrew Tate also being stupid. They're both stupid. I had not watched this clip until this very moment, but it is fucking hilarious that Andrew Tate, who is under criminal investigation, is fucking dumb enough to be like, yeah, I'm going to leave the country. Hello, I am going to illegally run away from the country where I am being prosecuted. Hello, Aiden. Like, it turns out it's not, you're dumb for telling Aiden something like this because he's going to obviously reveal it. But you're also incredibly dumb for tweeting this, or not, I mean, tweeting this, sorry, texting this in general. Like, what are you, guys, guys, okay, listen to me, okay, crime tip. If you're gonna do a crime, okay, don't fucking t text anyone about the crime that you're doing. Are you stupid? That will be used against you in the investigation. Don't fucking text the crime. Don't Google, like, how to do a murder, how to hide a body. Because if you do any of those things, right, and don't even do it incognito, they can still take that shit from your ISP. What a lot of people don't comprehend, what a lot of people don't get is that, like, all of that stuff can be used against you in a court of law. So if you're going to do crime, which don't do it, obviously, but if you're going to do the crime, don't fucking Google it, dumbass. Don't Google it. Don't text it. You're, you're stupid. You're a stupid person for texting and Googling and especially stupid for telling someone like fucking Aiden Ross. Hoist it on your own petard, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible stuff. Incredible. Couldn't have happened in a funnier fucking way. You know, and, you know, and, and this is just, I told you guys this year, you know, it's a week of content, right? Um, and again, guys, this might be the last time we ever do this. So it's kind of like we got to take advantage of it now because, hey, bro, it's, it's, it's just, it's basically like, Aiden is an L man's ain't no way. What, what is he doing? Like, what is he doing? Also, my, my take on, for the record, my, my take on for the Romanian criminal justice system. Guys, come on now, okay? Come on. Finish the investigation. Wrap it up. The fuck are we doing? Like, as much as I uh, personally enjoy how funny it is that he's, like, constantly in legal struggles and whatnot, but, like, I would like to, you know, I would like to see some justice. And... Honestly, like it is getting to a point where it's like a little bit crazy how long it's fucking taking. You know what I mean? It's a little bit crazy how long it's taking. Like, come on now. Come on now, dog. Come on, big dog. What are we doing here? Obviously, the situation is probably even way more dog shit for poor people uh, that are in the throes of the criminal justice system, even in a place like the United States of America which has significantly more resources. It still doesn't matter. There are plenty of people who are like locked in fucking Rikers awaiting a court date and uh, in torturous conditions. But like, come on. Like, yeah, it's like that. Um, and then um, Andrew had hit me up. He said, hey, I'm going to be uh, leaving Romania soon and probably. Anyway, that's so funny that this happened. Here is the post. From McCure, Jury and Partner, statement in response to Andrew Tate being detained in Romania and issued with a UK arrest warrant. Uh, McHugh, jury, and partners represents four British women who accuse Andrew Tate of rape and serious physical and sexual assaults. Our client's allegations were the subject of an investigation in the United Kingdom by the Hertfordshire Constabulary. This morning, it came to our attention that Tate has been detained. Um, wait, hold on. In Romania, after an arrest warrant, an extradition request was issued to uh, by the authorities in the United Kingdom to Romania in respect of allegations of sexual offenses during the same period in which our clients alleged Tate raped and assaulted them. Last week, we received the information that Tate might have been planning to flee Romania. Hold on. Where the fuck did it go? Oh, here it is. We wrote to the British police to bring this to their attention and to urge them to immediately seek a warrant for Tate's detention in Romania and extradition to the UK. So... As far as I understand it, what is going on is once the Romanian court case is over, he will be extradited into the UK. Um, I don't know if he has like a free moment in between where his freedom of travel is like somewhat restricted, uh, where he could just like legally escape to Dubai or some shit or a place where like there's no extradition policy to the UK. Um, but beyond that, uh, if he wants to operate in the Western world, I suspect that he will be uh, he will get clapped up 
Israel Arc, no shot. I mean, the Israel Arc actually does track, but that's the that's grifting in the other direction. It tracks with his crimes, um, but it doesn't actually it, it doesn't actually matter because like he there's two ways out. Okay, listen, listen. If you have caught if you have been caught doing sex crimes, okay, there's two ways out of it. All right, you either immediately go to Israel, no extradition policy, and many people do that. Okay, many people do that. Uh, or you go to uh, either Russia or one of these other countries. And if you're like really right wing and you've talked shit about Israel, you got to go to Russia. Okay. If you're really right wing and love Israel, you go to Israel. That's how it works. Um, also, Aiden said in the clip he knew Tate was getting locked up. He didn't say that for a while. Yeah. He unfortunately, he already went. Where does Polanski fall into that? Okay, Polanski falls into the uh, the other, the one other area, okay, which is France, where it's legal and encouraged. <laughs> Jeez. It's not top of the hour, dude. What the fuck? You can't hit me with that. It's 11.49. Okay, yes. If you win Oscars, then it doesn't matter. Okay, you could be in France. Um, so while we cannot and do not comment on any knowledge of ongoing investigations, we are grateful to the British authorities have decided to take action, um, and take heed of our concerns and the concerns of our clients. Tate is accused of serious criminal offenses against a large number of victims and must be held accountable for those actions. We will be releasing a fuller statement on behalf of our clients shortly. That's what he said. Um, okay. All seriousness, uh, like all jokes aside, if we're going to be serious about it, like I've said, I think, you know, we need to figure out what the fuck's going on. Uh, conclude the Romanian court case and then uh, have the court case play itself out in the UK as well. Um, really funny though that like Andrew Tate is stupid enough to fucking text that he's gonna like flee the country when there's a second uh, when there's a second court case happening potentially in the UK. So that's really dumb of him, and it's additionally dumb of him to say it to Aiden Ross, who is a fucking dumbass. Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate have been arrested again by Romanian authorities under a UK warrant. They were arrested over sexual misconduct in two separate cases from 2012 to 2015. Love is blinding and he loves Aiden. I think he loves clout. It is wild to me how much this dude is like in and out of, of uh, prison and jail and shit though. Oh shit. The Romanian courts have approved the request to extradite Andrew Tate. Bucharest. A Romanian court has approved a request for Britain to extradite internet personality andrew tate but postponed doing so until romanian trials proceedings finish the court said on tuesday it had also ruled that tate and his brother tristan should be released from police custody immediately the tates have been detained for 24 hours pending a ruling on the british arrest warrant the Court of Appeals said in a statement that it rules to execute the arrest warrant and to postpone handing over the requested person until the final verdict in the criminal case argued at the Bucharest court. Payton and his brother Tristan were detained on Monday night on allegations of sexual aggression dating back to 2012 and 2015, which they categorically deny, as PR team said. The warrant was issued by Westminster Magistrates Courts in London. We are innocent men. We are very innocent men in time. Everyone is going to see that, and we are very excited to finish this judicial process and clear our names. Tate said as he was released from police custody. It's very funny because I've been asking Romanian courts to go to the UK myself. I've asked five times and been declined. So now I get to go home. That's fantastic news. This guy literally said he went to Romania so he wouldn't get me too'd in Romania like he would get me too'd in England. And now he's like, oh, I really want to go back to England where he has a literal sexual assault trial waiting for him. What the fuck is going on? That's not even like... That's not a joke. That's not a joke. That's straight up. Like, actually, what is going on here? He had, he said that. He literally said that. England has gotten more reactionary since he left. He might stand a chance now. No. One last time, Law, but two was actually released. I made a statement in front of the media as right now. Yeah. The UK is garbaggio with convincing sexual assault, though, right? Yes. I think the UK is really bad at this kind of stuff. However, however, um, it, it, this is so high profile and I do think like politics will play a role because it's so high profile. Uh, I think politics will play a role and uh, it will cause the UK courts to potentially do like a decent job at this prosecution. Prince Andrew was high profile. 
Yes, but Prince Andrew is a fucking prince. Hello? Andrew Tate is the prince of incels. The fuck? You, are, are you comparing a small-time, like, alleged sex trafficker that had to do his operations in Romania to the guy that sex traffickers like Jeffrey Epstein bow down to? Andrew Tate is not even a fucking fraction of Jeffrey Epstein. Andrew Tate is like literally the level one mafia version of, of Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein was serving the interests of Andrew Tate. So, uh, uh, not Andrew Tate, sorry, uh, uh, Prince Andrew. They're both Andrew, that's it. <laughs> that's, the, that's as close as you're gonna get. Like one is, one is quite literally and definitionally a small bean trafficker, yes. The problem for Andrew Tate is that he is not like this is high profile almost entirely because he gloats too much. He gloats too much and he's pissed off the wrong moms and dads. Okay. That's it. Like he would have 100% been able to get away with everything that he's doing if he wasn't so fucking vocal about flexing non stop about utilizing the lover boy method and you know, uh, uh, implementing coercive measures on the people that he had hired to do uh, webcam work and stuff like that. So that is like the major reason. And also on top of that, he got like too famous for his own fucking good being a the, the incel warlord, basically. So he pissed off too many fucking Tory moms. That's what it is. He pissed off conservative moms. When conservative moms... Like, white conservative moms were like, I don't know what's going on. My son is calling uh, our daughter a bitch. That's it. It's Jover at that point. Okay? Too many fucking moms in, in positions of fucking power. White moms were powerful, conservative, elite. Too many of them were like, no, 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 no. We need to put a fucking end to this. That's what, that's what got him fucking cooked. Okay? Like, a little bit of conservatism is fine. He, he hammed it on way too much. All these like 12 year olds are running around being like, get your money up. Fuck you, bitch. I will piss my pants. It's actually alpha dog to shit your diapies. It's like the what? What do you mean? What, are, what is going on? You're a baby. Stop. Be a baby. Be a fucking baby. Why are you? Why do you have this weird accent? Like you fucking grew up in either Luton or Gary, Indiana. What's going on? It's like a mixture of both. Hello? I will piss my pants, bitch. It's me being Sigma. The UK is so cool. I saw this guy the other day. No woke, no lefties, no 15 minute cities, hate racism, two genders, MAGA, reform UK, no Islam, stop the boats, LFC. Oh, wait, Lev appeal. He says he hates Islam. No fucking, no fucking works. No fucking leftists hate racism. No, I fuck. Liverpool Football Club. Not a true scouser then. Hi, Islam. Love Liverpool. Simple as. <laughs> yeah. What does YNWA mean? You will never wank alone, mate. Wait, really? You will never wank alone, mate. Fuck. Follow back. Radical Muslims. No, radical Muslims. Love your fellow man. You will. <laughs> How are you a fucking scouser who loves MAGA? What the fuck? Levipil slogan? Only Muslim he likes is Mo Salah. Uh, your accent is just slowly turning into Canute hating Islam. Make the call and he's great again. Your accents the past few days have been actually raised against white people somehow. It's like discovering a mammal on Mars. They didn't think it could happen. <laughs> I love the scouser accent. It's because I've been watching The Gentleman on Netflix, and I think it kind of sucks. It's, like, disappointing. Mostly because of the main character, um, but there's, like, a scouser in it. We got a fucking raid. Central Committee. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good one. Uh, YNWA is their chant song. See Hillsborough Disaster for Live Appeal. You'll find it interesting. Um, the Gentleman is, like, all right. What's wrong with the main character? He's literally just a wet blanket he is just like he is so utterly replaceable uh not the gentleman the the movie by the way this is the show that uh guy Ritchie made for netflix and honestly it is not good let's keep it a buck 50 it's not that good anyway
British police told Reuters the Tays were a part of an ongoing investigation into allegations of rape and human trafficking, adding they were working with Romanian authorities. We appreciate the Bucharest Court of Appeals decision to postpone the extradition of Andrew and Tristan Tate. Eugene Vidniak, legal counsel for defendants, said in a statement, this ruling provides an opportunity for the brothers to participate fully in their defense and for the legal process to proceed in a transparent manner. Sorry, I'm, I'm seeing if she's going to try to get away from place here because what the fuck? Why did you guys say join us in following Nandre? It is literally Central PA that raided me. Oh, Nandre raided me too. What the fuck? God damn. Two raids in a row. What is happening right now? I'm blessed. Join us in following Nandre. Join us in following Central Committee. We got two. We got the double raid. What? Double raid, double rainbow, baby. That's crazy. Okay. Um... Nice of them to support small streamers. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for the raid, guys. Um, you know, this is finally, I think I can go full time on this. This has been my dream. Why don't you raid more often? I literally raid every night. You are so dumb. I bet you only watch me in the fucking morning. So you never see the end of my stream. I literally raid someone every fucking day. Why are you like this? Unless you mean, why don't you fucking raid while I'm watching? in the first hour of your stream it's because you come in here and you watch for three hours maybe which is understandable and then you think that like as soon as you're done watching the stream is over just will and nez that's not true anyway apparently the stone toss the racist comics guy had his picture leaked he looks like you think he does of course he does they want you to raid these guys who aren't streaming when you log off surely yeah probably no i raid um I raid uh, Frogan, I raid Nessua, I raid Will, I raid Carter sometimes, I raid Nandre sometimes, I, I raid a bunch of people. Anyway, um, like I said, uh, I'm an up-and-coming streamer, thank you for coming on to my stream, thank you for the raid, Nandre, thank you for the raid, uh, Michael from Pennsylvania, also known as, I raid Cutie as well, uh, Michael from Pennsylvania, also known as Central Underscore Committee, uh, as you guys know, you know, uh, your support is causing me to be able to do this uh, full time and also, uh, you know, causing me to serve you three minute ad breaks at the top of the hour, which you can avoid by subscribing for five dollars or for free. Wish you would have some stripper organizers on stream sometimes. Someone told me they met you and that you were disinterested in their stories. Wait, what? <laughs> I was disinterested in their stories. What? That's not true but that's pretty funny zoantharian that's what she said yeah they probably came up to me when i'm like trying to escape uh an event and we're like okay here's the thing when i go to an event okay when i go to an event and i do it often when i go to an event as a speaker or as like uh you know as someone who is uh rarely ever outside there are a lot of people that want me to work with them so immediately, like if I have to go somewhere right after and I'm trying to leave, people usually come up and they're like, hey, you <laughs> like what's going on? Like we let's uh, let's make something happen. Your social battery is probably drained. No, I, no, it's because no, I'm not saying I'm tired. I'm saying like I usually have something else that I, I need to attend or some shit like that. So then uh, if someone catches me uh, as I'm like bailing out as I'm dipping, um, I probably am uh, coming across as I'm a little disinterested. I asked Hassan once if he would raid me. He said, be quiet, loser. This is my space. I am the leftist god. He then called me the F-slur and I and got into his gold-plated Hummer. This is true in a real story. Yes. Anyway, it's likely that you need to recover from doing such a difficult and physically taxing job. Yes, that's what it is. Thank you, 35-month subscriber. That's exactly what it is. Listen, guys, I dropped a tactical F-slur in that altercation that was very real. Okay, a big one. And I did it. So I could show my interlocutors that the word doesn't scare me. Okay, someone has to have the fucking... Someone has to have the, the copy pasta. <laughs> Interpol, Romanian police POV. Yes. Um, I work 23 hours in a labor factory and you're a better worker and the most leftist leftist ever existed. Thank you. The perceived... The presumed shared knowledge of goblin porn still sticks in my brain. He has so many good fucking bars, dude. He is the goat, really. Vosh is the goat. Here's the... Yeah. In this video, I drop an N-bomb. Big one. Hard R. I did this to show my interlocutors that their language doesn't impress me, that their slurs don't frighten me or disarm me. You can see from their reactions that it worked. They were clearly taken aback. It was a power move, which I am entirely unashamed of. 
but I understand how that language might have upset some of you. This is an example of what I would call an invocation of a slur's power for good, but that's a subjective judgment. I invite you all to discuss this in the comments, critically or otherwise. I can just like, dude, I love this so much because it appeals to like a very specific person and that specific person is so down. Good girl. Don't you dare. It's like, this is so tailored, so perfectly catered to like the whitest dude you know, okay? The whitest dude you know who's on his own personal journey to, to unlearn some of the toxic things that he had learned. So we finally arrived at a guy who also wants healthcare, but also will say the N word tactically. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so perfect. It's so, it's so online. This guy exists only on the internet and also in high school, but usually you can just kind of like smell him and avoid him. Whereas, uh, whereas uh, on the internet, you really can't because they have the capacity to make like a thousand different fucking versions of this. As a black person, real, it's cathartic to have someone else say this. <laughs> anyway, I shit my pants, not only to prove that I'm in full command of my body, but to disarm him into asking, doesn't his mom do his laundry? <laughs> yes, it's so good. It's, it's perfect. I found someone whose job is uh, harder than yours. What Japanese man rents himself out offering nothing in particular? Why are you trapping females on display? Are you talking about my dog? <sighs> Japan is such a magical place. I know. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's finish up this fucking Andrew Tate shit so we can get to the other, uh, so we can get to the other news. Um, Tate who gained millions of fans by promoting an ultra masculine lifestyle was indicted in June in Romania along with his brother and two Romanian women for human trafficking. Uh, rape and forming a criminal gang to sexually exploit women. They have denied the charges. The case has since been with the Bucharest court's preliminary chamber, which needs to decide uh, whether the trial can start. A decision has yet to be made with Romanian court's backlog. The Tate brothers were held in police custody pending the criminal investigation from late December 2022 until April to prevent them from fleeing the country or tampering with evidence. They were placed under house arrest until August. They have since been under judicial control. A lighter preventative measure, meaning they have regular check-ins with the police, but can move around freely except for leaving the country. That's it. Um, yeah, except for when you uh, reveal your plans to the dumbest person you possibly could, who then talks about it on stream, and then the law enforcement hears about it. Yeah, also, uh, here's a quick moment of are we the bad guys here's a here's a are we the bad guys moment okay which uh instead of showing you joey rex tweet i'm going to show you uh someone who at least like uh all these people that would normally uh all these people that would normally fucking despise me but uh they will respect because he's a washington post journalist <laughs> i mean here it is literally it's just like, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way you don't see what you're doing. This is like deliberate, right? I just don't understand it. Hello? The fuck's going on here? Like, this is so perfectly American too, because listen, we're talking about the Navy, okay? All these dudes, all these dudes did not join because they thought they were going to go fucking laser brown kids, okay? They joined because they thought, oh, It'll be a fun little journey on a boat for a little bit, and then I can get my fucking college paid, okay? So half of them are gay as hell and super fucking nerdy. It's just like, I just, I think that it is ridiculous to, to not recognize what's going on here. You know what I mean? Theater kid behavior. I mean, this is like, I would say this is the poverty draft in display, okay? That's what I would say. Like, I don't think these dudes think that they are the bad guys at all. It is pretty funny that they are doing the bad guy thing, though, not recognizing that they are the bad guys um, in this circumstance. Thoughts on this? My dog ate my yaoi, bruh. Wait, what? I don't want to fucking link on. I don't want to click on this. Um, did you see how they brought trucks into Gaza? How odd that they can make Israel open the gates for these, but they can't for the food trucks. And the U.S. and Israel deliberately starving Palestinians. Truck entered Gaza, however, not to extract the wounded and martyrs from the under the rubble. No, families are left to unbury their dead barehanded. The machinery is to implement America's sea corridor and impose an American-Israeli military base. That's insane. Like, why? 
Every fucking day, man. Every day. It, it's just every day I feel like I'm losing my goddamn mind. Why? Because it is so obvious. There is one solution, okay? It's to get Israel to stop blowing shit up. Get Israel to stop blowing shit up. Because it's not like the fucking uh, humanitarian convoy that goes in is under serious threat from anyone else other than Israel. Like, Israel is the one blowing them up. Every goddamn day, we find a new, like, we find, like, a new UN convoy getting fucking lasered by Israel. And then they're like, yeah, sorry, we just can't bring uh, humanitarian aid in here. We just can't stop ourselves from fucking blowing your shit up. Turns out you can actually. It's going to be crazy when they like build this, right? It's a joint mission and they're building it together and then they're still going to blow it up. Going to be wild when it happens. <laughs> Israel's going to build a port and then claim Hamas attacks it. Yeah. And then we're going to have a seven week fucking conversation about like, was it Hamas that attacked the port? Does Hamas have a, does Hamas legitimately have Mark 84 rockets? Because it seems like this was a two-ton uh, munition that was deployed into the port. How did this happen? And then everyone will be like, you're wrong for fucking uh, not immediately assuming that Hamas blew up the fucking port. <sighs> yeah. And then America will quietly reveal that it was Israel, but like, eh, it's fine. You know, we'll, we'll urge them to do an investigation. Uh, on why they decided to blow up American service members or some shit. Classic stuff. And also, yeah, the seaport's not even going to be ready for like two months. Aren't you bored of this meta? It's not a meta. These are real people that are fucking dying, okay? For me, it, it's important. Uh, for me, it's important to, to cover this kind of thing and talk about it. Obviously, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to cover it as like in like cheerier terms. So it's more interesting, more dynamic for people who are out of touch and not really interested, you know? So the language that I use can sometimes come across as like, um, the language that I use can sometimes, uh, come across as though it's not like serious issues, but it is serious issues. Bro called it a meta. Absolutely insensitive. Yeah, of course, bro called it a meta because bro is living in America and very out of touch. That's it. And so do I, by the way, but you know, now, the former special counsel who questioned President Biden and concluded he was a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory will himself be questioned on Capitol Hill today. Former U.S. Attorney Robert Herr had been appointed to investigate the president's handling of classified material. Now everyone's mad at him. Scott McFarland's on Capitol Hill following it. Scott, good morning. Hey, good morning, Tony. The president and his supporters were quick to criticize Robert Herr's characterization of the president's age and memory. It is sure to be a marathon here. I think the Sam Cedar interview won you back viewers. No, because if people watch the majority report and they watch me, they're already in here. What are you crazy? They can hear Sam Cedar's words for themselves if they watch Sam and watch me. No, these are people who like claim that they're Sam Cedar fans still, but they don't actually watch Sam that fucking despise me. That's it. It's the, we, we have the same audience. Bro. Hearing with heated arguments just as the general election is beginning. Former special counsel Robert Hur's report last month found no criminal charges were warranted against President Biden over his handling of classified records that date back to his time as vice president. I did not break the law, period. Hur controversially added Mr. Biden would likely present himself to a jury, as he did during our interview with him, as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Do you think it was appropriate? I think it was unnecessary for him to do that. It wasn't part of the bottom line as to why he didn't bring charges. GOP lawmakers are expected to grill her, a Republican tapped by the attorney general to oversee the probe, about what they call a double standard against former President Donald Trump, who has been criminally charged over his alleged mishandling of documents. This guy is being charged and this guy's not. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. Her's report underscored the differences, saying President Biden turned in documents and consented to a search, while Trump not only refused to return the documents for many months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence. Trump denies those claims and has pleaded not guilty to all 40 felony counts. This is not a witch hunt. Brian Butler, a longtime employee at the former president's Mar-a-Lago estate, is a key witness in the case against Trump. Butler's cooperating with federal investigators and says he unknowingly moved boxes of classified material onto Trump's plane at the direction of the former president. Robert Herr, is that some god dang pronouns? <laughs> uh, hey, him. Why isn't it Robert him? That's clearly a man. That's a boy. 
Fuck your mean, Robert Hur. President's aide and co-defendant Walt Nada. The same day, Trump met with the FBI. White bankers' boxes. That's what I remember loading. Piling them up. I remember they were all stacked on top of each other, and then we're lifting them up to the pilots. Well, the well not Nada is pleaded not guilty to conspiring with Trump to obstruct the investigation. As for Robert Hur, he's expected to push back on criticism, saying his characterization of the president's age was fair, accurate, and necessary, according to advanced copies of his testimony posted by Politico. Nate? All right, Scott, thank you. We will now introduce today's witness. The Honorable Robert Hur was appointed as a special counsel in January 2023 to investigate the removal and retention of classified documents discovered at the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement. He previously served as the Principal Associate Deputy Attorney General at the Department of Justice and as the United States Attorney for the District of Maryland. He was a law clerk for Chief Justice William Rehnquist and also clerked for Judge Alex Kaczynski on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. We welcome our witness and thank him for appearing today. We will begin by swearing you in. Mr. Herr, would you please stand? Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief, so help you God? Let the record reflect that the witness has answered in the affirmative. Uh, thank you, and you can be seated. Please know that your written testimony will be entered into the record in its entirety. Accordingly, we ask that you summarize your testimony. Mr. Hur, you, you may begin with your opening statement. Make sure you got that, make sure you got that mic on if you could, Mr. Hur, thank you. Yeah, they, are they, where's Tom Cotton? You know what I mean? Where's Tom Cotton when you need him to be like, what kind of Chinese are you? <laughs> I've encountered many different kinds of Chinese in my day. I've encountered the Singaporean Chinese and I've encountered the Japanese Chinese. So tell me, what kind of Chinese are you? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Nadler, Chairman Comer, Ranking Member Raskin, members of the committee, good morning. I'm privileged to have served our country for the majority of my career, a decade and a half, most of those years with the Department of Justice. I have served- If one more person asks me if I've seen the Boeing stuff, I'm going to do the Boeing stuff to myself. Of course, I've seen the Boeing stuff. I covered it yesterday. I will cover it again today. Okay, please. Oh my God. Like, yes, I have. Of course, I have seen the Boeing stuff. Yes, I'm going to make like a fucking whistleblower that has worked at Boeing for 32 goddamn years right at the precipice of a motherfucking DOJ investigation into Boeing as I testified three days prior in a hotel parking lot. If you keep asking me if I have covered the Boeing stuff or if I've seen the Boeing stuff, stop asking. Served as a line prosecutor, a supervisor, the principal associate deputy attorney general, a United States attorney, and a special counsel. I've served in these roles with gratitude as the son of immigrants to this country, the first member of my family to be born here. My parents grew up in Korea and were young children during the Korean War. My father remembers... Oh. So he's that kind of Chinese. Got it. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you can't get that past me. Okay. He, he, them, he, them Southern Chinese, them, them Korean kind. First being hungry and grateful for the food that American GIs shared with him and his siblings. My mother fled what is now North Korea in her own mother. This is very, this is very Yakuza plot point. <laughs> the secret Korean <laughs> arms heading South to safety. My parents eventually met, married, and came to the U.S. seeking a better life for themselves and for their children. Their lives and mine would have been very different were it not for this country. No matter the role, no matter the administration, I have applied the same standards and the same impartiality. My respect for the Justice Department and my commitment to this country are why I agreed to serve as special counsel when asked by the Attorney General. I resolved to do the work as I did all my work for the Department, fairly, Okay, a boring, I don't care. This guy's literally a Republican. He obviously has to like give his backstory. Now, for people who are wondering like, why is he giving his backstory? It's because of the jokes that I've been making. Because while I'm making jokes about how he's like secretly Chinese or whatever, there are people who unironically are constituents of the likes of Jim Jordan and whatnot who do believe that, okay? I'm obviously joking about the stupidity of the Republican Party, but there are very valid concerns here. If you are not like immediately white presenting, you're going to have to give a whole backstory about how much you love American dick, how much you dick ride for imperialism, how much you would personally execute 
uh, enemies of the state if you had the capacity to because if you don't do that they're gonna be like what kind of chinese are you boy and then continue along with that narrative now yeah he's he's essentially he's explaining why he is an asian man that's what he's doing which is unfortunately something you have to do okay so um that's the reason it's boring it's whatever it's basically him uh explaining his bona fides right as a as a not white um beyond that uh, uh beyond that he's also a republican so that's like extra funny that uh the the uh, republicans are going to grill him now and be like why did you let biden off the hook like are you in the pocket of big china or are you in the pocket of big joe biden or are you in the pocket of both at the same time you know i don't really believe convincingly that you're not you haven't sufficiently shown me that you're not asian you know these are going to be real concerns coming from the republican party so that's where we're at that's where we're at i'm gonna skip through some of the stuff he's like yeah 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 i love this in other words i needed to show my work just as i would expect any prosecutor to show his or her work explaining the decision to prosecute or not the need to show my work was especially strong here the attorney general had appointed me to investigate the actions of the attorney general's boss, the sitting president of the United States. I knew that for my decision to be credible, I could not simply announce that I recommended no criminal charges and leave it at that. I needed to explain why. My report reflects my best effort to explain why. I it's also like an additionally funny thing that um, <laughs> here's an extra funny moment for America and American perspectives. But, like, a lot of dudes don't fuck with China. A lot of Asian people who are not from China don't fuck with China at all, right? It is the same dynamic between, like, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Cubans. They all fucking hate one another. But, like, in the eyes of the broader white population, no one makes that fucking distinction. No one's like, oh, you're Puerto Rican and you're not Cuban? That's very different. Like, they don't. They're, you're like, okay, what kind of Mexican are you? That's the opinion of the American uh, uh, white person right? When they encounter someone. Um, and the same goes for, uh, the same goes for like people being like, I don't fuck with the Chinese or I don't fuck with the Japanese, whatever. Right. And obviously like nobody fucks with China in that area, which is really funny because when they come here though, they're still Chinese. Okay. In the eyes of the broader American public, they're fucking Chinese. You can talk about how much you hate the Chinese, how much you hate China, but you're still Chinese in the eyes of the white Americans. They will never understand the difference. Vietnamese, you're Chinese, different kind of Chinese, but you're still Chinese. You're Thai, also Chinese, okay? Indonesian, Muslim Chinese. They don't, you know, they don't make this distinction. They, they literally, it's all Chinese, just like you're all Mexican if you are brown, okay? So that's it. So if you're Asian and in this chat, you probably don't have like a lot of, xenophobic uh perspectives regardless but asian americans that also play into like the anti-china sentiment don't realize that they're cooking themselves pretty fucking hard what if i'm filipino okay filipino only category where you are both mexican simultaneously and chinese filipino pinoy gang is the is the epicenter of the uh global uh latina belt indians arab <coughs> muslim Indians broadly get categorized as terrorists in the United States of America. That's like, uh, you know, war on terror, baby, which is, again, ironic, especially if you have parents, if you're Indian and you have parents that are like Modi supporters, okay, and you've like played, your parents will like sometimes play a role in the Islamophobic sentiment and then not realize that like you're also being harmed from said Islamophobic sentiment because Americans don't know what you are. Yeah. Uh, remember the first islamophobic hate crime post 9 11 was against a sikh man this person was not a muslim he was sikh and uh you know turns out racists don't make that distinction <laughs> they don't care you're 100 right there's this asshole streamer who says always says how everyone's turkish generalizers man um someone in your comments on tiktok said i need his arab thighs so you also get characterized that way yeah um again americans not very good at understanding the nuances and complexities of different uh different ethnicities obviously unless you're like white they know the difference between an irish person and an english person and a german person right but they will never understand in the same way the difference between a turkish person and like an iranian person or someone from syria right like they they just broadly categorize all of that as like okay muslim guys i think
I declined to recommend charging President Biden. I analyzed the evidence as prosecutors routinely do by assessing its strengths and weaknesses, including by anticipating the ways in which the president's defense lawyers might poke holes in the government's case if there were a trial and seek to persuade jurors that the government could not prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. There has been a lot of attention paid to language in the report about the president's memory, so let me say a few words about that. My task was to determine whether the president retained or disclosed national defense information willfully. That means knowingly and with the intent to do something the law forbids. I could not make that determination without assessing the president's state of mind. For that reason, I had to consider the president's memory and overall mental state and how a jury likely would perceive his memory and mental state in a criminal trial. These are the types of issues that prosecutors analyze every day. And because these issues were important to my ultimate decision, I had to include a discussion of them in my report to the Attorney General. The evidence and the President himself put his- Same with the religion when someone asked me where I'm from, I said Palestinian, and they're like, you're Muslim? Nothing wrong with that. And I say, no, I'm Christian. And they replied, there's Christians in the Middle East. Yeah, it is additionally funny because like the Palestinian Christians are literally like, that's it. That's the OG Christianity. That's where it began. Are you fucking serious? It's so funny that people are just like, people will be, people will be like, I'm Christian. Wait, what? You're fucking brown and you're Christian? It's like, dude, they invented it. What are you talking about? They literally invented Christianity. Hello. Those are like the OG. <laughs> the fuck do you think Jesus was? Motherfuckers really think Jesus is white as hell, dude. It's crazy. His memory squarely at issue. We interviewed the president and asked him about his recorded statement. Quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote. He told us that he didn't remember saying that to his ghostwriter. He also said he didn't remember finding any classified material in his home after his vice presidency. And he didn't remember anything about how classified documents about Afghanistan made their way into his garage. My assessment in the report about the relevance of the president's memory was necessary and accurate and fair. Most importantly, what I wrote is what I believe the evidence shows and what I expect jurors would perceive and believe. I did not sanitize my explanation, nor did I disparage the president unfairly. I explained to the attorney general my decision and the reasons for it. That's what I was required to do. I took the same approach when I compared the evidence regarding President Biden to the department's allegations against former President Trump. There, too, I called it like I saw it. As a prosecutor, I had to consider relevant precedents and to explain why different facts justify different outcomes. That is what I did in my report. I'm confident the analysis set forth in chapters 11, 12, and 13 of my report provides a thorough evaluation and explanation of the evidence, and I encourage everyone to read it. To Boring. All right, here are, some, here are some highlights, I guess, from it before we get to Ben Shapiro saying no one should ever retire. Um, First, Jim Jordan just roughly sh uh, showed roughly 10 minutes of a video of Biden talking for reasons that escaped me, and Nader dinged him on it immediately, lol. Okay, come on, Aaron. You know why he showed it. He showed it to be like, why is this interview happening? Let's ask ourselves. Is it because conservatives are really interested in the truth about Biden's mental faculties? No. No, it's because they want to be like, look how old Biden is. It is the same principle behind... Uh, how beneficial it is for the Biden camp for Trump to constantly be in legal trouble. It plays into the meta. The meta is, as it stands, Biden is old and he's demented. The meta on the Trump side is, as it stands, Trump is a criminal and a threat to democracy. So both sides are going to be pushing that note as hard as they possibly can if they want to fucking win. And the Republicans love doing this shit. They love utilizing the congressional power that they have. They love utilizing the congressional power that they have for like all this bullshit. Okay. The, the classic, the classic fucking small government conservatives that always are penny pinching and wanting to do austerity for the fucking working poor that spend millions and millions of dollars investigating nonsensical shit that benefits them. Politically, Kevin McCarthy very famously said that the Benghazi, uh, the, the Benghazi trials, which literally lasted a longer time than 9-11 trials. Remember, Benghazi, Benghazi as a trial was longer and more expensive 
Then the fucking 9-11 commission. Kevin McCarthy very shamelessly and very openly once said, uh, nobody was talking about Benghazi, and now everybody can't stop saying Benghazi. We did that shit. Openly, he said that. Okay? So it's not like they, it's not like they hide it. You know what I mean? They just they do it on purpose. And that's precisely what's going on here. It's political theater. Now, is Biden old? Yes. Is Biden old? Absolutely. Okay. Is he senile? Definitely. Thank you, everybody. We're going to need everybody to hold from. Chair now recognizes the ranking member, Mr. Nadler, for an opening statement. Mr. <laughs> Chairman, I'm uh, glad you have such information, uh, such admiration for the president that you allowed him to take the first 10 minutes of this hearing. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Nadler starts off. House representatives may be desperate to convince America that the white conservative men are on the losing end of a two-tier justice system, a theory that appeals to the MAGA crowd but has no basis in reality. House Republicans may be desperate to convince America that white conservative men are on the losing end of a two-tier justice system, a theory that appeals to the MAGA crowd but has no basis in reality. But your comments today make me wonder if you have read the special counsel's report at all. But her report does help us draw a distinction between President Biden and Donald Trump, just not the one. Conservatives hate gays but love theater. Yeah, that's why they hate gays, because the gays slay in the theater front, and they want to dominate theater. That's why it's resentment that they do not have the natural, uh, the natural skills that the <laughs> that the gays have. They're jealous. You want two distinctions, actually. First, the report is clear that, quote, at no point did the special counsel find evidence that Mr. Biden intended or had reason to believe the information would be used to injure the United States or to benefit a foreign nation, close quote. With respect to the classified documents found in President Biden's possession, quote, the decision to... Ah, uh, so that's the real reason they got rid of Santos? Yeah, because he was too good. He was too good. He was too good at, uh, you know, he had the, he had the natural talent for it. Decline criminal charges was straightforward, close quote. And with respect to the special counsel's investigation, quote, Mr. Biden turned in classified documents to the National Archives and the Department of Justice, consented to the search of multiple locations, including his homes. Nadler put a brutal supercut of Trump gaffing and shorting out. Great oh, God, I just I hate all of this. Raskin, what America sees today is evidence of one president who believes in the rule of law and works to protect it. And one who has nothing but contempt for the rule of law and acts solely in pursuit of his own. This stuff is so boring, dude. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna skip this. I'm gonna skip the story. It's just like who gives a shit? Wait, what was this one? Yeah, I, I'm I'm skipping. I'm skipping this part. Um, Trump is so real for this. Oh yeah, Trump has been popping off on the TikTok ban and is like surprisingly correct on it. Mister, read the room over here. There are a lot of young kids on TikTok who will go crazy without it. The thing I don't like is that without TikTok, you can make Facebook bigger, and I consider Facebook to be an enemy of the people, which is weird. Why does he fucking hate the Facebook so much? I mean, he's not wrong, but like Facebook is is so goddamn. He tried to ban TikTok originally, um, but like Facebook literally has probably more conservatives on it. Anyway, I don't know because he has stock in True Social. How did Biden maneuver himself into an L on the TikTok issue? <sighs> I used to be very much in favor of banning TikTok last year or uh you know a couple years back when trump was saying he wanted to ban it and now while i do understand that tiktok is responsible for so much fucking brain rot while i do understand tiktok is responsible for so much brain rot is like genuinely making people dumber i also do think that the only reason why i also have recognized that the only reason why they want to ban tiktok is because they do not have the same level of control over tiktok as they do over the other social media platforms and uh, if you want to ban these social media platforms, I think across the board, instead of banning social media platforms, you should regulate that social media platforms. Um, and the major reason why they're uh, really, really, really uh, aggro about TikTok is that it's because it is one of the few places where there is a shit ton, in my opinion, a shit ton of pro-Palestinian messaging, uh, more so than any other platform. Twitter has a lot of pro-Palestinian messages as well, but, you know, it's lost in a sea, I would say, of, of pro-Nazi messaging. So, and it's also owned by Elon Musk, so they, are, they see that as, like, controllable. What about TikTok's Chinese affiliations? I don't give a shit, dude. What? Like, this is, this is not like a, this is not a take. You know what I mean? It's just like, 
this take is only uh, this take only works if you're like, OK, well, I am scared of the Chinese. Recognize the gentleman from Florida. Five minutes. February 8th, the White House question, Mr. President, why did you share classified information with your ghostwriter? The president, I did not share classified information. I did not share it. I guarantee I did not. That's not true, is it, Mr. Herr? That is inconsistent with the findings based on the evidence in, in my report. Yes, yeah, so it's a lie. It's just what regular people would say, right? Yeah. All right. So the next one and all the stuff that was in my home. If I'm Matt Gates, I'm not grilling a fucking prosecutor that hard. If I got that many fucking skeletons in my closet and there's an ongoing ethics investigation into my misconduct, maybe I'm not going after the fucking prosecutors that hard. I'm just saying. Maybe I'm trying to play nice, okay? If I got Venmo receipts uh, to like a 17-year-old girl being like, oh, this is for travel, I'm probably not. Me personally, I'm probably not going after prosecutors this aggressively. Just saying, because he's probably got some other homies that may be investigating you soon. You know what I mean? Prosecutors know one another. Was in filing cabinets that were either locked or able to be locked. That wasn't true either, was it? That was inconsistent with the findings of our investigation. Another lie, people might say, right? Because what you put in your report was among the places Mr. Biden's lawyers found classified documents in the garage was a damaged open. Why has he got a Yakuza pin? Oh my God, it does look like a Yakuza pin. That's funny. Box. So here's what I'm, what I'm understanding, right? I got a pin. As Mr. Armstrong laid out, you find in your report that the elements of a federal criminal violation are met. But then you apply this senile cooperator theory that because Joe Biden cooperated and the elevator doesn't go to the top floor, you don't think you get a conviction. And I actually think you get to the right answer in that. I don't think Biden should have been charged. Don't think Trump should have been charged. But under the, like the senile cooperator theory, isn't it frustrating that Biden continues to go out and lie about the basic facts of the report that lay out a federal criminal violation? Congressman, I need to disagree with at least one thing that you said, which is that I found that the, the, all of the elements were met. One of the elements of the relevant mishandling statute is the intent element. And what my report reflects is my judgment that based on the evidence, I would not be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury that that intent element had been Right, met. but the reason you have that doubt is the, is the senile cooperator theory, the fact that Joe Biden is so inept in responding that you can't prove the intent, which again, I don't quibble with that conclusion, but it's frustrating to be like, oh, well, this guy's not getting treated the same way as Trump because the elevator's not going to the top floor, so we can't prove intent, while at the same time, Biden goes out there at the White House and says, well, you know, he just, he just, he just blatantly lies. And what I'm trying to figure out is whether or not Biden's lying because he's still so senile, he hasn't read your report, or whether it's a little craftier and a little more devious and perhaps a little more intentional than we might otherwise think. So I also want to go to this Biden Penn Center. Like, did, you, did it give concern to you that the Biden Penn Center, where all this classified stuff was being mishandled, was being floated by foreign governments? Congressman, we were concerned with getting to the bottom of all of the classified documents that were recovered during the course of yeah, our Yeah, but the, like, what bothers me is that the money that was paying for the place where the documents were being inappropriately held, it was the Chinese and it was other foreign countries. Did, did that play into your analysis? Did you, did you look into the billion dollars in foreign funding sources at the Biden Center at UPenn, for example? Congressman, we conducted a thorough, impartial, and fair investigation, and we were very, very concerned with getting to the bottom of all the relevant questions relating to the recovered Sir, documents. Sir, did you look into the fact that the Chinese were floating the place where this guy was keeping the documents unsecure? Yes or no? Congressman, to the extent that we identified evidence that was relevant and significant to our investigation, we put it in our report. Okay, well, it seemed relevant to me, maybe not to you. Yeah, because... <laughs> What kind of Chinese are you, boy? Is literally the underlying theme. Dude, come on. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You're looking real Chinese right now. <laughs> Another thing that seemed relevant to me is this ghostwriter, right? So the ghostwriter purposefully deletes this evidence that seems to be like show I'm lowering the volume so my volume crimes, matches and it. you don't charge Sorry. him why did you not charge the ghostwriter with obstructing justice and deleting evidence well for a number of reasons that are laid out in the report but in brief congressman yes uh, when we when we interviewed the ghostwriter he did 
It's so fucking weird po- watching people try to maintain the professional veneer of their job. Having to talk to Republicans who are like, true or false, Joe Biden is a pedophile who sucks adrenochrome directly from the brain stems of immigrant babies. Yeah. I mean, this is the most professional way that you can make this assertion, too. It's literally like, uh, it, it, <laughs> it's literally like, yes, uh, have you investigated the criminal misconduct of the Chinese Communist Party uh, uh, secretly storing Biden's classified documents at UPenn. Like, you just made that up, okay? You are trying to tie normal things that exist in the real world back into uh, something that is, like, indecent and scary. Um, what can you explain your title? What What, am, what do you mean? What is my title? Aiden Ross lands Andrew Tate in jail. Lamau, Haitian prime minister, resigns. Biden, her interviewer over age. Um, her interview over age. What do you... Second day of Ramadan. Uh, what is what the fuck? Tell us, and I'm trying to get the exact language. What is that? One of the things on his mind, one of the things he was aware of, was that I had been appointed special counsel and was conducting an investigation. Right. So, so, so he didn't. De- just so everybody knows, the ghostwriter didn't delete the recordings, just as a matter of happenstance. Ghostwriter has recordings of Biden making admissions of of, of crimes. He then learns that you've been appointed. He then deletes the information. That is the evidence, and you don't charge him. That is reflected in the report, and one of the reasons. Like, what does yeah. somebody have to do to get charged with obstruction of justice by you? If, if, like, deleting the evidence of crimes doesn't count, what would meet this? I might be getting lost in the in the right wing framing of this, but that part does seem a little odd to me. Like, I I don't personally know why they they wouldn't look into the fucking interviewer like deleting or records. You know what I mean? That that part is definitely standard so congressman as we as we uh state in the relevant chapter of the report one of the things that mr zwanitzer did not delete was transcripts of the recordings that he had created that included inculpatory evidence relating to mr oh never mind he also he he literally still had the transcripts oh so if you if you destroy some evidence but not other evidence that somehow absolves you of the no dude he has the transcripts he probably didn't want what the transcripts are all there. Okay, never mind. He very quickly clarified it for me. Now I understand. It's the same evidence. The evidence you destroy? He, like, here's what I see. Zwaniger should have been charged, wasn't. Biden and Trump should have been treated equally. They weren't. And that is the double standard that I think a lot of Americans are concerned about. I see my time's expired. I yield back. I'm Steve Ducey. Yeah, it, it seems like he did recognize the It seems like the evidence still very much is there. The uh, gentleman. Watch, Representative Schiff has to has test the exchange with Robert Herr over Biden classified documents. From California. Said that you did not disparage the president in your report. It's so funny because he's getting shellacked from both sides, too. Because Shifty Schiff, more like Adam Shit, am I right? Is going to rip into him because he's going to say you called Biden old and that's not within your purview. To which he responds with, no, it is. I have to give, as a third-party investigator, a decent reason as to why I am dropping the case and no, not further prosecuting him, because I don't think that this is prosecutable. And this is one of the uh, assessments that I made. And then he's going to say, couldn't you have made that assessment without fucking saying he's old, blah, 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 blah. But of course, you did disparage the president. Uh, you disparaged him in terms you had to know would have a maximal political impact you understood your report would be public right i understood based on comments that the attorney general had made that he had committed to make as much of my report public as consistent with legal policy and uh legal you think the fact that he's senile is a good reason not to prosecute him it's not just this fact that he's senile he's not saying that biden is senile he's saying that biden reads in front of a jury as an old guy with a kind heart okay and that uh, his misremembering of key details of his own life plays a role in putting together a case that would definitely make him look like he was he had honest intentions. That's it. It's his assessment that ultimately, it's his assessment that ultimately, if this was to be tried in a court of law in front of a fucking jury of his peers, the jury would look at him and go, yeah, this guy is like, he wasn't deliberately, voluntarily keeping classified documents away uh keeping classified documents for for illicit purposes and simply as an old grandpa partially because he cooperated with the authorities immediately and also partially because 
he is, uh, you know, like, look, he's just literally misremembering key details of his life. He's like old. His heart is in the right place, but he's old. That's what he's saying. He's not able to handle questioning, but he runs the country. Guys, I, I totally am in agreement with you. I, I think that Biden is too old. Okay. Legal requirements. And you could have chosen just to comment on the president's particular recall vis-a-vis -a, -vis a document or a set of documents, but you decided to go further and make a generalized statement about his memory, didn't you? Congressman, I, I could have written my report, theoretically, in a way that omitted references to the president's memory, but that would have been an incomplete and improper report in that, that it did not my reflect question, my analysis of You could have written, of you could have written your General. report with, his, with comments about his specific recollection as to documents or a set of documents, but you chose a general pejorative reference to the president. You understood when you made that decision, didn't you, Mr. Herr, that you would ignite a political firestorm with that language, didn't you? Congressman, politics played no part whatsoever in my investigative steps. But you understood decision, nevertheless, the words didn't you, that I Mr. Put in my this is so dumb. You're like mad at him for dropping the fucking case then. Like, so should he have further, should he have kept going? Like, because like this is this is such a classic this is such a classic catch 22 where you're mad at him but like the you're mad at him for the reasons as to why he dropped the case but not mad at him for uh dropping the case in general you can't you can't have it fucking both ways you know what i mean republicans are really good at double binds this man is not a republican he's a democrat the person he is actually cooking here is a republican He's mad because he took a shot at him when he didn't need to. He was giving red meat to the hogs, was he not? I think he is a classic middle-of-the-ground Republican prosecutor, okay? These guys care about the rule of law more than anything else. He's very similar to Robert Mueller in that regard. And ultimately, that's all he did. He did the middle-of-the-ground, gave his honest assessment... I don't think he was like indecently and secretly in the pocket of the big Republican party. I don't think that at all. If he was, then he would have said Biden is demented and we're going to continue with this prosecution. Hello. He's not wrong to make this assessment. I, I like guys, guys, not only is he not wrong to make this assessment, his track record, as we looked at on the show before, implies that he is like the classic fucking Republican prosecutor who cares about the institutions. Okay. Like, I think it's crazy that the Democrats are still getting mad uh, on top of this, on top of everything else being like, why did you mention that he was old? I think it's, it's understandable to mention that he is old because of how it would read to a jury, because it's a part of the re part of the argument that he's making, because as a special prosecutor, he has to make an argument as to why his assessment is that there should be no further, like this shouldn't go to court. Okay. Mr. Herb, you, you, you cannot. Is false about posting correct links. It's asking people to support ongoing BLM protests across the country. Wait, what? What the fuck? Please consider donating to support the BLM protests nationwide. Hello? What is happening with the fucking false about? It's always done that. Wait, what? Why? We should maybe eat that link. He's been doing that since 2020, bro. I didn't realize. You've been ha you've had that up for years. I think you just never turn it off. Yeah. We should maybe turn that off. Because we're anti-BLM now, boys. Let's go. It paints a picture that Biden maybe did intentionally keep documents initially, but he's too old at this point to prove that original intention. Not tell me you're so naive as to, to think your words would not have created a political firestorm. You understood that, didn't you, when you wrote those words, when you decided to include those words, when you decided to go beyond specific references to documents, you understood how they would be manipulated by, by my colleagues here on the GOP side of the aisle and by President Trump. You understood that, did you not? Congressman, what I understood is the regulations that govern my conduct as special counsel. And, and those regulations, regulations those regulations. Me to write a confidential report for the Attorney General. Which you knew would not be confidential. My decision, and that is what knew, I did, Congressman. Mr. I followed you, the rules. You knew it knew would not be confidential. I followed them. You knew it would not be confidential, didn't you? Sir, the regulations required me to write a confidential report re explaining my decision to the Attorney General. Which you knew would be released. It was up to the attorney general to you, determine you understood what it would be released. Did you would not? be released consistent with you, DOJ policy. You understood it would be released. You understood it would be released. I under like, what's the argument here? What's the argument here? That at the top of the hour, there isn't a three-minute ad break? Like, is that what the argument is? Because there is one. Okay. 
whether you like it or not, there is a three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Now, of course, you can avoid those ads by subscribing for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, where you will get one free Prime subscription a month. You can also uh, you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Holy fuck! There's some two big new oh boy big news. Uh, two news from Israel Palestine uh, that I will be talking about in a brief moment. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, Bill Laser, thank you for the. Five, get the subs allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. That's another way that you can avoid the top of the hour ad break. Here's a three minute ad break now. Isn't his decision better for the Republicans because it's a lose lose for Biden and gives their two tier justice system narrative legs? Dude, I don't think this guy is like secretly working. My point was, I do not think that uh, uh, this guy is secretly thinking, like, ooh, how can I suit the needs of the Republican Party? The fact that her background suggests that he is cognizant of not appearing impartial tells me that his report is intentionally written to be this controversial but appear unbiased. I think he wanted to show, like, really hammer on the point that he is an unbiased, impartial arbiter. And that's the reason why he, uh, that's the reason why he wrote the report in the way that he did. He both sides did. Yes. And the Democrats are mad that he both sides did too hard. And I feel like it makes sense for him to both sides it this, the way that he did. I don't think that he is like secretly in the pocket of the Republican Party. Just like, and I will say this as well, James Comey was not, in my opinion, legitimately secretly operating at the behest of the Republican Party when he came out literally right before the election, all the way back in 2016, with the second investigation, these guys are aggressively, these guys are aggressively centrist, okay? They want to dispel the, the rumors or the notion that there's any kind of partisanship at play. So in that situation, in my opinion, they cook it a little bit too hard. I don't know, really skeptical of his assessment that Biden was too old to have intent. I mean, Biden may not be all there, but he's at least 90% there. I think that much is clear now after so do. Damn, that supreme that that supreme. Sorry, that that state of the union really did a number on liberal brains. I think, <laughs> is it possible to re-roll for new candidates after the election? Yes, um, you can re-roll if they die. Understood from the attorney general's public comments that he would make as much of my report public as he could, consistent with legal requirements in DOJ. And you also policy. understand DOJ policy that you are to take care not to prejudice the interests of the subject of an investigation, right? That is generally one of the interests that DOJ policy. You could argue that his opinion was predetermined. More important was the influence on the public throughout his use of language senile regarding Biden. I think that legal documents should be sterile and neutral in stating facts. Senile is not that. Yes, dude, he's making a biased assessment based on the evidence presented. He is not a fucking licensed uh, medical professional. This is not a court. In a court of law, you would bring a licensed medical professional to make that assessment. Okay. But if you are the prosecutor, you can make that assessment on your own when you are dealing with the outcomes of a prosecution. You further, if you take this to court, how it will read by the jury is an assessment that you will definitely make, especially when you are an outside third party investigator that was contracted by Biden's DOJ. This, in my opinion, like the reason why he said that in his report is because, well, one, Biden is very old, okay? And he will read very old to a jury, that is true. And also, because, like, he is supposed to be, there's a reason why he's a Republican guy, okay? There's a reason why Merrick Garland brought him uh, as the as the third-party investigator, because he's a fucking Republican. If you're going to drop a case of mishandling classified documents, you have to make sure that you rid uh, at least in the public's eye, any kind of, you rid yourself of any kind of potential biases at play. Yeah. And if you think that the American public thought that Biden is senile because of this report, you're crazy. They definitely already thought that. Thank you, uh, short gamer moth. You're absolutely correct. The American public already thought this. It's not like he must, he, he's like creating a, a, a ground for like Americans to be like, wow, this is the first time I've thought this is the first time I thought Biden is senile because of the fucking her report is crazy. Policy requires that prosecutors respect. And it was your obligation to follow that policy in this report, was it not? 
It was also my obligation to write a confidential report for the Attorney General explaining completely well, my what decision. What you did write was deeply prejudicial to the interests of the President. You say it wasn't political, and yet you must have understood. You must have understood the impact of your words. You must have understood the impact of your decision to go beyond the specifics of a particular document, to go to the very general, to your own personal, prejudicial, subjective opinion of the President, one you knew would be amplified by his political opponent, one you knew that would influence a political campaign. You had to understand that. And you it's so funny that they're butthurt about him saying Biden is senile because, like, it is the one thing that every American agrees with, including fucking people that are going to vote for Biden. Hello? Like, what are we talking about here? He might as well have written that the fucking uh, the, the sky is blue in the report. It's like getting mad at that. You did it anyway. You did it anyway. And, and, and let, me just go, let me just go to some of the differences here between the president's conduct and Mr. Trump's. In the superseding indictment uh, on page three, it says that Mr. Trump suggested that his attorney falsely represent to the FBI and grand jury that he did not have documents called for by the grand jury subpoena. You didn't find anything like that with respect to Mr. Biden, did you? Congressman, I do not have the Trump indictment in front of me, but I need to address something that you said in your prior question. What you are suggesting is that I needed to provide a different version of my report that would be fit for public release. That is nowhere in the rules. I was to prepare a confidential report that was comprehensive and thorough of an What is in the rules, Mr. Hur, what is in the rules is you don't gratuitously do things to prejudice the subject of an investigation when you're declining to prosecute. You don't gratuitously add language that you know will be useful in a political campaign. You were not born yesterday. You understood exactly what you were doing. It was a choice. You certainly didn't have to include that language. You could have said vis-a-vis -vis the documents that were found at the university. The president did not recall. There is nothing more common. You know this. I know this. There is nothing more common with a witness of any age when asked about events that are years old to say, I do not recall. Indeed, they're instructed by their attorney to do that if they have any question about it. You understood that. You made a choice. Now he's saying that Biden saying, I do not recall for like key details of his life is actually a part of a, 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 a technique that the defense uses in the situation. Yeah. You say that about entirely different. Uh, you say that about entirely different shit, shit that would get you in trouble. You don't say that about like, uh, you, you don't say that about things that are just like, uh, basically, uh, uh, what you would have in like a lie detector test that that creates a basis for what is truthful okay which is you know questions about like um questions about your your family or whatever also he used i do not recall against the defendant yeah i just it doesn't make any sense majority report went over this and saw that biden didn't necessarily misremember when his son died so i don't know about the narrative but wouldn't just putting that in a report subject didn't remember make the report useless but I think the message holds the answer Biden gave are same, if not similar to Trump's yet Trump, yet Trump wasn't considered senile. Wait, what? The reason why if Biden and uh, uh, Donald Trump answer in the same way in a deposition, the reason why Biden reads a different way is because of the things that came after Trump voluntarily, willingly lied to his own lawyers lied to everyone, including the investigators, about where the documents were and voluntarily withheld additional documents after multiple inquiries. Obviously, his I do not recall moments don't matter all that much in the eyes of a jury in that circumstance when you're comparing Brandon's I do not recall with the motivations that Brandon very clearly had once the investigation was launched. Biden cooperated with the authorities completely. Trump did it. So obviously that plays a higher order of magnitude in the way that the the um in the way that a court case would continue than a guy who did cooperate. That's a major difference. I think that's like basically uh I think that's what basically plays a big role. Can't make it up. Experts say transcript shows uh, special counsel Robert Hur lied about Biden. The full transcripts undercuts Hur's argument that Biden could not remember his son's death and had poor memory. 
The full transcript of President Joe Biden's five-hour interview with special counsel Robert Hur's investigator, investigators paints a more nuanced portrait of Biden's memory than the special counsel's report, according to the Washington Post, which noted that Biden doesn't come across as being absent-minded as Hur made him out to be. I think the funniest thing that could come out of this, the funniest thing that would come out of this is that, like, <laughs> they have to follow. They, they launch another investigation, okay, with another special prosecutor, and they... they <laughs> find that there was misconduct and her was actually covering Brandon by saying he's senile only to have an even more reactionary only to have an even more reactionary prosecutor come in and basically this time they're like no we have to go to court because he's very much mentally sane <sighs> anyway read full transcript of Robert Hur's classified Biden documents interview Oh, come on. Give me the highlights. I, I'd rather read the fucking high notes. The transcript could raise questions about Hur's depiction of the 81-year-old president having significant limitations on his memory. Her and his report declined to charge Biden, arguing that it'd be difficult to convince a jury uh, to convict with a memory that the special counsel described as faulty and poor, noting that Biden could not recall when his son Bo died or when he served as vice president. But Biden said exactly when his son died on the interview. What month did Bo die? Oh, God. May 30, Biden said. When two others in the room chimed in with the year, Biden asked, was it 2015 when he died? Her soon suggested taking a brief break, an offer Biden rejected before launching into a long explanation of Bo's death. Let me just keep going to get it done, Biden said. Okay, so he didn't actually remember it. Like, he didn't remember the exact date. So what? Like, his assessment is that he couldn't remember it, and the transcript makes it seem like he actually did 100% remember it. He just couldn't remember the year, and then someone chimed in with the year. Which is normal. That's not like that crazy. It doesn't show like complete senility. But I could see someone who's trying to move to not prosecute Biden saying that this will read in a court of law as someone who is not great on his recollection. A part that a part that many people don't understand for the record. And here it is, by the way. So what was happening? What month did Bo die? Oh God, May 30th. Miss Cotton chimes in. 2015 unidentified male speaker says 2015 president biden says was it 2015 he, uh, he had died unidentified male speaker says it was may of 2015 president biden it was 2015 this is why it's a double bind that democrats are actually cooking themselves over because you support israel what where'd you get that from that's awesome some of the first timers are great new crime I for felt later only 32 minutes. Very crazy. YouTuber falls in love with an obsessed fan, instantly regrets it. Oh, my God. I love that. He's right about you supporting Israel today. You opened with a DJ set today. Okay, not every version of techno music is, is supporting Israel. Guys, if you look at the transcript, I get why he said what he said. Alex Thompson writes, he's a national political correspondent at Axios. He wrote, Biden repeatedly asked for help remembering important days with lawyers stepping in. When did I announce for president in 2019? If it was 2013, when did I stop being vice president? In 2019, am I still vice president? Trump gets elected on November of 2017. Now, I'm not great at fucking uh, uh, dates like this as well, okay? The difference is, if you are interested, for the record, if you are personally interested in presenting a narrative that Biden would read as old his heart in the right place, which is something that many people are forgetting in his assessment. If people are read, if, if you want to make it seem like someone is old, but his heart is in the fucking right place. Obviously, obviously this is what you say. Oh, twice on the same day, Biden struggled to find the words for fax machine. You see where there's a printer and there's a, what do they call it? The machine that he asked until white house counsel Ed Siskel offered up fax machine in both instances. While talking about the years 2017 and 2018, Biden said, remember, in this time frame, my son has either been deployed or is dying and adds. And and so what was happening, though? What month did Bo die? Oh, God, May 30, before White House counsel offered that it was in 2015. Why is uh, articles coming from Salon.com clip chimping the transcripts to make it seem like he was totally fucking cognizant when the question being presented was about 2017 to 2018? long after his son had died i i genuinely don't understand why people are just like so desperate to run with the fucking narrative that biden is like totally cognizant and it is ridiculous for uh the uh, the the special prosecutor to to make this assessment 
that clears Biden, that literally drops the case. You're cooking yourself. What you have to understand is Biden is a Schrodinger's brain. It is at all times either immaculate or in shambles, depending on what helps the DNC. The transcript also appears to shine a light on her's claim that Biden could not remember when he served as vice president. My problem was I never knew where any of the documents and boxes were specifically coming from or who packed them, he said. Just did I get them delivered to me? And so this is, I'm at this stage in 2009. Am I still vice president? Biden sought to clarify his answer, but one of her's deputies pushed to move on. During another point, her pointed to an image of a notebook related to Afghanistan. The date is 42009, Biden said. Was I still pre- uh, vice president? I was, wasn't I? Yeah. Her in his testimony before the House Judiciary Committee on Tuesday denied that he disparaged uh, the president unfairly and claimed that the evidence and the pre- uh, president put him put him the president himself put his memory squarely at issue. National Security Attorney Bradley Moss predicted that Democrats are going to eat her alive at this hearing. I think Biden might be owed an apology, tweeted Zach reporter Zach Bochamp. Politico's Kyle Cheney, dude, Democrats love looking at a gift horse in the mouth and then slapping the horse in the fucking mouth, okay? This is literally, this is a gift. Just take it. I, it's, it's so insane. I, I, I don't know. I just don't understand it. In which President Biden jokes with federal prosecutors about the thorough search of his home in Wilmington. I just hope you didn't find any risque pictures of my wife in a bathing suit, which you probably did. She's beautiful. That's funny. Bro, my grandma died like a year ago. I don't know what month or day it was. I loved her to death. Pardon me if I was too busy grieving to make notes. This is so stupid. Brother, you need to understand something. Or sister, listen to me. Okay? Everyone has a hard time remembering key dates. I also do as well. It makes sense, okay? This is not what is at it, what is in question here. The problem is when you are talking about like parts of your life, let's say you were the fucking let's say you were no longer um let's say you were no longer in office, okay? And they're asking you a question about like a time frame that is 2 years after your grand uh, uh your grandma died. You would know that your grandma's not dead at that point. This is not about recalling exactly the date that your grandmother died. It's about thinking that your grandmother is alive three years after the fact. Do you get it? Context is important here because the question is being presented about his, his, his uh, experiences in 2017 and 2018 where he thinks his son is still alive and being deployed, where his son has died three years ago at that point. Do you get it? And not only that, but the key thing that people are forgetting here is that his assessment is how this will read to a jury. Obviously, in his line of questioning, Biden is having a hard time consistently remembering key dates in his life, okay? That will present in in an identical fashion in a court of law to a jury that will see that line of questioning and Biden's, like, uh, uh, failure to answer key dates and key details of his life. That's what he is saying. He's saying that the jury will read him as senile but kind-hearted. His heart's in the right place, but, you know, a little bit of senility goes a long way in presenting him as an old man who is seen in a sympathetic light, okay? So the irony here is that, like, a key part of hers assessment that clears him of impartiality in dropping this fucking case is what Democrats are cooking him on. Do you understand the issue at play here? Now, the media can look at this transcript and, like, rob it of the context, and they can do that, and they are doing that, it seems, right? To be like, no, Brandon is actually dynamic. He's actually super with it. Look at the uh, look at the State of the Union. You know, he was, he was dynamic there. Clearly, that's not an old man who is senile. Remember that? That was really sick. It's, uh, you know, he, he just didn't remember key details. Don't look at the context of the key details of what he, like, forgot. <sighs> Neither Trump nor anyone in his family can recall a single thing in any of their depositions either. Yes. The difference there, however, is that Trump's lack of recollection will not read as someone who is a sympathetic figure who is just simply forgetting things. Because Trump very openly and uh, very openly refuse to cooperate with investigators. Biden did cooperate with investigators. This is a key context. This is what is the reason why one case sticks and the other doesn't. Do you guys understand this? 
While talking about the years 2017 and 2018, Biden said, remember in this time frame, my son has either been deployed or is dying and adds. And, and so what was happening though? What month did Bo die? Oh God, May 30th before the white house council offered that it was 2015 guys. I want to remind everybody that you did not fall out of a coconut tree. Okay. You did not. You exist within the context of all the things that came before you. Okay. Just remember that context is important. The two day interview took place in the immediate aftermath of October 7 Hamas attack on Israel. Biden's team has also noted he had excellent recall in several other parts of the interview and argued that the missteps were exaggerated and cherry picked. The two facts missing exchanges with the White House, uh, where the White House counsel Ed Siskel stepped in and they open on the bottom, too. So there's the top opens to shelving and the bottom opens to filling So the bottom. So when you open this up, the first the door on the, the first door there on the left, you see where there's a printer. And there's a, what do they call it? The machine that fax machine, a fax machine. Yes, sir. And then this, the thing below, I don't use it anymore. I never use the, you can, but all kidding aside, I have a library and the library has a two filling cabinets in it, filing cabinets in it. And it has a built into the walls. And when I built that home built into the walls, a space for a copy machine for a, what do you call it? When they send these fax machine, fax machine, I have shelves that I have. I have binders like this in it and I, that I put together that aren't classified. They're about speeches that I made on this matter, speeches I made on that matter. So during this time, when you were living at chain bridge road and there were documents relating to the Penn Biden center or the Biden Institute or the cancer moonshot or your book, where did you keep papers that related to those things that you were actively working on? Well, um, I, 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 I don't know. This is what 2017, 2018, that area. Yes, sir. Remember, in this time frame, my son is either been deployed or is dying. And so it was. And by the way, there were still a lot of people at that time when I got out of the Senate that were encouraging me to run in this period, except the president. I'm not and not a mean thing to say. He just thought that she had a better shot of winning the presidency than I did. And so I hadn't. I hadn't at this point, even though I'm at Penn, I hadn't walked away from the idea that I may run for office again. But if I had ran again, I'd be running for president. And and so what was happening, though? What month did Bo die? Oh, God, May 30th. Miss Cotton steps in and says 2015. An identified male speaker steps in and says 2015. President Biden, was it 2015 he had died? Remember, the time frame that they're talking about is 2017 and 2018. Okay, this is after Obabe has told him not to run for president, which he revealed here, by the way, which is kind of cool uh, that he openly mentions that. Very very vindictive person that doesn't let go of certain things. That's another key detail here. Mr. Bauer, or I'm not sure the month, sir, but I think it was that year. Mr. Kirkbaum, that's right, Mr. President. It And and what's happened in the meantime, it was that as, and Trump gets elected in November of 2017, unidentified male speaker, 2016, unidentified male 16, President Biden, 16, 2016. All right. So why do I have 2017 here? That's when you left office, January of 2017. Yeah, okay. But that's when Trump gets sworn in then, January. So I think when you look at the full context, I think it's a bit of a stretch for uh, Salon and all these other articles to be written to say, to make it seem like, no, he totally remembered everything. It's not necessarily that he remembers the month, which he clearly does. It's that he's fucking up the time frame where he thinks that his son is alive in 2017, 2018. Because like, he was trying to say that he was still in, uh, you know, he was still in a tumultuous situation with his son. And that's like partially why he, you know, doesn't recall the documents. But his son had no, like his son was nowhere near. He was dead for two years at this point. Do you understand? Hearst claimed that Biden couldn't remember the day his son died was an outrageous lie, argued Tommy Vitor, a former Obama staffer and commentator. It's also cruel and irrelevant. Anyone who's experienced a loss like that can remember images, smells, bit of conversations, the pain is bird into you dates blend together because they're irrelevant attorney andrew lawler tweeted her lied that's the only appropriate response white house spokesman ian sams told cnn on tuesday that her opening statement to the committee was also misleading i think it lays bare pretty clearly that the results of this 15-month investigation that was led by a trump appointee prosecutor was named special counsel by brandon's own doj by merrick garland by the way hello i found that there was no case here he said I think that some of those lang some of those that language that you just laid out is a little bit misleading. In fact, later in the report, 200 pages in, not on page two, but 200 pages in, he says very clearly that the evidence does not fully support the idea that he will fully retain classified documents. That was literally also in his assessment. 
it's very frustrating. That was also a part of hers assessment. I, I, I don't know why people are making it seem like um, this dude simply was just saying Biden's old lol. Like that's not what he was saying. He's saying Biden will read as old in, a, in the same line of questioning that we engaged in, in the conversation that we had in the investigation that we concluded the same line of questioning will happen in front of a court of, uh, of law in front of a jury. And the jury will see him as like, because uh, he did not willfully retain the documents that you can present an argument that he just like, doesn't remember. And that's why there is not a real good court case here. This discussion is so dumb and liberal. Yeah. It's very, very, very dumb and very, very, very liberal. Anyway. Urgent aid en route to Gaza amid severe the food crisis. Gaza, where the UN We're going to talk about Gaza. Of we'll of talk about uh, updates on, on Andrew Tate because he also uh, apparently gave a speech after he was released from jail. Um, and, and we'll cover that as well. I read what you just read and got something different, man. Bo died in 2015. People encouraged him to run in 2015. He correctly equates the two events in his statement. Yes, but he is using that as an, as an answer for questions that pertain to to his experiences and knowledge and actions in 2017 and 2018. That is the problem. Yes, you're right. If they were talking about 2015, oh my God, talking. If they were talking about 2015, then you'd be right. But they're not talking about 2015. They're talking about 2017 and 2018. That is the issue here. That is the context that is important for people to understand in the transcripts. The further context that people need to understand in these transcripts is that your recollection might also be bad. Mine certainly is. Okay? It is. That's why I think a lot of people are like, well, I can't remember those dates either. I get it. I'm the same way. I'm exactly the same way. I think it's an ADHD thing. Okay? However, however, the way that reads to a jury is what caused her to make this assessment, put it in the fucking report to signal impartiality and simultaneously say, this is why we're dropping it. Because if he simply just said, Biden very clearly has a mental fortitude, demonstrated mental fortitude, um, and, and uh, you know, but simply forgot that he had these documents, that's not enough for him to fucking drop the case. Because then Republicans are going to be like, what the fuck? You're dropping this fucking case, but you're saying he voluntarily and willingly withheld classified documents? Do you not understand this? This is the point that I'm trying to make here. If he went about it in the ways, if he went about it in the ways that liberals wanted him to go about it, it would spell, uh, it, it would destroy impartiality. It would just completely throw it out the door. So that's why I'm saying, I think Democrats are, are yelling while looking at a fucking gift horse in the mouth. They're yelling about the gift horse's mouth. Okay. And they're smacking the horse now. And the guy who gave you the horse, very odd situation. But I guess they have to do that because what's done is done anyway. And now they're trying to get their licks in to overcome the narrative that Biden is old. Now, none of that really matters. You can only show that Biden is not old. And they've done a decent job at it so far since State of the Union, where he started like actually campaigning again. So if it keeps up, if they can, if they can basically uh, keep him, if they can basically keep him trapped within the confines of like short bursts of media appearances, short bursts of appearances in front of a crowd, then they can maybe present the narrative that he is not senile. And then the low expectations that people have of him as a 900 year old, uh, you know, uh, decaying corpse will actually play to his favor. That's the reason why I think they're going ham on a, a, a special prosecutor that basically gave him a gift. Now let's talk about Gaza. Urgent aid en route to Gaza amid severe food crisis. We're on the verge of starvation. A charity aid ship has now left Cyprus carrying nearly 200 tons of food. Now it could arrive as soon as tomorrow as the fighting continues there. And the Houthi rebels launch more attacks on cargo ships off Yemen. Chris Livesay has the story. Houthi rebels strike again, vowing to escalate military operations during Ramadan in support of the oppressed Palestinian people, says a spokesman. Two missiles failed to strike the cargo ship Pinocchio off the coast. It is pretty wild that these, like, we went from the Houthis are just like, fuck around and find out. <laughs> the Houthis are going to see the finding out part of the fuck around part. 
to like consistent bombing in Sanaa to okay, maybe we can't stop these guys from uh continuously taking pot shots at ships that actually still continue through the Red Sea and don't communicate with the Houthis at all on on where they're taking their uh cargo. Coast of Yemen. But repeated threats like these have disrupted global trade for months, drawing retaliation from the US and Britain, who consider them an Iran-backed terror group and not the defenders of the people of Gaza. Now forced to celebrate the holy month of Ramadan, where shelter has been turned into rubble and surgical gloves into balloons. Yeah, all these liberals are like, you're about to see why America doesn't. Amer <laughs> all these liberals were just fucking hitting the, 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 hitting the goddamn, uh, uh, this is why we don't have healthcare lol line over and over again. We didn't wish Ramadan to come under these conditions, says Om Muhammad Abu Matar. It has the taste of blood. In Jerusalem, during this time of prayer and fasting, scuffles have become routine over Israeli security restrictions on entering Muslim holy sites. Muslims are heading to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. It's been a flashpoint in Ramadan's past. And this year, with the war in Gaza, tensions are boiling. These Palestinians in Jerusalem have just broken their fast. They can't eat during daylight. These Palestinians in Gaza can't eat. I just want to show you this. I want to show you something very important here, okay? If you want to understand what our policy has been as like a deterrence, I guess, this, this very important moment from January 18 comes to mind. Are the airstrikes in Yemen working? He says, are the airstrikes in Yemen working? Well, when you say working, are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they Biden says, no, they're not. Are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they continue? Yes. Are we going to continue? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, in January, uh, the Houthis are about to see why America doesn't have free health care. March 2024, have the Houthis become unstoppable? This is something that I keep repeating over and over again. It is the reason why throughout history, it has played out in the exact same fucking way over and over again. The side that has significantly more to lose is always going to lose out in the end because these are wars of attrition. That's it. The Houthis were already starving. They had withstood a genocide by the UAE and more importantly than the UAE, Saudi Arabia for years and years. This is not uh, conjecture. I'm not making this up. This is the American assessment, okay? Aiden Ross didn't land Tate in jail. Stop spreading misinformation yet again. Aiden Ross's uh, leaks genuinely led to Andrew Tate being arrested. He has now since been released. I covered this earlier. There is nothing false about what I just said. Here he is coming out of jail, as a matter of fact. Why do you think this happened? Do you think he was in jail for no reason? The lawyers themselves... On the defendant, uh, on the side uh, of the people in the UK that uh, are, are defending their victims, have literally pointed to the Aiden Ross clip as a reason. But of course, I do not expect Tater Tots to be smart or cognizant. These are, after all, the same people that thought that the court case was done months ago. Like when he was literally in prison, they were like, nah, he's not actually, he's not going to prison. It's pretty funny to think about like how dumb tater tots are because a tater tot Aiden Ross, the tater tot Aiden Ross is the reason why Andrew Tate was literally fucking arrested earlier today. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll cover that in a second. We're talking about big boy news right now. Okay. It's because they're running out of food. That was Chris Livesay from Jerusalem reporting. So before we get to Haiti, there are some key updates here. Number one, turns out. A diplomatic source told Jerusalem Post that the Gaza Maritime route was Netanyahu's idea. Wow. According to the source, on October 22nd, two weeks following the war's outbreak, Netanyahu discussed with President Biden the concept of delivering humanitarian aid to Gaza via the sea. Bitch, why don't you fucking deliver aid by not bombing the aid that's being delivered through the regular routes where you can actually deliver a shit ton of aid? It's incredible to me that the... the supposed concessions that biden extracted still came from netanyahu like what the fuck now netanyahu is a liar okay 
as are many Israeli officials. They have routinely lied over and over again. They're very consistently liars. So maybe he's just lying here and it was actually Brandon's idea. I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to make Brandon look bad in the Western world, which he regularly does do. It does go along with that. So the, I, I don't know. I genuinely do not know if I can take this at face value because Benjamin Netanyahu lies all the fucking time. Okay. The irony, of course, is that in order to build this fucking offshore pier, this temporary pier, Benjamin Netanyahu did allow trucks to go in, except not the type of Tweety saying Israelis are liars is actually an anti-Semitic trope. No, it is not. And don't even fucking uh, make this joke right now, okay? Don't even try to bait me like that. Oh. Anyway, turns out we do have the capability of bringing in trucks into the Gaza Strip. Just the trucks that Benjamin Netanyahu is allowing into the Gaza Strip are the ones that are constructing the fucking pier. The objective is not to deliver food. The objective is to relieve international pressure. Maybe he also wants American troops on the ground. Biden keeps saying there will be no American troops on the ground. According to a source on October 22nd, two weeks following the war's outbreak, Netanyahu discussed with President Biden the concept of delivering humanitarian aid to Gaza via the sea. It was a pre-outlined strategy all the way back in October 22nd. Then on October 21st, Prime Minister Netanyahu outlined a strategy to Cypriot President Nikos Christodoulides. In addition, the matter was revisited on January 19th during a dialogue between Prime Minister Netanyahu and the President of the United States. Where Netanyahu proposed, according to the source, I want to suggest setting up a team to explore maritime supply through Cyprus after a thorough inspection of all goods. This source, close to the Prime Minister, insinuated that Biden was simply implementing a plan by Netanyahu, not actually initiating anything new. The source spoke with Jerusalem Post at a time of heightened diplomatic tensions between Biden and Netanyahu. I don't know. I don't know if this is real or not because, you know, both sides obviously are uh, known for lying. But the number one liars are almost always on the Israeli side. The American side is basically repeating Israeli lies half the time. So uh, I don't know. It could be real. It could have been uh, Benjamin Netanyahu saying, like, this is a good way to relieve international pressure. Exactly. And maybe he didn't say anything this entire time because if he had chirped about how we should find mechanisms of delivering aid to the Palestinians on October 22nd, <laughs> someone in the Knesset might have executed him. <laughs> so maybe um, maybe he recognizes the continuation of the, of the ethnic cleansing campaign. You condemn the USA every goddamn day of my life. The, sport, the source spoke with Jerusalem Post at a time heightened diplomatic pressure. Biden, <clears throat> Biden made the headlines at his State of the Union address to Congress last Thursday when he announced that the U.S. military planned to build an emergency temporary port off Gaza coastline to help facilitate the entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza. He made the statement in light of the hunger crisis in Gaza and to underscore the U.S. commitment to helping Palestinian people during Israel's military campaign to destroy Hamas. This also does track with, like, Biden's experience here, where, like, the only time he is, like, even remotely considerate of palestinians if he gets the go-ahead from benjamin netanyahu or the israeli side in general so that is actually uh the the other reason why i'm saying like ah, place uh, hassan is a prison guard yeah i have to make her lay on that thing instead of the ground because her laying on the ground is actually hurting her yet another instance where i know better just like when chat tells me to watch this watch that and sometimes their suggestions are fucking awful for the stream she's not allowed on the ground because when she's on the ground she gets blisters because her bones start rubbing on her elbows and then those blisters turn into hot spots that she licks with an open wound yeah laying on solid ground can also cause major joint issues my dog had to start expensive meds yes <sighs> that's it this is pure cope analysis the new port is for israel's new lng offshore deposit access the ones egypt wanted i know everybody keeps saying this um i don't know i don't know the the I, I am I am not going to make these assertions without more evidence of the matter. It does provide a very neat uh real reason for something like this to occur, but but I don't think that a a, a port she's so fucking cute, it's crazy. Sorry. I love her so much. Yeah, I'm looking at you. What? Are you embarrassed? <laughs> don't. <laughs> she's like, okay, well I can't get out. She's sassy. She's sassy pants. What are you looking at? She's so well-behaved. I agree. What are you looking at? Keep eating your bone. 
Might be dumb, but maybe put a box fan under her bed, air cool that baby like a CPU worth a try. That bed is uh, is is self cooling. Um. Anyway, the move was also viewed as a criticism of Netanyahu by the United States, with Biden stating in a speech on Thursday that Israel could and should do more to help Palestinians in Gaza. Years before the Gaza war, Israel Katz, now the foreign minister, had drawn up plans for maritime route via Cyprus involving a floating island. The project was never executed, but he revived it after the war began on October 7th. Okay, this that makes more sense. One of the complicating factors with a maritime route was the absence of a port in Gaza big enough to handle cargo ships. This way, they get to control a maritime route through Gaza. That makes sense. Israel has welcomed Biden's announcement of a military operation to build a temporary port. Yeah. Anyway, Senate Dems say blocking weapon shipments on the table if Israel invades Rafah. The remarks made by Chris Van Hollen come amid pressure from Democrats for President Joe Biden to take a tougher tag in his rift with Netanyahu over Israel's strategy in Gaza. It'd be real crazy if the congressional Democrats uh, vote to veto this, but there is enough or, 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 or vote against it. But there's enough votes in Senate from Democrats and Republicans alike that will pre uh, that will continue and Biden will actually vote for it. I, I mean, Biden will actually sign it. Congressional action to block U.S. arms sales to Israel is certainly something that's on the table if Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu launches a large-scale invasion of Rafah, a top senator said Tuesday. It also does seem like senators are urging Biden to stop arming Israel, citing violation of U.S. aid law, which, you know, it is. A group of Democratic senators urged President Biden on Monday to stop providing offensive weapons to Israel for the war against Hamas until it lifts restrictions on U.S.-backed humanitarian aid going into Gaza. Uh, in a letter to Biden, President uh, or Senator Bernie Sanders, independent of Vermont, and seven Democrats argued that by continuing to arm Israel, Mr. Biden was violating the Foreign Assistance Act, which bars military support from going to any nation that restricts the delivery of humanitarian aid. This is true. They're like, hey, you can keep using the offensive weapons in Gaza to do the genocide, but just like let the aid in. Here's an update on the Gaza hostage talks as well. We're going to move on from this after the update. Barack Ravid says... Israeli officials claim that in recent days, Israel received indications from Qatari and Egyptian mediators that point to shifts among Hamas's leadership that may lead within days to progress that will allow moving to serious negotiations on a deal. A senior Israeli official said that Qatar and Egypt had significantly increased their pressure on Hamas, including threats from Qatar to expel senior Hamas officials from Doha, which was confirming a report in the Wall Street Journal, even though the Wall Street Journal has shown itself to be unreliable uh, throughout this entire process. Um... The Israeli official said Hamas understands that the ball is in their court. We see pressure that did not exist before and hope that it will show results. There is relatively more optimism than a few days ago. I think this reframes the entire conversation off of, I think this is, um, the conversation is shifted directly off of the hands of Israel in this circumstance because Hamas's original uh, conditions for hostage negotiations was absolutely valid and decent and actually would play well if the western media ever fucking showed it it was a it was a step-by-step -step push it was a step-by-step -step push towards a permanent ceasefire i'm going to change uh, andrew tate gets aiden ross gets andrew tate arrested and then in parentheses he's now released okay here you go so that all the people that don't uh, chirp at me uh will will uh, no longer chirp at me ah the Israeli officials said Hamas understands the balls in their court. Israeli officials emphasized that Israel is still waiting on an official answer from Hamas to see if the, the organization does indeed change direction and is ready to move for more serious negotiations based on the Paris framework. Qatar and Egypt told Israel they will expect to receive such an answer in the next two days. In a few days, we will know where this is going. If there's an answer from Hamas, it will be the beginning of negotiations. The Israeli official said, if that's the case, we will sit and hold internal discussions to decide what we are ready for, and what we are not. In any case, we want the next meeting with the mediators to be a serious one for negotiations on the details of the agreement. Anyway, still ridiculous that this is being presented as though uh, uh, Hamas are not cooperating in the negotiations, when in fact they did. And then Israel was like, well, we need, uh, we need like detailed placements of which hostages are where and, and whether they're alive or not. Um, and we won't come to the table until you give us that. And they were like, we can't give you that. We're not going to give you that. Look at the fucking negotiation we, we presented. And it blows my fucking mind. It's like, they're like, no, we want to keep bombing. We want to keep bombing. If you care about the hostages, you wouldn't keep fucking bombing. Hamas is trying to go for a permanent ceasefire, step by step, with a release of hostages in increments. 
uh, that, that start off with the Ramadan period and continue beyond the Ramadan period uh, to ensure a permanent ceasefire, knowing full well that the international community will pressure Israel if there is a continued ceasefire. If it's seven days, it's not enough. But if it's fucking three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, everybody understands that the appetite for genocide is going to, uh, regardless of what the Israeli appetite for genocide is, the appetite for genocide from the international community will go away or defending genocide will go away. I mean, I agree with the ceasefire, but I feel like the fact that Hamas isn't providing the list is sus, or rather, I can't think of a reason as to why not, at least none that are good. I mean, par the, the, probably the reason why they are not releasing is, is because a bunch of hostages died under Israeli rocket fire, and they don't want to reveal how little hostages they have remaining, or if, like, you know, 10 of them died or whatever. The other reason is because... The other reason is because they have no current communications with half of the fucking militancy groups uh, without a ceasefire. It's probably the other reason. This is why a ceasefire is a necessity regardless. Like, it's a logistical necessity for the hostage release to occur. Do you understand? And if a ceasefire comes in, okay, this will be the only way for there to be hostage swaps, obviously. As we know, Israel blows up their own hostages regularly. Come on now. But having said that, if a ceasefire were to occur, then you can actually have on the ground investigators like third party investigators that can also cover the atrocities of Israel. Because remember, in the seven days, in the seven day ceasefire period, that's precisely what happened. People were able to see a clearer picture of what was going on in Gaza because the only foreign journalists that were allowed in Gaza were no longer just foreign journalists that were being embedded. If you recall, Clarissa Ward literally snuck into Gaza with Qatari, uh, with a, with a Qatari uh, healthcare team. That was one of the first instances where Western media was able to offer clear coverage from the ground directly with their own, with their own reporting that didn't go through the Israeli military censor. Because every other piece of news that you have seen of Gaza that you see on CNN that wasn't directly recorded from a phone camera of a Palestinian who is like three seconds away from being fucking lasered by an Israeli American weapons that Israel is using is always going to be foreign reporters embedded with the IDF where the IDF has final censor power. This is, by the way, openly admitted. Like, this is not a suspicion of mine. This is not... I'm not making this up. It sounds unreasonable. It sounds insane, but it is the truth. Oh, he reports the news talking about Tate isn't platforming him. Lamont. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the uh, Andrew Tate saga. We talked about this earlier today. Andrew Tate was arrested after Aiden Ross blabbed about his escape plans. Now, Andrew Tate is um, Andrew Tate obviously still has an ongoing uh, criminal case. In Romania, but there's also an additional case in the UK. Uh, UK is trying to extradite him to England. However, the Romanian authorities have said we will cooperate and we will extradite him to England after the Romanian court uh, case is done. Okay? It is a pretty funny moment because it reveals once again how fucking unimaginably stupid Andrew Tate is and how unimaginably stupid Aiden Ross is. Andrew Tate foolishly communicated his plans of escaping Romania and never coming back to Aiden Ross in a text message conversation that kick live streamer Aiden Ross and fellow alpha male openly said on his broadcast. Where's the clip? Do we have it? I, I think I yeeted it already. Can you guys send me the clip again? How does this not have the clip? Um, Andrew had hit me up. He said, hey, I'm going to be uh, leaving Romania soon and probably never coming back. If you want to come over and do a week of long streams and content before I leave, I think it'll be big. And it's never, it's, I'm sorry. He said, it's not, it's basically now or never. Um, so, you know, and, you know, and, and this is just, I told you guys this year, you know, it's a week of content, right? Um, and again, guys, this might be the last time we ever do this. So it's kind of like, we got to take advantage of it now because, hey, bro, it's, it's, it's just, it's basically like, yeah, it's like that. It's so funny. Like I said, there's just like layers of stupidity here. Layers of stupidity. Andrew Tate being like, I'm going to leave Romania and never come back while there's an ongoing court. Uh, well, there's an ongoing criminal investigation. Very dumb. 
Okay. Presenting him as a potential flight risk in an ongoing investigation is very stupid. Even if you are, even if you have no interest in like leaving until the court case is ended. Okay. Saying it to Aiden Ross is extra stupid because Aiden Ross is always going to reveal that information. Like what the fuck? Giving your potential escape plans to Aiden Ross is like one of the dumbest things that I can think of. Okay. According to legal representative from McHugh Law, the firm representing four British women accusing Tate of rape and sexual assault, UK judicial authorities issued a warrant for their arrests and the extradition on sexual abuse charges after we were informed by one of our contacts that an associate of Tate, Aiden Ross, had discussed Tate's intention to flee during a video on the gaming and live streaming platform Kick. Just so people understand, they directly pointed to Aiden Ross as the reasoning for why they thought he was a potential flight risk. <sighs> Ross goes on to ask his fans whether they would be interested in seeing content him uh, featuring him and Tate saying again, guys, it might be the last time we ever do this. So it's kind of like we got to take advantage of it now because, hey, it's basically it's basically like that. S spokesperson for the Tates tells Rolling Stone, we unequivocally deny any accusations that Andrew or Tristan Tate intend to abscond from Romania to evade the judicial proceedings, saying Ross misconstrued Andrew's message to him. God, that's so funny. A rep for Ross did not immediately return a request for comment. A highly controversial 23-year-old streamer from Florida, Ross was permanently banned from Twitch in February 2023 for promoting hateful conduct after posting uncensored racist and anti-Semitic comments from his fans. He has been a longtime defender of the brothers, proclaiming their innocence on social media following their 2020-2022 Romania arrest and detainment on separate charges of rape trafficking and forming an organized group to exploit women. Prior to their Tuesday arrest, they were awaiting a trial in Romania and had been ordered by judges not to flee the country and its surrounding area. So... As it stands currently, if you want to know the full details of the events that unfolded, that's what it is. Uh, and according to the Romanian officials, they are going to extradite Andrew Tate into the UK after they are done with his uh, criminal trial uh, in Romania. I'm confused about anti-Semitic. Isn't Aiden a Jew? Uh, contrary to, I guess, popular opinion, you can be anti-Semitic and be Jewish at the same time. Here's Andrew Tate speaking after his uh, release from jail earlier today. Unfortunately, I understand, but I'm a Satan wrestler to go to, to make my choice, which is jail every single time. My soul is not for sale, neither are my principles. We are a lot of innocent angry. men. No, we're very innocent men, and in time, everybody's going to see that, and we're very excited to finish this judicial process in Jerome. Well, they are free for now, but uh, still, the Romanian courts approve yeah. extradition to the UK after the trial is over here. It's very funny because I've been asking the Romanian courts to go to the UK myself. I've asked five times and been declined. So. Now I get to go home. It's fantastic. You will be in the, in the jail again at the final of the process. What well, do you think about that? Well, see, no, it's in Qatar. Five more females that are playing. That's what they claim. The claims are being made about intentions to flee Romania. It's not my first claim to you. The day the judge told me that you'd like to get a strike to England, since we're having fun, I have some of your best TikToks on Tate lined up. Here's a the reason 18 and 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 year olds is because they've been through lesbian. <laughs> I'll say this right here on the fucking internet. Huh? <laughs> what? Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Uh, since then, we found out that he was also trying to fuck like a Romanian authorities needed proof that Andrew Tate was in the country, so they reportedly used his social media posts. His this part is not. Uh, this part was was proven to be false. By the way, for the record, we're having fun, but it's not even correct. He said even, even if I thought the pizza box is not uh, the one that got him uh, locked up. Women were worse drivers. I've seen empirical evidence, and I'm so smart that I ignore my own eyes and ears and believe what the internet tells me. That's what That's he's coming not what I'm saying. asking you to do, my friend. I'm sure, you're, I'm sure you're double vaccinated. It all makes sense to me now. You believe what you're told to believe. You don't believe your own <laughs> eyes. You don't. And that's we're going to sit here and talk about empirical evidence that you found on Google. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> do you believe the earth is flat or do you believe the earth is is spherical round? Yeah, oh, he took his uh, headphones off. He gets very stressed sometimes. And, you know, yeah, like, sometimes you can't take the heat. So you got to get out of the kitchen a little bit. Um, Andrew, do you believe the earth is flat or round? Round. What you believe it's round, right? But when you walk outside, it feels like it's flat. Brother, brother, and I, I, I it looks flat. It feels flat, but you believe it's round. Why do you uh, believe the earth is round? 
Because I have personal experience that would prove to me that the Earth is round. Oh, you have personal experience. What, what happened? Did you go up to the fucking moon? Is that how you figured right. it out? Exactly. I flew up into space and I looked down on Earth. <laughs> Okay. One small step for Tom G. Hey, listen, you don't have to concede on that point, but I think you and I both understand the importance of empirical evidence in that one, right? Or, or you know, science. It's, that one is a perfect one because, like, that literally works for everything that he does. It, that one is not even me owning him. It's me owning the concept of utilizing anecdotes instead of, like, actual data. It's so funny that you've actually talked to this guy. It's even funnier that after I talked to this guy, I broke his brain so much that for the subsequent months, for the subsequent months that followed, he literally kept talking about how, like, I wear dresses and how I deny the Armenian genocide and, and all this, like, nonsensical bullshit. A big part of, like, why I have so many fucking dedicated haters is because I came after him at his peak, okay? That's what it was. Which is, yeah, his, his court wizard cursed me. Like, that's what happened. Chat was fun for a few weeks after that. I missed the Tate kids. Yeah, he got his mage to literally fucking curse me, dude. Oh, I think that's why YouTube pushed you into my algorithms. Yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, I love how they didn't include you in this thread. Yeah, I wonder why I was not included in the Andrew Tate destroying streamer nerds professionally with high testosterone logic. Perhaps it doesn't fit the bill. You know what I mean? Perhaps uh, that I've said this before. The debate made me a dedicated fan of you, Lamau. Like I, I am Romania Politia W. Thanks for the info, King. Interpol W. Let's go. What sharing in Hoscord now? How is this? What is going on? Weren't you in that XQC one uh, as well? I wasn't in that point. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. In many ways, edited M image, ask Catherine, what? It is an edited image. It's a meme. Okay. Hassan is a supporter of the Ottoman Empire, does not deny Armenian, Assyrian, nor Greek genocide. People have been throwing hate on Hoscore for ages in those circles it's because of Reddit. Oh, it is an edited, it's an edited image. Okay, listen, 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 listen. For all the alpha dogs, okay, no disrespect to these people that are like, uh, you know, going after someone who presents himself as like this masculine beacon, right? For all the alpha dogs out there, like everything that they can stick on someone like XQC or uh, this guy uh, as well, like who has pink hair, like they can't really do that to me because the reality is like, yeah, I wear dresses, but I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like I paint my nails. I don't give a shit. I'm still like, I'm, you can't, sit there and genuinely be like yeah this guy is actually like he he is not a a very masculine uh, masculine looking person you know what i mean that's it that's the that's the whole point because a lot of these dudes basically look at shapes and colors they don't actually fucking internalize any information so there is there it, it only goes a long way it only goes if like the the interlocutors fit the bill of like a soy person you know what I mean? Because being alpha in the way that these guys understand it, being alpha, right, is just being masculine, being masculine in your sexuality, being masculine, being a confident person, being a leader. Like these are all the values that they ascribe to being alpha, okay, which is a fraudulent concept to begin with. That's why I always say, like, if you have to say that you're an alpha dog, you ain't alpha, okay? And that's the point. Like, you can present yourself as like a big dog, alpha dog all day, every day with this. Okay. You can chirp about it, but ultimately it's like someone that looks like Sneeko talking to someone that looks like me. And he's trying to champion the alpha dog masculinity cause while, you know, he has the same musculature and size of one of my fucking quads. Okay. If you're as skinny as one leg of mine, you can't really do that, right? Because ultimately, the people in your audience do still react with their fucking lizard brains to shapes, colors, and sizes, and they can see it. That's why it's always funny when, like, Ben Shapiro presents, like, rigid masculinity when he doesn't even fulfill the standards that he is applying to rigid masculinity, so he has to make up for it with this. Masculinity is when I believe in right-wing concepts, actually. 
Yeah, that goes a long way if the guy that you are presenting yourself against is seemingly, you know, fitting the bill of a, of a soy person. That's it. This is the reason why I, I uh, am a perfect counter in many ways to the whole um, masculine uh, alpha dog PUA people, like defenders of that shit. Is it really important to be more masculine than someone? No, of course it's not. It's ridiculous. Anyway, serious question. Do you think there are no women out there that are attracted to that warped sense of masculinity? I'm sure there are. What do you mean? There are people that go on fresh and fit podcast and shit. Like, I've never been a, I have never been a, uh, a, a defender that like all women unconditionally are always going to be right on every issue. Okay. No, it's the classic meme of, no, I don't support all women. Some of you are very dumb is, is correct. Like that is a, everyone has the capacity to be dumb. Okay. It's just true. It, like there are definitely, there are definitely women out there who do respond to that sort of thing. Uh, there's a lot of internalized misogyny, as a matter of fact, right? It doesn't matter. It, it's it's meaningless. The whole point here that we are arguing against is the generalization. Incels like to look at women's wrongs. Sometimes they're not wrong at all, but are presented as though it is a wrong. But incels will like incels love looking at like a real situation where there is a woman doing something wrong, and then extrapolate that like the entirety of the fucking gender is like this, all bad. They look to reinforce their biases that they have, okay? I don't think just pearly things is a representation of all women, just as I don't think, like, a, a, a singular individual being dumb uh, it means that, like, all women are that way, or being uh, uh, genuinely malicious means that all women are like that. For example, for example, remember that whole saga that lasted, like, two fucking days? With the dude who went to a concert, Omale concert, and then his girlfriend literally presented herself as single so that she could, like, throw it back for Omale in broad daylight in front of the entire fucking concert hall. Remember that moment? She was singularly acting in a wrong way, okay? She was being malicious. She was bad. She was embarrassing her partner. That's just a bad person, okay? That doesn't mean all women are like that. If your brain is fucking bro broken and you already have that dog in you where you hate uh, women unconditionally, you're going to be like, yeah, see, I told you. All women are like that. Not realizing that even her friends, her female friends, after the concert were going, yeah, it was that bad, bitch. What the fuck were you doing? Clearly, not everyone agreed with her, including her fucking closest friends and confidants. That is the issue here. Not recognizing... Uh, that is the issue with a lot of incels that like uh, apply for uh, uh, false structural standards. All right. Broad daylight, more like spotlight silhouette. Yeah. Listen, we all have our moments. Sometimes I forget to run the top of the hour ad break and run it 20 minutes into the top of the hour. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime. Okay. That's just how it goes. Also, people can be bad and people can make mistakes and change. Exactly. That too. Anyway, don't make a mistake and be unsubscribed at the top of the hour. Subscribe and avoid said ads. E stuck. Thank you for the five tier one. Give the subs a line. Five people that no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three minute ad break now. I don't even know why these conversations still need to be had. No matter gender, race, religion, or whatever. You're always going to have bad people, stupid people, evil, or mean. But it doesn't mean that everyone in the group is bad. It just means that some humans can be awful. Yeah, one of the classic things that people always say about me usually racist people say about me is that like Hassan can find no wrong in black people Hassan never admits when a black person does something wrong this is not true okay this is not true at all but a lot of racist people go along with this narrative it's it's ridiculous okay it's an objectively ridiculous take and people always do that people always say that about like women or any other marginalized community why do they say that it's because I, when covering a marginalized background, someone from a marginalized background, whether it be black people, whether it be trans people, whether it be women, okay, will usually apply the same standard that I do across the board. And that breaks people's brains because we are conditioned into thinking about marginalized people as a monolith. That's it. It's easy thinking. 
And if you're conditioned into seeing marginalized people as a monolith, then examples of, of negative examples of a, of a person from that background behaving in a way that is consistent with the underlying stereotypes is going to be proof for you to go, yes, yeah, see, that's how it works. And when you do, those same people will say you're being racist for disagreeing with a POC. Exactly. Anyway, um, before we get to, uh, before we get to the, the, uh, what's going on in Haiti, here's Ben popping the fuck off again. Okay. My boy, Ben coming out with a great take, take after take. He's got it all. Ben Shapiro on Medicare and social security. No one in the United States should be retiring at 65 years old. And let's be real about this. It's insane that we haven't raised the retirement age in the United States. It's totally crazy. Joe Biden, if that were the case, Joe Biden should not be running for president. Hey, Joe Biden is 81 years old. Wait, what? Yes, this is true. Joe Biden shouldn't be running for president. And yes, the retirement age should be lowered, as a matter of fact, not made higher. What the fuck? The retirement age in the United States, at which you start to receive so Social Security and you are eligible for Medicare, is 65. Joe Biden has technically been eligible for Social Security and Medicare for 16 years, and he wants to continue in office until he is 86, which is 19 years, past when he would be eligible for retirement. No one in the United States should be retiring at 65 years old. Frankly, I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some sort of health problem. Everybody that I know who is, who is elderly, who has retired, is dead within five years. What is he saying, bro? How do people look at this guy and think that he has any fucking fact in any of his analysis, like ever, how do you look at the situation and go, first of all, everyone around me is dead. <laughs> everyone around me that retires dies immediately, okay? In order to avoid death, you must work till you die. I also don't get it because like, one, you're straight up fucking alienating your audience of old people. And two, making an argument for why Biden should continue running for president at his age. Which, by the way, that very same argument extends to Donald Trump as well. Both of those motherfuckers should have retired. Hello? They're old. They're both old. This is like the maximalist position that is the worst possible position that Ben could have arrived at. And if you talk to people who are elderly and they lose their purpose in life by losing their job and they stop working, things go to hell in a handbag. Lose their purpose in life by fucking losing their job is crazy, dude. Yeah. You know what I think of? When I think of... You know, when I think of the, the happiest elderly on the planet, I think of the Walmart greeters. That's right. I think of the old lady that's still working in the Amazon facility. Okay? She's so happy. Basket real quick. But put all of that aside, just on a fiscal level and on a logical level. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt established 65 as the retirement age, the average life expectancy in the United States was 63 years old. Today, the average life expectancy in the United States is close to 80. It's totally insane that you believe that you should be able to work from the time that you are essentially 20 to the time that you are 65, which is a 45 year period, pay in, and then you will receive social security benefits sufficient to support you and your family, you and your wife or whatever, for like another 20 years. That's crazy talk. That is not fiscally sustainable. The notion that if you have to raise the retirement age to 67 or 68, that everyone is gonna fall apart. My parents are that age. My parents are not retired and they shouldn't retire. It would be very bad for them to retire. By the way, it's disrespectful to people who are 67, 68, 69 years old to suggest that they are in the same shape as people who are 65 were in 1940. It's not true at all. Dude, this is nuts. Bro, bro really said Arbat macht frei, by the way. Like he's saying, work sets you free. Everybody knows this, okay? I don't know where I got this quote from, but everybody knows work sets you free, okay? Work, 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 work. When you're a productive laborer, when you have productive output that is necessary, for society to continue, you are happy. You are at your happiest. It's like, bro, retirement used to be presented in the past as a positive thing. It's like after you sucked the dick over and over and over again for 40 fucking years, for 50 fucking years, now you can finally not work and survive. But because of austerity and because of the way that American capitalism operates, we do not have that freedom for our elderly, okay? When they are no longer productive members of society, pro productive in the, in the capitalist sense, I'm saying, okay? Like that used to be a thing that people look forward to. You know, you get your pension, you retire, you travel the world, you do the things that you wanted to do that you didn't have the fucking freedom to do when you were working. We've completely moved past that point 
And that is precisely the reason why Ben can even say such things without people immediately trying to fucking put him under a goddamn guillotine like the French would, okay? Holy moly. It's additionally funny for him to say this as someone who just sits behind a fucking camera like me, okay, and chirps about the world for two hour increments at a time and makes tens of millions of fucking dollars. We are very fortunate people, Ben and I, okay? Been even more fortunate than someone like myself. Ridiculous for him to sit there and be like, you poors, you need to keep working longer. Far after, far after you should be working in a normal situation. Blows my goddamn mind, dude. How the fuck can someone listen to this and go, yeah, no, this is my guy. This is my woke guy. Have you met a 65-year-old lately? 65-year-olds are not old in the United States. They're not. 68-year-olds are not old in the United States. Like he's trying to present it as a positive, which is crazy. Yes, bro. Due to medical phenomena, all right, due to the modern, due to modern medicine, 65-year-olds get 10 fucking extra years of having fun. The notion that life expectancy was 63 at a time when FDR laid it down for 65 as a retirement age wasn't so that people fucking die, dog. Like, what do you mean? Also, the reason why life expectancy was 65 wasn't because people were dying at the age of 65. I don't think a lot of people understand how life expectancy works. It's infant mortality. That's what lowers life expectancy. I don't think, I mean, Ben should know this. He's a fucking political commentator. This is a common misconception about even like the dark ages or whatever, thinking that people just fucking straight up die at the age of 30. Why the fuck do we have hundreds of talking heads like this saying retirement age is too low, but zero saying we should lower it? Retirement age should be 10 to 20 years earlier and Social Security tax should, cap should be lifted. I agree, but good luck. Yeah, Joe Biden thinks he's not old, and that dude is running for president again, and that dude actually is old, and he's 81. I, I failed to see how a country in which our entire leadership class is 80 plus is telling you that we should have a retirement age of 65. It makes no sense. Yeah, and then he goes like, he talks about the underlying perceived hypocrisy. I need to, oh... The point of retirement is supposed to be seen as like, you've done your work, you no longer have to, okay? You've done your work, you worked your whole fucking life, and you no longer should have to. Now you can have fun, okay? Now you can have a sense of autonomy in your life. Now you can control your own destiny, right? That was supposed to be the fucking retirement. Ben literally has completely cast aside that notion. Retirement is not even seen as a positive. Because you want to know why retirement is not seen as a positive nowadays? Because Social Security doesn't make up enough. Because there's no such thing as pensions. It's now 401ks for the most part. Okay? That's it. Ben also makes an argument as to why Biden should retire. He's too old. Blows my goddamn mind, dude. The reason life expectancy was so low was infant mortality. People still live to 80. It's a silly argument. I know. I know. It's just, like, it's dumb. Also, obviously, like, there are other reasons, like, medical uh, achievements. Yes, I saw the headline. I'm going to talk about it. Hold on. Where is this? Imagine if I gotta Americans take knew okay. that China's average retirement age was 54. Hold on. Look at this shit, by the way. Jesus Christ. This is why they're scared of China. Because maybe Americans might start questioning the way things are. Maybe we'd stop celebrating when an 82-year-old gets to retire only because a GoFundMe. All we see is propaganda like this, or this one, or this one, when in reality, it's because of this, and this, and this, or this. China isn't necessarily the model to look out for, but guess what? They're doing a lot of things well, and it presents an alternative to the way things are in the West, and that is scary for the ruling class. Fuck Islam, they are all terrorists. Thanks, man. I'm a retirement originalist. The framers before us decided the retirement should be at 65, and that's it. There will be no retirement control, shall not be infringed. I'm infringed. I'm opposed to any retirement control unless we get more retirement. Bro, it, it's just like, I, I don't know what to say about this. Like, it, it's just so, it's so odd. Like, we argue against a life of dignity at every step here in the United States of America, and it's like built into our core. A life of dignity is not one where you are lost in your work, where you have no where you have no control over your life because you're working. A life of dignity is the freedom to pursue things that are uh, fulfilling, meaningful. That's how you have a life of dignity. 
Here's another anti-retirement I know video. politicians are telling you you can retire at 60, but let me tell you, the economics are clear. We need to be working into our 70s. The idea of retiring at 60 is fine if you're going to die at 70. But the truth is... What the fuck do you mean? No, it's not. What? How much money does this fucking freak make? Hold on. Linda Gratton. Let's see what she does. A British organizational theorist, consultant, and professor of management practice at London Business School. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's a fucking scouser who betrayed her earlier ways. What is this? She's from Liverpool, too. Fucking. Neoliberalism robs you of your soul. I swear to God. This argument, I don't think, works in America. Because the American dream, quite literally, is retiring at the age of 30, retiring at the age of 40. That is literally what the American dream is all about. Being able to, like, fucking fuck off and make fuck you money early on get the bag the entrepreneur mindset is quite literally this so that's precisely the reason why i don't think americans look at this and go no actually i do want a fucking uh, a life of of uh, endless work linda gratton redesigning work how to transform your organization and make hybrid work for everyone future of work thought leader writer speaker influencer hello i'm professor linda gratton as well as an award-winning thought leader, writer, and speaker. I'm the founder of the global, global Research Advisory Practice, HSM Advisory. Very nice. I've been retired for eight years, and here's the truth. Save your money, invest as much as possible, and retire as soon as you can. We were not made to work like mules until we die. There are so many things people can do besides work, just my two cents. Yes. My retirement account has gone down 13.7% the past year due to rebalancing. I did it out of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. What are the best alternatives to take in order to secure financially free retirement? People just want freedom in their retirement. They want to be able to pursue dignified things. They want to be able to make to keep themselves busy. Okay? That's the whole point. The issues with retirement is not due to the retirement age being too fucking early. It is that you don't have meaningful pursuits post-retirement because we've been wired into being fucking serfs that's the problem we've been wired into thinking that we're peasants okay that we have to work for a life of dignity there is so much more to be had to be experienced in the fucking world other than your output at the widget factory jesus christ dude and it's always asshole economists who chirp like this it's like yeah obviously your job is a little bit more meaningful than most of the fucking workforce i hate this this is why i hate the world economic forum by the way because this isn't socialism this is the exact opposite this is capitalism this is neoliberal capitalism and display oh even India is seeing some of this opinion with Narayan Murthy, who is the father-in-law of UKPM Rishi Sunak and is the founder of Infosys, one of the largest conglomerates in India. He literally started stated that the youth of India should work 70 hours a week. Insane. Yeah, because they are desperately trying to squeeze what remains for the fraction uh, for the fractions that will give you additional uh, uh, profit margins. That's it. As technology improves. As sectors streamline, as, as there is more efficiency, you need less workers for the same output. But that also creates a real tricky problem. The rate of profit tends to decline in that circumstance. And when the rate of profit declines, well, then you have to do imperialism to keep people servile and low so that you can continue exploiting them further. But, you know... Progress is still inevitable on that front due to technological achievements, even if they arrive later, right? And those technological achievements can be your liberators or they can further enslave you. Under capitalism, all matter of technological advancement is seen as a mechanism to enslave you further, even if it makes your life in other avenues a little bit easier. Yes, it can be your wings or your ball and chain. Now, the problem is... We do not have any way of seeing it. And this is a genuine problem for the future because as we develop further and further, as medicine improves, as people survive and live to the age of 100, okay, 
as we survive and live to the age of 100, you now have a real problem with like people who are just not contributing to the output. People who are not simply working at the widget factory. Okay. When you're 70, you can't work at the widget factory anymore. What the fuck are we supposed to do? Now, either we change our entire way, either we rewire the way that our, our economy is organized, which we won't do because too many people make money the way that uh, the economy is organized currently, or we try to find different ways of continuing to put older people back into the fucking workforce. And we'll sell you a lie while we advocate for such things like, oh, this is good for your brain. God forbid. God forbid. You, you look at the situation and you go, we should make, we should find ways of improving retirement that people can, uh, people can find dignity in pursuit of passions that they literally did not have time to pursue, that people can continue working their brains in meaningful ways in the way that they would when they were working. Nope. That would require profits to plummet. We can't do that. Get back to fucking work, I say. Awesome. Awesome. It's great stuff. Most of us aren't. Every single decade, we live longer. So the thought that you- Isn't that crazy? Like modern medicine has made our lives, modern medicine has improved our lives dramatically, and we still find a way to fuck that up. So the thought that you might live to 100 is a possibility. And so the idea of retiring in your 60s, I think, is entirely outmoded. We need to think about working right the way through our life. But of course, to do that, we have to change the way we think about our whole life. I'm Linda Grattan. I'm professor of management practice at the London Business School and founder of HSM Advisory. I'm the author of- This is the most nefarious type of propaganda because like she's presenting working as a positive and saying like, we should simply rewire the way we understand work. That's not going to happen for 99% of the fucking workforce. Of redesigning work and the 100-year life. I've been writing about the future of work for more than 20 years. And frankly, I was beginning to get pretty frustrated. I wrote about how the world was going to change. And I was sort of surprised it didn't change. Because actually the forces against change are pretty strong. People were saying, well, we still need to come into the office. I know there's a long commute, but it's really important. You can retire when you're 60, that's gonna be okay. I knew that wasn't gonna work, but I really couldn't see the forces that were going to change that. The pandemic was an astonishing event. Suddenly, 50% of workers could work from home. So what that did was to upend many of the traditions we had about work. For example, if you take a look at a typical life that your dad had or that my dad had in the 40s and 50s, it followed three stages, which everybody did, by the way, at the same time. Full-time education, full-time work, full-time retirement. You don't really have to have a great deal of self-insight. All you have to do is to look around left and right and ask yourself, what's everybody else doing at my age? Because age equals stage. But that's not gonna work for me. It's not gonna work for you and it's certainly not gonna work for our children. Think about the way that the world is changing. It's changing in the sense that we're living longer. So that means that simply retiring at 60 or 55 just- Dude, this is the, are you ready for the new world order shit? I swear to God. You will own nothing and be happy. This is literally like, you will keep working because work sets you free. <laughs> That's what this is. Just isn't going to work. Eat the bug. It's changing in the sense that there are huge technological changes coming up almost on a daily basis. Funny enough, if you raise the retirement age, life expectancy would probably drop as a consequence of it. Yeah, literally. For example, generative AI is a thing that we're all looking at now. Why are we so excited and frightened of that? Well, it replaces knowledge work. In fact, there's an argument that it might even replace the creative tasks that we do. So technology requires us to upskill and reskill every year of our life. And it's changing in the sense 
that the family structures that we have are also becoming much more individual. So if we're going to have different ways of living, different family structures, we need to redesign work. So here's what I think is going to happen. Finally, please. We're going to start doing what I would call a multi-stage life. It's the idea that you can do all sorts of different things at all sorts of stages. So for example, education suddenly becomes something you do right the way through your life. It becomes a lifetime of learning. Work becomes something that you dip in and out of. Rather than starting in a company when you're 20 years old and just going straight through, you could work part-time, you could freelance, you could take time off. And retirement also moves back and it takes- This is so funny, consulting. I like the, the very necessary labor of consulting, okay? She's like, come on, everyone will be a consultant at, at one stage of their lives. It's like, yo, are you fucking dumb as hell? We need nurses. We need plumbers, lady. That's like, we. you're so stupid. Like, we're talking about the broadest sectors in the Western world. It's literally socially necessary labor. Not socially unnecessary labor like consulting or Twitch streaming. It would be like... It blows my mind how fucking out of touch these people are because like people that listen to this shit come in here and yell at me all the goddamn time, not realizing that like, I've never made an argument. For example, I've never made an argument that like I, what I'm doing is like socially necessary labor. Okay. It's not, there's utility in it, but it's not, you know what I mean? It's so fucking stupid. It takes time. The point that I want to make... She's literally seeing, like, she's basically doing the elevated version of, like, start a drop shipping company. And then, once you have a drop shipping company, start consulting others to start drop shipping companies. Okay, what happens when everyone's doing that? Who's buying the drop shipping company shit? This is literally like a, like a multi-level marketing scheme maxed out, base boosted. It's, it's very hard to work until you're 70 in one long, never-ending streak. You have to break that up. And so you can make a life that works for you, not the life that worked for your dad. This also presented gi presents gig economy work, part-time work as a good thing when it's not because gig economy work and part-time work, which is increasingly becoming uh, the norm in the Western world, unironically withers away labor protections. So you're fucking broken. It's unstable, dude. They're presenting this as though it's uh, beneficial. It is beneficial for capital owners. It is infinitely more beneficial for your bosses to ensure that you stay contracted employees rather than full-time employees because you have no fucking security in that situation. Or for your mom. The life that works for you. Now, what's exciting about a multi-stage life, but also, frankly, makes it more difficult is that each of us lives our multi-stage life in the way we want to do it. So it could be that at the age of 30, you decide to take time off for a year and travel the world. But as you look around, there's not that many other Who? people. Who's able to do that? Who's she talking about? Who's got the money? I don't get it. I don't understand. Just have rich parents and you will be able to take time out and travel the world who are going to be doing the same thing. You have to have more of a sense of yourself. The truth is, the three-stage life is relatively easy. You don't need to think very much about it. You can just get on and do it, and do it the same way as all your peers do. Multi-stage life. Shit like this makes me realize that if I was like, um, like an out-of-touch, prosperity gospel-type influencer, I would live a much more comfortable life. Like, nobody would chirp at me. All of you in this community would be chirping at me from afar, but I wouldn't hear it over the uh, over the massive loud sounds of admiration from the dummies. Okay, going no, he's so look, see, Hassan is a beacon of of uh, being a guy who came here at the age of eighteen and made something of himself, and he's actually preaching to everyone how they can also fulfill their own destiny in a similar light. You guys are just lazy socialists.
I'm realizing, like, fu I really, really, really fucked up. I should have just valued Tane motherfuckers, like, nonstop. Yeah. This kind of stuff goes along with the interests of capital owners, so it's presented as a good argument. Straight up. I've, the ask is that you do something that perhaps nobody else in your peer group has done. You become, in other words, a social enterprise. You actually do your own thing. And that takes courage. The sort of questions that you want to ask yourself is, what's important to me? What is it that I want to get out of my life? How do I want to live my life? So there's big questions you need to ask yourself now in order to make the most of the trends that shape our work. You just ignore your admiration in here and read all the hate start? No, I'm talking about like all the people who chirp at me and say I'm a fucking hypocrite grifter or whatever the fuck. They lap up this kind of propaganda. And there's, unfortunately for all of us, the reality is that there are mu that's a much larger crowd, okay? Let's ditch the idea of retirement. Let's all work as long as we can and make work fun, exciting, and a learning. I love that her argument for making more, uh, making work more fun was uh, resort to the gig economy, become a part-time worker, and just travel. Okay, where do we make the money? Like, where are these gigs that are uh, facilitating this lifestyle that you're presenting as, a, as an alternative? That makes no dang sense. Anyway, great stuff from Ben Shabibo. Uh, and then also this lady. Perhaps it should call into question why uh, this kind of thinking transcends boundaries and the aesthetics that people actually... The aesthetics that people actually focus on, like that lady looks like she would be a liberal in America, right? Ben Shapiro is very much a right-wing reactionary. Obviously, she probably is a Tory, let's be real. But um, why is it that they align so perfectly on the raising the retirement age? Macron is supposed to be a liberal, right? Why is he also trying to raise the retirement age? Why is it that politicians are always trying to raise the retirement age instead of making retirement livable, survivable? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like certain things transcend political lines that we think are actually well-established ideological boundaries. When, in fact, the real ideological predisposition there is pro-capitalism. So it doesn't really matter what you present yourself as, whether you like gay people or think they should die. Ultimately, you think gay, straight, doesn't matter. The retirement age must go up. Hmm. Much to consider here. Anyway, Haiti's prime minister resigns under pressure amid gang violence. This morning, Haiti descending further into chaos. After over a week of some of the worst violence the country has seen, the prime minister of Haiti overnight announcing his plans for resignation, releasing this video statement urging calm for the people of Haiti, saying he and his team will resign after the transitional consul is created. The resignation coming the same day, leaders of the Caribbean nations held an emergency meeting over the crisis in Jamaica. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken flew down to meet with the leaders, saying earlier Monday that Haitians cannot wait any longer for a path to security, stability, and democracy. What we've seen in recent days, again, should remind us that the already challenging and difficult security situation it's now deteriorated even further. Instability has worsened in Haiti since the 2021 assassination of then Prime Minister Jovenel Moïse. And Ariel Henry then came into power. Best-selling author Mitch Album runs an orphanage in Haiti and spoke to Today in 2021 when 17 members of a missionary group were abducted by members of a Haitian gang. There's not a lot of hope because you're right, the government has collapsed. The police, uh, you can't trust. Uh, one of the most notorious gang leaders is a former police oh. officer. But last week, gangs that usually fight each other banded together, attacking the presidential palace, the airports, even the prisons, releasing thousands of prisoners. Yeah, who killed the former prime minister? How'd that happen? Over the weekend, President Biden approved a military operation to airlift some non-essential personnel from the American embassy in Haiti. And we know, um, according to what consulars were saying last night, a traditional consul will select and appoint an interim prime minister. But the United Nations has said just in the last... There's no good way out of this, by the way. I'm just going to... I'm just going to disabuse people of the notion that they might have that there are like somehow revolutionary figures involved in this. There are none. OK, the gangs are bad. The leadership is bad. Everyone is fucking everyone. Every power player, every single power player involved in this. The reason why I didn't want to like cover it too much is that like 
every single power player involved in this is completely self-interested and 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 also uh, uh, you know not good people in general i'm not going to port of prince for the holidays to go serving what are you saying yes el salvador's president said he could fix haiti yeah he is he personally thinks that uh, he can probably do what he did to MS-13 in Haiti, which is insane. They literally just went into the prisons and broke everyone out of the prison. They still be paying colonial debt for the crime of fighting slavery and demanding independence, by the way. Their economy and infrastructure are in shambles. Yes. Understand that... Um, what is this? Drew Binsky went to fucking Haiti. Absolutely insane travel vlogger video recently from Haiti. What the fuck? is on the verge of the abyss. The US on Thursday issued the highest level of warning for Haiti. It's heavily armed gangs expand. Drew Binsky is like the ultimate white boy swag. All countries should ban YouTubers. No, Drew Binsky is good, usually. I don't know how the fuck he, he gets into places like this. He's actually insane. US authorities now warning all Americans to get out now. This is... I'm I'm a Drew Binsky dick writer. I'll admit it. I, I think he makes really good videos. My most ambitious trip to date. I'm going to Haiti, where 80% of the capital is controlled by ruthless gangs. We have been taken around by a bunch of gangsters, and they're all armed with two guns in their pants. They're all boys. Militias roam the neighborhoods and terrorize, raping women and capturing foreigners for ransom. What's the worst that could happen? Worst? Kidnap dog. Excuse me. You what? In the past 12 months, more than 2,400 people have been killed in Port-au-Prince, the capital city where I'm heading all by myself. What is it like inside gangster-controlled slums, and how difficult will it be to film on these streets? Hey, what's up, Vera? Hey! Good morning, ladies. He's not just a white man. He is the whitest man. He's like, he's got zero melanin in his body. Like, he is... <laughs> It is crazy. And gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you aboard American Airlines Flight 2, Port of Prince. We're here. How are we doing, man? Nice, nice to meet you. You're good. Look at you. How are you doing? This is Sean, my guide as we attempt to enter Haiti's biggest slum. Let's do it. So, what happened? There was a lot of war going on. They decided to execute one of the chiefs. So, today? Uh, that happened two nights ago. Crazy situation it's out a, here. It's a jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Before we do anything, I have to exchange US dollars on the street for local currency because Haiti is a cash only society. I've been told that the gang leaders are expecting tips from me. Democracy Now! talks to someone calling these people gang members is Western framing. I know. I, I, I listen to Democracy Now!'s coverage on Haiti as well. I am not of the mindset that like there are actual real revolutionary figures involved. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, they are paramilitaries. Like they're not, they're not like, uh, they're not gangsters, even if their inception is criminal and a lot of their actions are violent. They are basically, they're, I don't know how to describe it. They are operating as paramilitaries at this point. They are militias. They are paramilitaries. And, and, and many of them are former cops and shit like that too. It's like, this is an anarchist libertarian dystopia. If I plan on filming in the slums. Now we're gonna distribute the cash. <laughs> there, here's the thing, okay? The Western world, the global north, never forgave Haiti for being the first ever real example of a uh, revolution comprised of almost entirely slaves. And that's just, like, even, even immediately after the Haitian Revolution, even after the Haitian Revolution... Like the very real fear that it would be, uh, it would spark uh, copycats. It would, it would spark, it would inspire uh, others to do so. Was was uh, genuine, firmly held. Also, <clears throat> for the record, I just want to say, shouts out to the Polish. This is the one fucking major dub for the Polish. They, this is a a, a glaring Polish W. The Polish helped in the. Um, in the uh, Haitian Revolution. Don't film it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the police car. Holy sh that's a big car. Man. All right, here was supposed to be our palace, which was damaged in 2010 by the earth. US slavers talked about Haiti a lot. Long after it occurred, they were still terrified by the idea of a successful revolution against slavery. Warned the governor of Kentucky that the White South stood on the brink of destruction in 1860, Secession Commissioner Stephen F. Hale wrote that Lincoln's election inaugurates all the horrors 
of a San Domingo servile insurrection, consigning her citizens to assassinations and her wives and daughters to pollution and violation to satisfy the law lust of half civilized Africans. Hale's letter appeared nearly 70 years after the Haitian Revolution began and 55 years after Haiti won independence from France. Nevertheless, as Carl Lawrence Paulus demonstrates in the slaveholding crisis, fear of insurrection and the coming of the Civil War, Hale's lurid images and graphic language resonated with many white Southerners fearful about the lessons of a free black republic might hold for the nearly 4 million people held in chattel bondage in the United States. Something to remember. <sighs> Quake. Haiti's catastrophic earthquake in 2010 took the lives of 200,000 people. In the slums, it took nearly two weeks for any aid to arrive. Gang members escaped from prison, resulting in confusion over who was in charge. It breaks my heart to witness the leftover devastation from a disaster that occurred over a decade ago. But it adds to my understanding of why Port-au-Prince is the most dangerous city in the world. We have uh, a gang group not too far away from the palace. Easy. How far we? Baba? For you. Yeah, your passport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Right. Kid say? American. American. American? Yes. Hey, you like Haitian? I like Haiti. Why? Nice people. That was insane, dude. <laughs> Full police stop, massive, <laughs> massive guns. They had masks on, bulletproof vests, and they were like, what are you doing here? Are you a journalist? And they asked, is this guy have a passport? I'm glad I have it. Oh yeah. This is Grand Rio area. You heard of the gang group five seconds. You do five seconds. So this is the area down here. I feel like we've just entered into a war zone here on this street. Oh yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, man. So I'm guessing it's not too safe around here? Not really. You sure we're okay on this street? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is a bank. Capital bank. Closed because of gang activity in a town. Look at that. Bank are closed. I've been a lot of places in this world and I don't think I've ever seen streets like Port-au-Prince. Something serious. The smell of that trash burning is horrific. Look at all the chickens in the trash. So the chickens eat the trash and then we eat the chickens. <laughs> we eat the chickens. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse every day and they're not cleaning it. But what happens when you take the garbage and remove it from certain area and dump it in another area? So it's like they never actually remove the garbage and put it in the place. Haitian chatter here. People forget that main problem is not just the gangs, but how much America and other countries have way too much involvement in the country. And I feel like when people say free Haiti, they mean from the militia groups, but they should be from Western imperialism. I fear our country might be occupied by Western nations again. Oh, 100%. That's why, like, the major force here is supposed to be the Kenyan uh, uh, coalition created and not, like, American involvement because people understandably, like, Haitian people understandably have a genuine distaste for that sort of thing. Except... It is coming regardless. The way it should be. You can see the road conditions here are pretty poor. We gotta go over through potholes like that. We are rolling up to some street markets here and it is so chaotic. Total madness out here. Total madness. In the middle of the street market is just piles of trash. And then there's people selling on both sides of it. <laughs> You're popular, my friend. Oh yeah, Sherry! <laughs> This guy's sharpening a knife on the side of the street. I don't want him to come after me with a knife. Nah, he's, he's coming to the window. Yo, that's fast over. Once it's 6 o'clock, you won't see none of them in the streets. It will be empty. <laughs> they go home. The area, they will believe that maybe they will might get kidnapped or something. Walking around these streets is absolutely mental, to be honest. It's so much commotion, so much attention with the camera. I'm constantly having to like hide in the back corner and stay away from gangs. We're inching closer and closer to the real gang territory. But first, we have to fend our way through a busy street market. A lot of going on on these streets. And Sean says hi to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we call breadfruit. And that's the food that they used to provide to the slaves. I like her, her headband. That's like a West African thing. <laughs> <laughs> now this is crazy. Look at that. Gridlock traffic. Are these buses? No, that's called Tap Tap. The Tap Tap, it's a pickup truck. And then this part is made here in Haiti. This is, all this is crazy, dude. All around me right now is just chaos. Now we're on the middle of the streets. We're going to what you call a... Uh... Like a policeman. What's your name? Abbas Banyo. Nice to meet you. Hallelujah. 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 
What the hell was that about, man? Look at this street. The only city in the world that's close to like this is Mogadishu, Somalia. What's your name? Yeah, and you. Drew. This lady was calling me on the side of the road, so we're trying whatever she's selling. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying the breadfruit. It's kind of sweet. Really good. It literally tastes like bread. But apparently yeah, Drew has been into every country in Fran I mean, in every country in the world, uh, pretty much. Cine Marx is a look. All I'm gonna say is, if one of our most wokest motherfuckers in the community is writing for a dude who makes YouTube videos, as a person who has also been to many countries as a documentary uh, filmmaker, if he's gonna fucking, if he's giving him a seal of approval, if he's giving Drew the seal of approval, I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, you know admit that that holds a lot of weight. Did you want to say he was in every country France fucked? Almost. Every country that used to be France. I, I almost said that. Good dude. Uh, overall. I've been to four countries filming with Drew. He's solid. So yeah, here, let's uh yeah, let's make sure that we have he's CIA 100 percent No man, not every fucking YouTuber. No. <laughs> please stop, dude. Please, please, please stop. Jesus Christ. I can't tell if like this gives DRC vibes like crazy. That plane it places. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, I don't know why I thought DR I thought you were talking about Dominican Republic for a second. I was like, just admit you're yeah. I was like, yeah, no, I <laughs> I wonder why it gives Dominican Republic vibes, but you're talking about the uh, DRC Democratic Republic of Congo. Um yes, Cine Marxism is CIA. The real CIA is the top of the hour ad break. That is what you should be worried about. That was not a good that was actually not a very good segue, and I recognize that, and I admit that, but I don't really give a fuck. What are you going to do about it, baby? Here's the three-minute ad break now. Apparently it's a fruit, so red fruit. We are not going to take motorcycles to get across town. It's pretty intense, that's all I got to say. I'm just standing here in the blistering hot sun trying to figure out what's going on. You know, the last time I did this was in Chad, and I was with my local friend. We took two motorbikes, and I jumped on one that was stolen, and I was in a police chase. So I kind of stopped doing motorbikes. But here we are in the world's most dangerous city on another one. Ça va? Yeah, ça va, ça va. Merci, merci. Yeah. We are getting like inches away from cars and people. Like, an inch, not inches, one inch. The smell of exhaust, trash, and getting pelted in the face with dirt is uncomforting. Damn, dude. Holy sh thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I can't even see because of the dirt in my eyes, bro. Only two bucks a pop for the motorcycle, not bad. Woo! To better understand Haiti, we have to talk about slavery. The island of Hispaniola is divided into two nations, the Spanish-speaking Dominican Republic to the east and the French Creole-speaking Haiti to the west. Haiti once accounted for more than one-third of the entire Atlantic slave trade. Around the time of the American Revolution, the Haitian Revolution became the only successful slave revolt in human history. This revolution freed the colony from the French and sent aftershocks across the Atlantic world. As cruel as it was, it's amazing to see how Haiti's West African heritage plays out in traditions like voodoo. These guys have been drawing for like 15 minutes. I thought it was just gonna be a simple cross, but it's like a whole design. This ritual has a specific intention as the family prays for their son to be freed from prison. Can you explain how the people of Haiti retain their roots of Africa? We believe we're the only country in the Americas that actually connected to our roots. They also believe voodoo was the religions that freed them from slavery. Learning about slavery helps me better understand how Haiti got here, but now I need to prepare myself mentally because we are about to enter Cite Soleil, the most dangerous slum on earth. And this whole area here as we're passing is controlling by gangs. Hey, what's up, Hey! So what happens if the gang finds out that I'm here? Nothing would happen. You with me? <laughs> that's very empty, these roads, man. It's, that's why, because who will go down there? The only cars and motorbike you see going down there, they've come to the Soleil area. Should we go back? Yeah. I'm just not going to say anything, bro. You, you yeah, went down right down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did African people get to Haiti? Interesting question. I wonder how. Much to, much to consider there. In this very moment, I spot eight gangsters with masks on and massive automatic weapons strapped around their chest. Are these normal people or gang members? These people. A lot of them. Yeah, it rhymes with bravery. It rhymes with chatter bravery.
We picked up a bodyguard in case Sean is unable to protect me inside the slum. Are you sure we're good? Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, man. Hey, bro. What's your name? Name? No camera. Uh, no camera. That was the only checkpoint, right? It was best. Oh, there was a lot. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle this. Okay. Are you sure we're gonna be okay, man? Yeah, yeah, we good, we good. Don't worry. I'm just gonna stay calm, but like those guns are huge, bro. <laughs> Where's our destination? We hit. Oh. Are we, we're gonna walk around? Yep. Okay. I literally see only big guns and like crazy dudes, like bandits, like rebels. Not like normal looking dudes. Don't feel me yet. Okay, I have to keep it in my pocket. Hiding my camera, I shake hands with the chief who is a gangster himself that rules the community. I slap a hundred bucks in his hand and he appoints six more bodyguards to protect us as we walk around the chaotic streets. Okay, the he's good now. He's mobbed up. This fence is a hospital. That's white boy swag right there. Or it was a hospital. We're gonna go check it out. It seems like the hospital is not even in function. You got function, no? There's no, nobody here. See what happened. Um, the nurses and the doctors does not leave inside of City Soleil. So they come early in the morning. They receive a certain amount of patients. And then after that, they left around noon, one so o'clock. So it does work in Because the of the insecurity, they, uh, they're not able to stay here. So what if somebody gets shot right now? That I spent a day in Haiti's most dangerous slum is the name of the video. It's also linked. Uh, it is by Drew Binsky, who I am a fan of. And I highly recommend you check out his other videos as well. He's great. You have to go somewhere else. Or die. Or oh, die. Empty in here. Nothing in this hospital. So sad. As we are leaving the hospital, our guard tells us to stop talking and stop filming because the chief is walking by. I nearly crap my pants. Put the camera down. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And that's your question. What, what would happen if we didn't call the chief and we just showed up randomly? I like calling them because I need to let them know that yes. we're coming just sure. in case uh, anything would happen. But I'm quite welcome to this area. Gotcha. Because of uh, the type They know of, uh, you. Yeah, yeah, they know me. Who are the dudes following us? Oh, no. All of those are uh, part of the oh, our crew. Yeah. Okay. How often do you think they actually use their guns? These guys. Often, often, quite often. Like they to, always oh, uh, they, to shoot to shoot people. Uh, they shoot each other. They will even shoot um, any person in the area that does not bow to their orders. We are bowing to their orders, right? Yeah. You'll get a shot in your leg. Jesus. I see that happen before. <laughs> so I don't want to make them upset with me. Either. Of course. So this is also. Uh, one of the places on the planet, like in Mexico, cartels run areas, but if you're a white person uh, in an area that is like run by the cartel, depending on where you go, you're still, if you're an American citizen, you're still like relatively safe or they will avoid you. Whereas this is one area where I feel like maybe it's not being a white person is now a burden and, and you will not be left alone, but instead will be used. Yeah. Happened to you? No, I was... Uh, <laughs> No, I, I dealt with the Mexican Customs and Border Patrol. That's a little different. Of course. So, they, we're literally walking on trash. Yes, and uh, you see all of those, this is how the people are living. There's no running water, no AC, no, no. proper toilets, no electricity, no electricity. And there's like 400,000 people living in it. Now it's uh, probably less because of the rival gang fight. Many of them have been dislocated to different areas. So these are just the local people here now, like the yeah. people living here. Yeah. And there are some people who can't afford to leave the area, so they don't leave. They can't cross. Like really? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, shit. Yep, me too. Now my shoes are completely soaked in mud. This area that we're in is controlled by one gang, right? Actually, City of is controlling by two different gangs. This part is controlled by Ishipep. Yeah. And the other side is controlling by another gang member called... Clip Chimp Alert, I'm now going to say that you're comparing the Mexican government authority to a gang. It's really funny that you say that because according to Mexicans, they are a gang. <laughs> the Mexican government authority is a gang. In some areas, not as uh, not as powerful as the cartels, and in other areas, just as ruthless. So, 
G9. So do, do they kill each other, the two gangs? Uh, just recently, there were six of them got killed. And they were not killed by the police. They were killed by uh, the same members. Every slum I've been in around the world, they still have a little shop where you can buy food and water. Yeah, but here I haven't seen any of that. There is no shops, there is not even a small restaurant where you can call where they can eat. Nothing. There is pretty much nothing. Thank God we found water. I've been looking for the last like two hours. And bags of water. No place to find water, but we got bags of water. Thank you. Uh, can I drink this? Yeah, you can. It's pure, yeah? It's pure fight. I don't know if this will make me sick or not, but I, I'm so f***ing thirsty. Oh, so good. I'm keeping my camera down everywhere because you don't know who you can meet or who you could piss off with your camera here. How's your bag water? Bag of water. That doesn't taste too good, but that's okay. It actually doesn't taste good. It definitely has a taste and water shouldn't have a taste. Try Look at him. <laughs> He's opening milk with a gun. <laughs> oh, it's a hammer too. That's funny. What is he doing? Making a drink? Yeah. Mix it up with a four energy drink. That's condensed milk, I think. That's cool, man. The energy drink. Get strong. Energy meat, isn't it? What happens when you mix guns and energy drinks? Haiti. So there is one shop this lady's selling. What is this stuff? Now they have hot dogs. Oh, your dogs are here. They don't look very clean, bro. No. This is sweet potato. <laughs> he said they don't look very clean, bro. That's hot dog water right there. And this is um, great food. Would you eat that? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you just took a hot dog. <laughs> Dude, homie just took a hot dog. <laughs> I don't know. I, I gotta try it. Some, some, try it, try it. <laughs> good or bad? Pretty good? Sound nasty. It's nasty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess all the gangsters are eating now. We got them some food. Once, once, once you start eating, they all start eating. <laughs> yeah. How much was all that? Uh, that was for 250 good. That's approximately $3. For all that. We bring food to the game. Bro has Takashi 69 pants. I'm losing it. Oh my God. Another fucking, another glaring example of America's cultural imperialism. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. This is a house here, but it's completely empty. I mean, you can see it was a house. Now it's just on the ground. I think that's actually literally that bag. And also, you can see a lot of bullet holes in it. <laughs> yeah. People have everything. Huh? Bullets, guns, handcuffs, drugs. This guy's working with a bag of bullets. That bag that you see in his backpack is full with bullets. And a bulletproof. You see, why are you wearing a bullet to vest? You're always fighting. What is the bullets? We need them. We actually need more. This is a street life, man. And the ironic thing is we're right by the airport. It's much safer in the city or no, it's still f***ed up. Uh, like this is way more dangerous than here. This is way more dangerous. Okay, that's what I thought. It's okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, God. <laughs> that's a no. mud shoe. <laughs> A lot of it's just abandoned, like abandoned churches. Oh, yeah, that's a little park which they have. That's why they usually chill, but this is what happens. That's a park? Oh, like a, where they actually sometimes they would do their little program. They have their little band would play. It would be happy to hear. Now it's nothing. It's not fluted. The trash is a huge problem here and if nobody cleans it up, it's gonna get worse. It is, it's getting worse every time and every year. It's getting worse and worse. So the goat has this thing around his body because they don't want him to go in anyone's house. So that way he can't fit in the house. We are on a mission right now to go meet some people, try to document the local life happening here in Cite du Soleil. Every single house here is completely in pieces like this. Poverty is not even the word to describe this place. I mean, look at this little house that I'm in right now. Hold on to this. Don't do it too hard, it's gonna break. Oh, hello. Someone's in there. Someone's like just laughing at us as we try to walk through here. Man, so we're not it's quite crazy cold. walking here. Oh my god. That's our rice with nothing in it. Just rice? Just rice. It seems there is no oil. And the feed is feeding that to the baby. At least it's something. It's something, yeah. But this is how they live in. Can I take a peek? Yeah. Hmm? This is one of the houses here. It's got a few beds and some cups. Holes in the roof so when it rains, all the houses get destroyed. What is this? And here, Daddy. They make liquid here to wash, washing clothes. She made them. It will sell. 
It's pretty sweet. Does she sell it? Because that's how she make money. Bro, you're so sweaty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your arms, bro. It's like water. Can you tell me what it's like to live in Cite Soleil? I live in Cite Soleil. It's not too bad at all. That she was born, that's where she raised. Are you scared of all the like gang activity and guns around here? Hmm? He says she's not afraid. Bro. Wow. He says she's used to it. Can I can I see inside of his bag? Would you show me? Show me under his bag. Let me see. Those are all bullets. Damn. <laughs> wow. Where do you get these from? Oh, you can't ask that question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> question. Don't translate. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Munition. Ammunition. That's the bullet revenge. Oh, yeah. my friend. Uh, what was that? No, he covered part of He said um, he won't be able to peace end, but it would hurt him yeah. if he get shot. First, yeah. Please don't point that at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said those would not hurt him. Smith, Smith and Wesson. Yeah. Springfield, Massachusetts, from the USA. Yes. Yeah, there you go. You got your answer of where they get the guns from. They are American guns. How long have you been living here? Uh, it's been four years since he took over this area here. What gang are you a part of? Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel. And so, how do you become a member of the gang? So he started fighting with his bare hands, and then after that they give him that gun. And then he's managed to do even more with that small gun which he have in his hands, and now he have an AK-47. How do you feel that you walk around the streets armed with guns? He said um, he feels comfortable, he feels great because they don't bother anyone and uh, all they're doing is controlling their yeah. own neighborhood and their own area, make sure that it's safe. They are not involved in kidnapping and they're not stealing people's um, belongings. So um, Security. So he feels that he feels good. I appreciate you keeping me safe because I'm coming in here as a tourist and I feel comfortable with you. That's why we're here. Thanks, man. Do you hope someday that you won't have to carry a gun, that it will be safe someday? Yeah, even today, we can start even today and take the guns. If we have to, take, if we have to uh, put the guns down, we will. How do you feel about the police, like if they come here? Yeah, they already know that uh, the police are a legal uh, entity and they have to respect them. And uh, they're going to come, they're going to put themselves aside and allow them to do their work. There's no battle with you and the police. No, 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 never. Hey, thanks for keeping me safe. Seriously. It's sad to see this is the logical end to conservative politics for the U.S. and chuds are too dumb to see it. Yeah, you'll never be able to convince them because they're black. Conservatives think white people won't, you know, resort to this, uh, this, this level of like system, systematic collapse because of the white supremacist values that they believe in. Not realizing that the only reason why this level of systematic collapse exists is because of white people, like directly. Question number one, how did the black people get there? Question number two, what happened after those very same black people that were brought there revolted against their slavers, their masters? And why they were kept that way. Uh, Haiti pays reparations to France. Some to remember. You too. I knew coming here would be intense, but I never expected it to be like these are real gangsters, real bandits. With you guys did not mishear me. I did not misspeak. Haiti pays reparations to France. The independence debt. The French government finally acknowledged a payment of 90 million francs in 1888 and over a period of about 70 years, Haiti paid 112 million francs to France, about $560 million in 2022. Something to consider. Guns. There's way more of them than us. It's just me and Sean. Like, if anything went south quickly, you know, we, we would probably be shot. It's a really scary feeling. To say that I'm shaking is not even one one hundredth of how I feel right now. That's why I'm behind the wall. Everyone is armed. Everyone. Multiple guns in their pockets. This is so intense. What's the worst possible thing that could happen right now? Like, we just hear a bunch of gunfire. Now, the worst thing that could happen is if another group attacked them. Yeah. That we will probably get uh, in between crossfire. Where do we go? Just in a building? Uh, but we will be fine. If that happens, what, what would we do? Just go in someone's house? Uh, we'll go into someone's house and um, uh, stay there until everything calms down. <laughs>
There is only one way in here and one way out. That one street. Whoa. Man, it gives me the goosebumps <laughs> when I think about it, man. That's, oh. Just walking around, you just hear banging sounds. Everybody's working, they're doing something. Oh, yeah. They're banging yeah, away. You can see some positivity. Yeah. Like, uh, they don't stay idle. Yeah, they're staying busy. But how much money do you think they make per day in dollars? It's reparations for the losses of the slavers. France also compensated slave owners for their losses when they banned slavery. Yes, America also famously paid reparations. Not the 40 acres and a mule that was promised to the recently freed uh, black men and women, but instead to the slavers as a form of compensation for the loss of their capital. Another not-so-fun fact. The UK has done similar things as well. Every single colonial country has that participated in the slave trade has done that, not to the slaves themselves that were now freed, but instead to the slave owners. Probably 10 to $15 per day. Yeah. Most people living here, they don't leave the community. They don't go through that checkpoint. Uh, let's say mostly those that are involved in the gang activity. If they leave, they might get killed. They might get killed by the enemy or even by the police or even arrested. And that happens all the time? That happens, yes, very often. I mean, let's say a lot of people cannot go about their businesses because of rival gang fight. As you can see, we go around. Everyone is uh, um, like Everyone has guns here. Has Multiple gun. guns. Yes. The only people I don't see have with the guns is the old women. What needs to happen for all this mess to be safe? They should start arresting those people that are arming them. Who's going to arrest them? The police? I don't think the police are going to do it because they are already bribed by those oligarchs and the politicians that are arming those young people in the, in the ghetto. All these guns make it easy to believe how the government is in shambles here. On July 7th, 2021, the world stood still as the president of Haiti was assassinated. Foreign militants stormed his home in the upscale part of Port-au-Prince, riddling his office with bullets and shooting him 12 times. Led by an American DEA agent. Former DEA informant pleads guilty in 2021 assassination of Haiti's president. Joseph Winston pleaded guilty Tuesday to conspiring to assassinate Haitian president Jovenel Moise and faces a maximum sentence of life in, in prison, whose killing in 2021 caused unprecedented turmoil in the Caribbean nation. Joseph Winston, a dual Haitian American citizen who lived in the U.S. and attended meetings in South Florida and Haiti ahead of the assassination, is the fourth of 11 defendants in Miami to plead guilty. He faces a maximum sentence of life in prison on charges including conspiracy to kill and kidnap a person outside the U.S. and conspiracy to provide material support and resources. He was not an agent. He was a, sorry, he was an informant. According to authorities, about 20 Colombian citizens and several dual Haitian American citizens participated in the plot. The conspirators initially planned to kidnap the Haitian president, but later opted to kill him. Investigators alleged the plotters had hoped to win contracts under Moise's successor. Vincent, wearing a prisoner's beige shirt and pants, pleaded guilty at a hearing before the federal judge, Jose E. Martinez, that lasted 20 minutes. I think, I mean, given the way that, like, the American State Department works, the CIA works, it's just, like, an asset that you're burning at that situation, most likely. Now, the question is, it's not like the previous president was a good dude in any way, shape, or form, and he wasn't. That's why I said, like, every party involved in this, after an entire two centuries of getting fucked over by colonial powers over and over again, almost every single circum every single uh, entity involved is just simply self-interested and is working, uh, is, is, is not working at the behest of some like revolutionary principle. There's no, there's not really a, a, a good guy in the situation. Time's all over. It was not only shot him. I mean, they treat him like um, he was some type of a criminal, the way he was killed. His skulls were broken. Arm was believed to be broken. The way that they assassinated this man, it was worse than a criminal. Meanwhile, a manhunt ensued. Crowds of Haitians gathered at the U.S. Embassy as Joe Biden deployed the Marine Corps. Suspiciously, none of the president's bodyguards were killed during the ambush. So who's the new president? We don't have a president. You don't have a president? Two years from now, we don't even have a president. There's no president of Haiti. How could we have a president with all those gangs around? This might be the only UN country without a president or a head of state. Has to be. Yeah. How are you? You're entering a house here. Oh, that's how we eat. Hello. This is a vegetable called lalo in Haiti. Uh -huh. It's very well known and uh, they consume it a lot. It's like spinach? Uh, sort of. So, they did. They sent in the Marine Corps to protect the embassy. They also pulled out a lot of the uh, 
uh, a lot of the assets from the embassy and only kept it at like uh, whoever needs to be there, I guess, including just the Marines. What's it like to live in this community? So we're not living a good life here because it's hard to eat. We don't have access to money. I ask her how long she's been living in City of She says 10 years. 10 years. How come you don't want to leave and go somewhere else? She won't want to leave, uh, leave here because this is the only place you have to leave. How often do you hear gunshots here? Yeah, very often. He said I'm used to it now. Yes, but, uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> is the kitchen? That's the kitchen. Not much food in here. Uh, there is no much, there is no food at all, as I can see. It's a kitchen, as I'm watching as well. The tent sheet, there's a lot of holes in it. And also there is a major hole in here. So I'm just thinking when it's raining and the condition that those people must be living. This might be struggling. Because, it, it rains here a lot, right? It rains a lot. And just something to consider that they have no fucking modern tools. They have no adequate housing. The only thing that you see in the video that is modern and, and uh, you know, that is up to snuff is the weapons. Just something to think about. They have the latest American guns and basically nothing else. Just imagine those holes yeah. that you can see. Yeah, it's, uh, I just asked her when it rains, how, this, how it happened. It says it's all fluted. It's sad that this is the kitchen, but there's nothing in it. And these living conditions are really rough, man. Oh, yes. I can imagine how they are able to live in a condition like this. Thank what did you give her, a few dollars? I gave her uh, um, 1,500 goods, which is approximately 10 US. That's good, man. That's pretty good. Oh! Mama. Oh no, what happened? Look at that. Oh no. She's fluid. <laughs> oh, that's deep. What happened? What did she say? She said that's what happened. It's a water that's coming from the top of the mountain, like Petronville and Delma area. The rain? It, when it rains. Even though it doesn't rain down here, but once the water comes down, so the house will be fluid. So that's what happened. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh man. Her whole house is flooded, man. Like at least a foot deep. I, I, I want to help this lady. I feel so bad. Why doesn't she want to leave to another house? She would love to uh, rent another house, but she doesn't have the need. Oh, it's really yeah. sad, man. It's deep. Look how deep it is. Her feet. Yeah, it is. Behind me, this man is slaughtering a pig for this whole community, and they're all watching him. When was the pig dead? Ah, it was a moment ago. <laughs> Everyone's surrounding around here as they're about to cut open the pig. We're watching him slaughter the pig in front of us. Everyone's reacting here. I would love to help, but doesn't. Bro, what is he supposed to do? The fuck? <laughs> like, what do you want him to do? Fucking sneak her out of the country in his luggage or something? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me bust out my fucking visa here. Do they take visa? What is it? What is that? Oh! <laughs> Couple of kids are hanging out. Saba? Saba? Let me sit your American handshake. American handshake, like this? Yeah. You got it? Again. Yeah! Sean is telling me that they are gonna close the border soon and we won't be able to leave the slum. We rush back to the checkpoint with no time to even think about what is happening. Are we sure we're gonna get through the checkpoint okay? We are going to. The, I was just informed they close every six o'clock. Oh, this dude in the green hat is the one that escorted us earlier. Oh, he's coming on the outside. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, bro. Yeah. Oh, my God, we roll. Coming up to the checkpoint. This checkpoint is super. This is the most intense checkpoint in the world, I think. That was it? We got through? Yeah, yeah. Damn. They all want money, huh? Oh, oh I'm telling you. Oh, and now we're on the empty road again. Woo! Damn, dude. We got out. We got out. That's crazy. I just got to my hotel room, and I just want to say that I am completely exhausted mentally messed up in the head by what most I just intense checkpoint boy hasn't been to iraq yes he has actually 
he has been to Iraq. I'm pretty sure he's been to, he's been everywhere. The, the, this is one dude. When he says it's the most intense checkpoint, I, he means it. Like he literally has, you know, it's one of those situations where like, you know, in one of those situations, you're like, oh, really? Like as if you, when he makes a comparison to like, oh, this seems a lot like uh, Kenya or this seems a lot like uh, the Congo. Most people would look at this guy and go, oh, what a fucking racist piece of shit. No, he literally means it because he's been there. Like, yes. When, uh, when I think like, uh, when I think he's, uh, talking about, uh, when he, when he's talking about like the instability in Haiti and comparing it to nothing else, basically saying that this is unlike anything I've ever experienced. I think he's personally talking about how, how literally this is unlike anything he's ever experienced. Experience. This is by far, by far the most dangerous place in the world. I thought Mogadishu, Somalia, or Kabul, Afghanistan had the crown, but Port Au Prince Haiti is, is messed up. And of course, I'm grateful for the life that I live. And if you're watching this video, be grateful for the life that you live because it is not easy for everyone around the world. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I need to go to bed. I'm just, I'm completely messed up in the head right now. So, yeah, nothing else to say. Good night, guys. See you in the next video. Wait, what? What do you mean? There's a you. Uh, there's a guy who said like this dude's gonna end up getting kidnapped somewhere during his poverty tourism all for YouTube clicks, bro. I think there's a difference between someone who's like going to different places that are like poverty struck, and and doing a decent job of like showing the humanity of the people that live there and the and the experiences that they that they go through versus like someone who very clearly is doing poverty tourism. Like, come on, dude. This was like recognized. Like he he literally framed it personally. Uh he works with fixers. He framed it personally about the impact of like the slave uh revolt, the the slave revolution. Like he is this is as close to journalism as you can get from an independent source on YouTube. Yeah, it's like looking at twenty hours and twenty days in Mariupol and being like, Wow, that's real war some such war porn, you know? The difference is he's not fucking pogging to completion over the destitute conditions he's currently in. Yeah. Like, remember the fucking uh, Mexican YouTuber that went to the uh, El Salvador prison? What is this? Another reason why Haiti's really, really Hades. unfortunate? Hades. Murderous yeah. voodoo president, Papa Doc Duvalier. Francois Papa Doc Duvalier was one of the worst dictators both his country and the world have ever Bro, I can't do this with the fucking, like, colorful graphics that Did kills you know that my soul when I watch shit like that. I'd rather watch, like, a like a real video. Problem is, the real videos also have fucking TOS in them, so I don't know. Two out of every three guys are going to experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. You probably do now, because it's true. For me, it was much earlier. I was 25. Sad sad days i wish keeps a bit around when i was younger because advancements in science meant that there are now treatment so funny i don't like this guy either but he will probably do a better job brutal history in a kid's video format ddf has a good video on the haitian revolution let me see you might like the 2000s documentary life and dead it's about jamaica we talking about papa doc <clears throat> stolen valor teamster jacket yeah how haiti got so good at smoking french Soldiers from GDF. The following is an excerpt from the fourth volume of The History, Civil, and Commercial of the British Colonies in the West Indies. Though its author, Brian Edwards, is speaking of the French colony of Saint Domingue. The rebellion first broke out on a plantation called Noe, nine miles only from the city. Twelve or fourteen of the ringleaders, about the middle of the night, proceeded to the refinery or sugar house and seized on a young man, the refiner's apprentice. No, this video is not AI, man. It's GDF, GDF official. I literally fucking promote him all the time. How do people not know this? Dragged him to the front of the dwelling house, and there hewed him into pieces with their cutlasses. His screams brought out the overseer, whom they instantly shot. The rebels now found their way to the apartment of the refiner and massacred him in his bed. These rebels, as quick. Edwards describes them, made their way from there to the house of a Mr. Clement, where both he and his refiner were massacred. Then on to the plantation of a Mr. Flaville, just a few miles away, where they likewise rose and murdered five white persons. The approach of daylight served only to discover sights of horror. It was now apparent that the slaves on all the estates in the plain acted in concert, and a general massacre of the whites took place in every quarter. 
After some time, though, according to Edward's account, the ruffians exchanged the sword for the torch. The buildings and cane fields were everywhere set on fire, and the conflagrations, which were visible from the town in a thousand different quarters, furnished a prospect more shocking and reflections more dismal than fancy can paint or the powers of man describe. The night of August 22nd of the year 1791 was one of incredible violence. It was the night that a revolt of slaves of the French colony of Saint-Domingue began in earnest and quickly gained great ferocity. The principal difference with this particular slave revolt was that it can boast being the only successful one in history. It ultimately created the first nation to banish slavery and further the first black nation, the nation of what is now called Haiti. Like any responsible student of history, it is critical in understanding the actions of August of 1791 to examine the context that preceded it. It would hardly be fair to begin the story merely with what occurred in August of 1791, now wouldn't it? Indeed, the events which preceded August of 1791 provide important insight into the motivations of the rebels, a fact that is obvious to all of us now, given the hundreds of years, the degrees of separation that allow for clarity, and not judgments based on emotion and political biases. No. Hmm, I wonder why he's uh, drawing a parallel here. Hmm. Given what preceded August of 1791, it is self-evident that the slaves of Saint-Domingue had very real grievances, and that their cause was not only just, but moral. The story, in the way that I'd like to tell it, begins in 1493. This was the year of Christopher Columbus's there second were live saying a Nazi channel? No, definitely not. Voyage to the Americas, in which he revisited the island that would be called Hispaniola. Before long, the indigenous Taino people would be virtually wiped out, according to genocide scholar David Stannard. Just 21 years after Columbus's first landing in the Caribbean, the vastly populated island that the explorer had renamed Hispaniola was effectively desolate a consequence of not only disease, according to Standard, but also murderous exhibitions by Spanish troops beginning in March of 1495. Besides disease and slaughter, another crucial import was introduced by Columbus, one that would cement the legacy of Hispaniola for generations to come, sugar. It was this maneuver which helped make Saint-Domingue, modern-day Haiti, a nation comprising the western third of the island of Hispaniola, into the single main destination of the Atlantic slave trade by the late 1780s. Saint-Domingue was what the French would name their colony, which they settled in the early 17th century, taking their name from the island's capital, Santo Domingo. Saint-Domingue's wealth was staggering. No bigger than the U.S. state of Vermont, it was a powerhouse of the Atlantic economy. Did you know that the, so many people were killed as a result of the colonization of the Americas that global temperatures actually fell? I did not know that. Holy fuck. Really? Damn whose exports exceeded those of the United States and were worth more than those of Brazil and Mexico combined. The island produced more sugar and more coffee than anywhere else in the world, and with this immense amount of trade, the tax revenue from this small piece of land alone funded the entire French Navy. Saint-Domingue was a fast-living colony, where white Frenchmen sought to get rich quick working up the slave economy's hierarchy of overseers, plantation attorneys, and ultimately owners, who could comfortably live in absentia in France while their administrators handled the day-to-day. -day. Indeed, Saint-Domingue was home to about 30,000 white colonists, and, as men outnumbered women three to one among white colonists, interracial unions ranging from the ephemeral and sordid to the occasional marriage gave rise to a large population of mixed racial descent. Their descendants were free, and along with their ex-slave counterparts, free people of color made up another tranche of about 30,000 of the population, roughly equivalent oh, to the white too, colonists. Yeah. As for slaves, their population was enormous. When he says free people of color, he means the Polish. I'm just kidding. Okay, sorry. Slave traders shipped more than 200,000 Africans to Saint-Domingue in the 1780s alone. On the eve of the revolution, there were about as many slaves in Saint-Domingue than in the entire American South, nearly half a million in all, making up 90% of the population. Control was maintained, as was the entire system of slavery, through violence. Punishments Stop were cruel. Stop, slash Poland's gonna get mad again? Why? This is like an objective W for the Polish history. If they get mad at this, they're just, oh fuck, they are, they are very stupid over there at r slash Poland. Shit. 
they won't understand that I'm saying like like they played a, a role in the uh, on the right side of history here. Cool and went unpunished. Slaves, after all, were property by law. Exhibitionist whippings were as much intended to terrorize other slaves as they were to torture their victims. French historian Pierre de Vassier gave gut-wrenching detail of slave reprisals in his history of Saint-Domingue. Pepper, salt, lemon, ashes, quicklime would be poured into open whip wounds. Or perhaps gunpowder would be placed inside their rectum, which was lit with a wick. There are, I assure you, many other atrocities to speak of, far, far worse than what I've just described. Even absent these indignities, slaves had been ferried from their homeland under the deck of a slave ship in the most horrid conditions imaginable. This was their introduction to life in Saint-Domingue. Upon arrival, they were branded as though they were livestock, and each time they were sold thereafter, they were branded again and again. They worked sun up to sundown six days a week, or if they were on the sugar plantations, into the night as well. I think this is important to understand so that the the rest of the video, which is going to talk about the <laughs> the slaughter, uh, uh, because it 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 basically gives you the moral basis of what the what what the uh, the the brutality looked like and why the brutality looked the way that it did. It's just offering you context and a moral justification for Digging it. Digging canals, tilling, planting, harvesting. A Swiss traveler named Gilles Chantin spent a year in northern Saint Domingue in the early 1780s. He provides valuable insight into slave life free from French colonial bias. On a large, well-managed sugar plantation, the work never stops. Either the ripened canes need to be cut or a field needs replanting after being harvested. Tired by the heat and the weight of their pickaxes and by a heavy soil baked hard enough to break their tools. For those of you who don't know, this is a ginormous, this played a ginormous role in the collectivization efforts of the Western world. This plays a fundamental role in why the Western world became so bountiful, okay? It continues under different names to this day, but like this established the, the basis for it, okay? They made great efforts to overcome every obstacle. A gloomy silence reigned among them. Pain was visible on every face, but the hour of rest never came. The manager watched the working without pity, and several slave drivers armed with long whips mixed in- You're not gonna try and say this is something we can compare to a current event happening? Hmm, wait, what? I already did- Among the workers dealt out harsh blows. Men and women, young and old, without distinction. This European gentleman himself couldn't help but express his disgust at the condition of the slaves. Can you remember Vosh's Haitian Revolution was white genocide era? No, because I only see his high notes and none of his low notes because I only know things that he says about like dropping tactical N-words, for example, or Tacoma wept, or um, excuse me for my shared presumed knowledge of goblin porn. Those are the, those are the fun stuff and not like the really, really bad shit. Could a European fresh from the charming countryside of Switzerland gaze on that of Saint-Domingue without getting angry? At the debasement of the men used here, their suffering and extreme poverty? At the enormous chains they have to drag around if they commit a small fault, as if their daily work is not already exhausting enough? The powers in Paris had in fact done nothing to improve the lot of the slaves, and were not about to, but that would change once the slaves took action on their own. On the evening of August 14th of the year 1791, Great numbers of slaves, many acting as delegates for their plantations, convened a meeting in the woods of bois Caillemont. The ceremony was led by a slave named Bookman. Duddy Bookman, as he was called, would emerge as the first leader of the rebellion. Their spiritual leader, Bookman, was a voodoo priest. Voodoo's contribution to the revolution remains controversial, but it assuredly included grassroots organization, a sense of solidarity, and of invulnerability in combat and leadership at different levels. At the ceremony, Bookman was quoted as saying, among other things, the following, throw away the image of the God of the whites who thirst for our tears and listen to the voice of liberty that speaks in the hearts of all of us. Thereafter, the participants of the meeting swore an oath of secrecy and revenge. The pact would be sealed by the sacrificial slaughter of a pig whose blood was drank by the attendees. The plan that they had made required careful coordination among large numbers of slaves who were to rise up and start the burning and killing in unison. 
The date set for the event was, as best we can tell, the night of Wednesday, August 24th. Perhaps unable to contain themselves, the events which unfolded at the Noe Plantation occurred two days early. Plundering masters' homes, destroying the infrastructure of the plantations on which they were enslaved, and killing those who had enslaved them, were powerful ways to pursue liberty. Indeed, they were the only ways available to most of the slaves. We can only imagine the exuberance and exhilaration the rebels must have felt as they took vengeance, turned the tables on their masters, and saw, perhaps for the first time, the extent of their power. So one thing to always remember is that the colonizing entity, right, the oppressive entity, whether it's shadow slavery or, let's say, a, a settler colonial uh, a, a settler, colonial, ethno-nationalist, apartheid state, right? Just throwing that out there. They set the standard for violence, right? It is their violent means that inevitably require equally proportionate, as to the best of their ability, violent resistance. So that's something to always remember, okay? That's it. And you can maybe even track that throughout the history of, uh, I don't know, let's say Palestinian resistance, okay? I don't know why I came up with that just now. I don't know why it's in my mind for some reason, but like Palestinian resistance throughout history has taken many different forms, okay? It is just simply that uh, it's, it's final most, uh, uh, most well-covered and well-documented inception of it was brutal. Okay, there were atrocities. It is because the standard of violence has reached that level of atrocity in the daily existence of those who are colonized, those who are oppressed, those who are victims of the violent ethno-nationalist rule. If you understand, it is a, it is usually yes, it is usually an act of desperation because ultimately no one wants to fucking be violent. Like, think about your lifestyle. Think about the way you exist in the world. Right now, you have a very comfortable life, right? If you're on Twitch, you most likely have a very comfortable life in comparison to what we are talking about here. Like, obviously, a, a, uh, a enslaved person in Haiti, definitely in comparison to that, you have a very comfortable life. So violence is completely removed from the equation for you in the way that you resist to oppressive constructs. That's why you do, like, civil disobedience every now and then, you know, you shut off uh, a, a speaking engagement. You, you protest the Oscars, things of that nature. Now, if the standard of violence in your everyday existence was up to, I don't know, let's say Gaza, right? Where your housing is being pummeled into oblivion by American rockets, by American missiles on a daily fucking basis. Your, half of your family is dead. You watched, uh, you know, the sinewy, uh, their, their sinewy bodies fucking hanging from the ledge of a building that recently turned into a fucking crater, you're going to probably want to resort to a violent means of resistance against those who are responsible for that. Perfectly understandable. Of course, it was only a matter of time before a counteroffensive was launched, a fact undoubtedly known to all of the rebels. They proved themselves to be a worthy and terrifying adversary. Let us turn our attention back to Brian Edwards' testimony, where he details the utter carnage of the revolt period, what he calls an exterminating war. It seems like religious lies make people violent too. Yeah, totally. It's the voodoo that caused the Haitian revolution to be so violent and not the fact that they were fucking enslaved and had gunpowder shoved into their asses and lit on fire by whips. You know, who's to say which one played a bigger role here? No, man, this is why the whole r slash atheism conversation is so fucking stupid okay religion is just a galvanizing principle it's just a factor in the equation it can be used for liberation in the abolition of slavery in the united states of america as a matter of fact liberation theology played a role liberation theology also played a role in the civil rights movement okay religion on the other hand christianity specifically also played a formative role in the defense of white supremacist chattel slavery this factor alone, this fact alone should cause you to, I don't know, second guess or maybe reconsider, uh, you know, the, the importance of religion in this uh, 
beyond just simply being a, a principal motivator. It's people getting, uh, it gets people together. It, it is a, uh, it's something you can use. Within two months after the revolt began, upwards of 2,000 white persons of all conditions and ages had been massacred. 180 sugar plantations and about 900 coffee, cotton, and indigo settlements had been destroyed, the buildings therein being consumed by fire. Of the insurgents, it was reckoned that upwards of 10,000 had perished by the sword or by famine, and some hundreds by the hands of the executioner, many of them, I am sorry to say, under the torture of the wheel, a system of revenge and retaliation which no enormities of savage life could justify or excuse. Edwards was referring to the practice known as breaking at the wheel, where an unlucky victim is tied to a scaffold, perhaps a wagon wheel, and beaten to death, typically as painfully as possible by targeting limbs and joints. Edwards' opinion that there was no excuse for such a brutal practice was informed by him witnessing two men being executed in this way. Two of these unhappy men suffered in this manner under the window of the author's lodgings and in his presence at Cap Francois on Thursday, the 18th of September, 1791. They were broken on two pieces of timber placed crosswise. One of them expired on receiving the third stroke on his stomach, each of his legs and arms having been first broken in two places. The first three blows he bore without a groan. The other had a harder fate. When the executioner, after breaking his legs and arms, lifted up the instrument to give the finishing stroke on the breast, and which, by putting the criminal out of his pain, is called le coup de crasse. The mob, with the ferociousness of cannibals, called out arrête and compelled him to leave his work unfinished. In that condition, the miserable wretch, with his broken limbs doubled up, was put on a cartwheel, which was placed horizontally, one end of the axle being driven into the earth. He seemed perfectly sensible, but uttered not a groan. At the end of forty minutes, some English seamen, who were spectators of the tragedy, strangled him in mercy. A Captain Bickford of Salem, Massachusetts, a witness to the early days of the Revolution, was quoted at the time in the Philadelphia General Advertiser. The country is filled with dead bodies, which lie unburied. The slaves have left the whites with stakes driven through them into the ground, and the white troops, who now take no prisoners, but kill everything black or yellow, leave the slaves dead upon the field. Though despite these brutal measures, the rebels held their own. Indeed, the French appear to have been experiencing an all-too-familiar problem that would plague all occupying and colonial powers throughout history, that of the enduring guerrilla. In the words of a Madame de Rouvray, we kill many of them, and they seem to reproduce themselves out of their ashes. They were armed with guns, knives, sticks, and all the sharp utensils of kitchen and of farm. Some were nude, some in tatters, and some grotesquely decked in the rich apparel taken from our wardrobes. They had, as artillery, fifteen cannon taken from our villages. Over time, the rebel slaves came to acquire more arms, until they became well armed with muskets and swords. They organized themselves into regular bodies. They made liberal use of hit-and-run, ambush attacks, and psychological warfare. This has been attributed to a crucial fact about the rebel slaves. On the eve of the revolution, of the half a million slaves in Saint-Domingue, two-thirds of them were not only black, they were born in Africa. These were enslaved prisoners of war, and by 1791, only a minority of French troops had ever actually seen combat before. The Africans, diverse in their backgrounds, speaking up to a dozen languages in a single plantation, were a lot alike in this regard. The French as well, up to that point, certainly were not trained in guerrilla warfare and were not privy to many of its central tenets. European armies were only just beginning to learn backwoods practices like firing from behind cover or in a prone position, and scattering instead of standing upright when being shot at. With ambushes, psychological warfare, and hit-and-run tactics, the insurgents compensated for their lack of firearms. They never fought out in the open or bunched together. A thousand blacks would never confront a hundred whites in open country, but they would advance making a terrible noise at first. Though after having got quite close to their enemy, but still out of range, they would fall completely silent. They distributed their troops by platoons in all the overgrown places, so that they seemed six times more numerous than they really were. The bravery of these Africans is unbelievable. One fascinating letter from a 16-year-old French girl to her American stepmother 
describes how her own father came under a rebel assault. The parallels are quite obvious. When you are used to fighting against dudes who do not have superior firepower to you, who don't have any, who don't have any weapons at all, you get used to not even looking for cover because you're killing mostly civilians. So when you actually encounter an enemy that fights back, you then quickly recognize, maybe I do have to stand behind cover. Papa left last Monday with 300 men of the National Guard. At 8 o'clock in the evening, Papa was attacked. Some of the guardsmen throwed themselves in the sea. Papa's guide, a black man, was pulling them out by the feet and crying, get a hold of yourselves. Some have horns, others have broken kettles, and they try to make as much noise as possible in order to confuse and frighten whites. Papa says that it was impossible to hear oneself. Finally, on the 29th of August of the year 1793, one year and one week after the slave rebellion, a landmark proclamation was issued by Commissioner Léger Felicité Santonax, the world's first abol- Or if they weren't fighting against, like, civilians, they weren't slaughtering civilians, they were fighting against other standing armies. And the, the, the conventional methods of warfare at the time required literally fucking basically doing the same shit that they were doing in, like, the Legionnaire era almost of just having a shit ton of people stand in a line and shoot against another shit ton of people. It's so funny when you learn about, like, the history of warfare, where the first guy that comes up with, like, flanking, for example, is, like, regarded as a massive, brilliant guy. All things that we obviously take for granted now, but it's literally, like, somewhere along the line, somebody invented flanking. You know what I mean? And the first guy that did it, everyone was like, oh, my God, how did this fucking happen? Abolition of slavery, and the only one in response to Hannibal did that was nuking the Romans is crazy. Slave rebellion, a landmark in the history of the Americas. In doing so, the French acquired an important ally, one who would radically alter the course of not only the history of Haiti but the history of the world. Yeah, I love that the art of wars like attack your enemies at night, and humans do not like fire, and it is seen as genius text. I mean, for the time, it was genius. I am Toussaint Louverture. My name is perhaps known to you. I have undertaken vengeance. I want liberty and equality to reign in Saint-Domingue. When he joined the resistance in 1791, Toussaint Louverture was already a free man. According to Louverture's son Isaac, who became an important source of information on his life, Toussaint was born in 1746, the grandson of an Arata prince. He was born Toussaint Preda after the slaveholding family that owned him. Fortunately for him, by 1776, Toussaint was emancipated. After leaving the Breda plantation, Toussaint adopted the name Louverture, meaning the opening. Its origins are disputed, though perhaps it denoted his newfound role as a freedom fighter. Toussaint's loyalties at the onset of the revolution were understandably not with the French forces. He would eventually join the Spanish, who had declared war on France in 1792. Hispaniola would soon become swarming with colonial armies, for as a result of the ongoing French Revolution, King Louis XVI was executed, and the Republicans declared war on England. France, Spain, and now England all wanted a peace. Though after the abolition of slavery in Saint-Domingue, or- Many of you should declare a war on the top of the hour ad break though, honestly, and destroy the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5 or for free two in a row, it's like kinda shitty. After Tucson had laid eyes directly on the proclamation, not wanting to leave anything to hearsay, Louverture would join France and become a formidable ally. It wouldn't be long until Spain sued for peace with France in 1795, and after waging a ruthless campaign against the remaining British, Toussaint Louverture had successfully expelled them by 1798. Having defeated all of his colonial rivals, Toussaint became governor general of Saint-Domingue. The enormous power that he wielded and his increasing autonomy from France's rule created some animosity with French leaders, especially one in particular who would wrest power through a coup d'etat in 1799. Under his rule, France would wage war against its wealthy sugar colony. In her memoirs, Josephine wrote about her husband Napoleon Bonaparte's decision to send his army to Saint-Domingue, something she called a fatal move that would forever take this beautiful colony away from France. Keep Toussaint Louverture there. That is the man that you require in order to govern the blacks. It's an ominous quote, given what transpired afterward. It's hardly controversial to suggest that, had Louverture been allowed to govern on behalf of the French, 
it would have ended far better for them. Indeed, Louverture was hardly a radical. He emancipated the slaves, but he militarized plantation work, making it a crime to leave the plantations in which they were enslaved. The only difference now, really, was that they were wage slaves. Despite his wife's pleas, Napoleon Bonaparte could not stomach Louverture's bold constitution, which he signed in July of 1801, which he then sent to Napoleon directly. In naming himself Governor General for Life, Napoleon said, Toussaint knew very well that he had thrown away his mask and had drawn his sword out of its sheath forever. Though it's important to note with regard to the Haitian Revolution that in many ways and at various stages, calling it a racial war is somewhat reductive. Alliances were plenty and complicated. After all, Toussaint Louverture fought for Spain and France, as did thousands of other black rebels. It was Napoleon Bonaparte, however, who insisted on invoking race as his motivation. Rid us of these gilded Negroes, Bonaparte wrote to his expedition leader Charles Leclerc in July 1802. Disarm the blacks. It was him who called the fighting force a crusade of civilized people of the West against the black barbarism. Not to be misinterpreted, he clarified, I am for the whites because I am white. I have no other reason, and that one is good. His expedition consisted of- <laughs> Isn't that funny that it's literally, like, bro, this shit has never changed. Like, it's, it's ridiculous that literally not a single aspect of this is changed at all. Like, same principles, same attitude, same fucking rhetoric, down to the civilizing of the barbarian. And I'm sure there were libtards at the time who were like, you know, maybe we should leave the black people alone. But we do have to civilize these barbarians a little bit, right? What about the white people? We have to defend the white people. What about the missionaries? Oh, they're just mad because we were taming them with our beautiful ways of existence in, in Christianity. It's like, that's what it, it really is about. They just don't like Christianity and the, and the civilizing aspect of it, seemingly. Wow. They just want to do racial supremacy in the other direction. It's really fucked up. When everyone can see, racial supremacy work in only one direction. Of some 50 ships, half of France's large naval vessels. Aboard them were 22,000 soldiers and 20,000 sailors. The total number sent to Saint-Domingue would balloon to upwards of 80,000 men. Toussaint Louverture, upon seeing the French Armada, rallied his own troops, perhaps as many as 30,000 by early 1802, aside from the local militias numbering in the thousands as well. After being fired on by black rebels in northern Saint-Domingue, near Le Cap, General Donatien marie joseph de Rochambeau captured the garrison. Rochambeau had lost 60 men and made sure to exact revenge to make an example of the black troops and proceeded to massacre hundreds of them. Rochambeau was only debuting the French strategy, yet another war of extermination. However, the French yet again found themselves ill-prepared for the war waged against them by the Africans. The enemy held nowhere and yet never ceased to be the masters of the country. The French had made devastating progress in a short period of time. After capturing Le Cap, they wrested the northern peninsula from Louverture's forces, though they would take to the mountains in the wilderness, burning and sabotaging as they withdrew. Tear up the roads, throw corpses and horses into all the fountains, burn and annihilate everything, so that those who have come to return us to slavery will always find in front of them the image of the hell they deserve. Though Louverture was a shrewd military planner, he was perhaps eclipsed in harshness by his mysterious underling, in the port town of Saint-Marc, Jean-Jacques Desalines led his troops by example, setting fire to his own recently completed mansion. Barrels of gunpowder and alcohol were placed throughout the town to aid a rapid flame. Desalines also took hundreds of French prisoners, and by the time the French arrived to Saint-Marc's smoldering ruins, they also found hundreds of their own scattered throughout. Desalines then embarked for Port-au-Prince, taking several hundred white prisoners. These included Michel de Corti, a physician kept along for his expertise, which the rebels doubtless thought that they could exploit. He would later write of the horror show that was life as a prisoner under Desalines. By the time Desalines had reached the mountains, he had very few white prisoners with him. Louverture questioned Desalines, what happened to all of your prisoners? Oh, said Desalines, they were killed in battle or escaped. But de Corti said otherwise. He said Desalines slaughtered them by the hundreds. This was corroborated by General Pamphile Lacroix, who said he had found 
hundred corpses in Verette while pursuing Desalines' retreating troops. This wasn't the only pile of bodies that he'd find. Seeking to spare his troops from the stench of one group of bodies piled up near their camp and lacking shovels to build a mass grave, he burned them. Instead of removing the odor, this move filled the air with an even more accurate smell, one he was never able to remove from his clothes. Jesus fucking as surprising as it may sound given the said gruesome details, mass killing was the least of the French army's worries. A more insidious problem plagued them, disease. The yellow fever appeared suddenly, causing sharp pains in the eye sockets, feet, loins, and stomach. A thick, whitish-yellow fluid covered the parched tongue, then the teeth, and soon changed into a black encrustation. The pulse became elevated, the regurgitations yellow from bile, the feces and urine red. He was already a corpse, putrid and horrible from the blood's decomposition. Deaths from disease apparently reached a massive 120 per day, owing to a miscalculation by Bonaparte. Thinking that the expedition would be a quick victory, he deployed them at the beginning of 1802. But the war grinded on. The looming summer months were steadily approaching, until the noxious epidemics ruptured from the earth. Still a prisoner of Desalines, de Corti recorded what are some of the only words of his that still survive to this day. The whites from France cannot hold out against us here in Saint-Domingue. They will fight well at first, but soon they will fall sick and die like flies. Toussaint Louverture's fortunes would change in a most unexpected way. One of his most trusted allies, Henri Christophe, commander of the Northern Plain, surrendered to Leclerc. It wouldn't be long until Louverture did the same. Finding his position severely compromised, it was a massive betrayal. Louverture signed an agreement at Le Cap, where he would surrender in return for keeping his military rank and returning to his plantation at Anari. Leclerc had pardoned Toussaint, and the latter had pledged his loyalty to France. Leclerc had given his word of honor. It was a lie. Upon visiting the home of General Jean-Baptiste Brunet, General Leclerc entered, accompanied by a large number of soldiers who surrounded me seized me, bound me as a criminal, and conducted me on board the frigate Creol. As he boarded the ship that would bring him to his exile, he exclaimed, In overthrowing me, you have cut down, in Saint-Domingue, only the trunk of the tree of the liberty of the blacks. It will grow from the roots, because they are deep and numerous. Louverture withered away and finally died a year later in a freezing dungeon in France on April 7, 1803. This would prove to be yet another miscalculation on the part of Napoleon, who had sealed the fate of the French. For Toussaint Louverture was merely replaced by his brutal partner, Jean-Jacques Desalines. I don't get it. Unbeknownst to Leclerc, up to that. Certainly there will be no Hamas too. These are solutions that require, these are problems that require military solutions. Surely the people do not have an unending yearning for freedom as it is the natural predisposition of man to want to be rid of all of the chains that bind them. No. Certainly. Notice how originally, <clears throat> notice how originally, uh, simply substituting from chattel slavery to wage slavery was like most likely a, a comfortable middle ground of progress for many. And yet one side chose to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Think about that. That point, since he believed Desalines would be a valuable asset, Leclerc even sent him on a mission to disarm the population. However, after publicly confiscating arms, he covertly rearmed the population, all while stocking up on ammunition. Desalines' belief that he would soon have to take up arms against the French once again was understandable. Indeed, when France reinstituted slavery in the island colony of Guadeloupe, news couldn't be contained for long. This fact confirmed everyone's suspicions of what the true plans were for Napoleon's officers. And sure enough, Desalines attacked French troops in Gonaïve, sending the soldiers into retreat to their ships in the harbor. He told them, return to Europe. Leclerc sought to rein in the black soldiers through genocide. In order to control the mountains, once I have finally completed the job, I will have to destroy all the food crops and a large proportion of the cultivators. I will need to wage a war of extermination. Leclerc's target was the black population of Saint-Domingue, including those who fought in his ranks. In Le Cap, he had 1,000 colonial troops arrested, loaded onto ships, and pushed overboard with large sacks of flour tied around their necks. 
A contemporary witness, Jean-Pierre Pichot, corroborated the practice. Drowning is the usual way of putting to death black prisoners. I've been told that, on several occasions, thousands... If there's one thing that always works in an enslaved population that withstood genocidal conditions, it's just more genocide. That seemingly also is a, is a really successful strategy there, just like the, the military solution. And ultimately, all the most successful, seemingly most successful military solution is always going to be genocide. So Thousands were drowned at the same time, and their bodies were often seen floating. Like many unsuccessful campaigns against insurgencies, the rebels had cleverly utilized their many advantages. Their fighting edge, their mastery of the wilderness and mountains, disease, sabotage, scorched earth, all to bleed the occupiers. This strategy worked. Half of the officers in this army are dead, wrote Leclerc in summer 1802. Men passed through and disappeared like shadows, recalled Lacroix. Armed with muskets, the rebels also scored casualties using tactics from the old slave rebellion days. <clears throat> That's why I laugh whenever motherfuckers in the Western world try to portray themselves as, like, civilized, because this is no act of a civilized people. The act of, of enslaving an entire continent full of humans is already uncivilized as fuck. They lay traps. Pits dug into the ground were covered with branches, leaves, on the bottom lay boards studded with nails. Rocks or tree limbs might be placed in front of them, prompting soldiers to jump over them, landing hard into the bed of nails. By 1803, Desalines had effectively consolidated his power over most of the rebels in the colony. Under his command, he'd unify hundreds of local leaders, an astonishing feat, and with their help, they continued to bleed the French, and drove them out of most of the colony. Their coup de classe finally came in May, when peace between Britain and France fell through. No reinforcement would be coming for them now. A song from the period was passed down generation after generation, recording the march toward victory of Desalines troops. Desalines is leaving the north. Come see what he is bringing. He is bringing cannons to chase away the whites. In November, Desalines directed a final attack on French positions outside Le Cap. On the 18th of the month... I finally realize Hassan is basically the Tucker Carlson of the left. Shit would be so funny if it wasn't so sad. I mean, I want to thank you for saying that. Tucker Carlson is an incredibly successful propagandist for the white nationalist cause. If you mean that I'm an incredibly successful propagandist for socialism and the cause of educating Americans on socialism and do a pretty good job of, like, <clears throat> explaining socialism, anti-imperialism, and the like through the framework that is easily digestible by liberals by utilizing mostly liberal language, then yeah, I'll take it. But I don't think you're saying that. I don't know if that's what you're trying to mean here. If you're watching a fucking, uh, if you're watching a collection of historical facts laid out bare about the Haitian Revolution, and this triggers your sensibilities to, to such a degree that you have to call me the Tucker Carlson, I don't know what to tell you. You're, I think it is you who needs to re-examine their principles. Month, Desaline sat on a stone, holding his snuff box, and watched as his troops took the final, crucial hill, conquering a country, a nation, for his entire race. Kojembo at long last acquiesced and accepted defeat. After negotiating a surrender, several thousand troops, along with white residents of Le Cap, sailed out of the harbor. Behind them were some 50,000 dead. A majority of the soldiers and sailors who had been sent to Saint-Domingue had died. On New Year's Day of the year 1804, Jean-Jacques Desalines, now emperor, Motherfuckers. declared independence. Motherfuckers will play Red Dead 2 and still come in here and not recognize what's going on there. How insanely dumb do you have to be to compare Hassan to Tucker Carlson? I mean, I try to take something positive out of it. Tucker Carlson is a massive, massive piece of shit. He is a white nationalist. If he's coming here while I'm talking about the liberation of slaves in Haiti and saying that, Maybe he's actually, maybe he doesn't have a, a angry approach, even though he doesn't follow me, so I would assume he is. For the new nation of Haiti, thought to be the old Arawak name for the island. Among the declaration's words were the following ominous statements. Citizens, it is not enough to have expelled the barbarians who have bloodied our land for two centuries. It is not enough to have restrained those ever-evolving factions that one after another mocked the specter of liberty that France dangled before you. We must, with one last act of national authority, 
forever assure the empire of liberty in the country of our birth. We must take any hope of re-enslaving us away from the inhuman government that for so long kept us in the most humiliating torpor. In the end, we must live independent or die. When will we tire of breathing the air that they breathe? What do we have in common with this nation of executioners? The difference between its cruelty and our patient moderation, its color and ours, the great seas that separate us, our avenging climate, all tell us plainly that they are not our brothers, that they never will be, and that if they find refuge among us, they will plot again to trouble and divide us. These tigers, still dripping with their blood, whose terrible presence indicts your lack of feeling and your guilty slowness in avenging them, what are you waiting for before appeasing their spirits? What followed this proclamation is somewhat disputed. He ordered a series of massacres of white inhabitants. Bro said, "Kill the Yakubian devils, dude." He said, "If you're a child of, if you're a child of Yakub, it is time to leave." Although precisely how many perished is difficult to establish. Between February and May 1804, several thousand of the remaining French were systematically massacred in two waves: men first, women and children afterwards. It was then that the complete massacre took place. The population, stirred to fear at the nearness of the counter-revolution, killed all with every possible brutality. After the first slaughter, Desilene issued a proclamation promising pardon to all who were in hiding. They came out and were immediately killed. Uh-oh. On April 28th, Desilene himself- Bro, how do you f hide as a white person in Haiti post-revolution? Like, that part I don't even understand. It's like- the fuck were you thinking at that point? You know what I mean? Oh, they won't know. Like, what, you're doing a dude... Uh, is it blackface, actually? ...himself had issued a proclamation, which seemed to indicate that something significant had indeed occurred. Finally, the hour of vengeance has struck, and the implacable enemies of the rights of man have received the punishment their crimes deserved. Yes, we have rendered onto those true cannibals, war for war, crimes for crime, outrage for outrage. Yes, I have saved my country. I have avenged America. So the events that unfolded in the entirety of the uh, Haitian Revolution and the aftermath as well is a was a massive was a a uh, massive turning point for uh, white slavers globally. They saw this. They recognized not like uh, that. Oh, this can't continue without like violent retribution. They saw it. And we're like, <clears throat> actually, as a matter of fact, we got to do everything we can to further suppress the slaves. In the America, God forbid, we're not giving up the slaves. Like, come on now. That's crazy. Um, we are we are still definitely stone toss got revealed. Lamau. I want to know what he looks like. Yes. Um, they, they looked at it and we're like, we will never, never allow this to happen. And then they spent every fucking waking moment for the next 200 goddamn years, basically. Uh, uh, doing everything they possibly can to make sure that Haiti never recovers. What? <sighs> Brace yourself with some deeply unfunny, cruel cartoons, serious cringe, and regenerating foreskins is long overdue. Meet 34-year-old. Oh. Oh, wow. He looks exactly how I thought he would look. On February 2nd, 2017, the artist Red Panels memorialized his retirement by lowering his character into a molten vat a la The Terminator. His outstretched hand formed the Nazi salute in his final frame as the final dog whistle, lest his overt fascist sympathies go unnoticed. Then, he debuted a three-panel cartoon showing a buffet of international food that culminates in a pile of shit bearing the various countries' flags. Should the meaning be unclear, rollover text of multicultural comic hammers the point home. So he went from red panel to stone toss. It's a 99 tweet thread. Jesus fucking Christ. He's Puerto Rican, bro. Dude, come on. Come on. Is that even remotely surprising? I've told you this before. This is how... This is Americanism, okay? This is Amer being American. I think a lot of people literally think that like half of 4chan isn't fucking like non-white people. This doesn't mean that they're black people, but in many cases, they are definitely not like in the OG grouping of white people. I mean, think about the, the shooter that fucking said that they did it for uh, libs of TikTok and shit. That dude was Mexican, wasn't he? That's how it works. 
He's an intactivist also. You and Stavi better take that L. I mean, yeah, Nicolas Fuentes is literally a Nazi. His name is Nicolas Fuentes. Think about that. Think about that. Don't think too hard, but you can understand what's going on there. It's just straight up Nazi. Why are you edging us this hard? Show us. Because it's 99 fucking tweets, man. 99. And, it, and, and the Twitter thread breaks at 32, it seems. Never mind. It's still back. <laughs> Hans Grabner. There's a blog post, too. How they found him uh, starts here on this. Uh, yeah, they found him because... Uh, Wait, because of his intactivism? Is that for real? Or Because that seems like a joke. That seems like it can't be real. It's too good to be real, right? But yeah, this is what he fucking looks like, bro. Here, this is it. Which is like the most expected, it seems. Yes, he donated to a group that regrows foreskins. Wait, what? China on top? China has about a half as many prison prisoners as the U.S., yet China has about four times the population. Ironically, the U.S. calls itself the land of the free. Yeah, I don't know why people, <clears throat> I don't know how Americans, like, don't see that and then go, well, it, w like, what's the American argument for this? That, like, like the Chinese government kills them or something, like, secretly instead of imprisoning them? Is that what they're saying? I'm circumcised with the resulting dryness of my glands, penis, the limited range of sick, my penile skin to glide, and the psychosexual body image dysmorphia makes it difficult to achieve orgasm during coitus and encumbers masturbation. In one deleted but archive post, he explained a little bit about his pre preoccupation in, with the topic. Oh my God, he literally is an intactivist. Wait, is his intactivism how he became a fucking Nazi? Is that what it is? Like, actually, he his intactivism, like, he, he thinks it's like a Jewish plot or something that he was circumcised. Please, I'm going crazy. What's the context? This guy, his name is Stone Toss, okay? A very famous Nazi comic. Like, he makes a, a cartoonist. Uh, nobody knew his identity, which is shocking. Nobody knew his identity for years and years and years. He's a very famous Nazi uh, uh, cartoonist. You might even recognize, I think he's done some cartoons on myself as well. You might recognize those cartoons at least when, you know, Destiny fans were showing it all over the place. Like uh, the Eat the Rich one, I think he did a, a comic on as well. Um He's just like a classic anti-communist, fascist, Nazi, white supremacist, loser, fucking dirtbag. Um, that's it. This is the stone toss that I'm sure you might have seen. <clears throat> About to have 9,000 plus Nazis in here saying he's not actually a Nazi. Yeah. Some of his circumcision posts here. Wait. Reddit user Scythe001 also has a circumcision fixation. A deleted Scythe 001 comment from March 12, 2015 contains nearly identical text to the August 10th, 2015 debut. Red panels, cartoon about circumcision, the teeth pulling, ear removal analogy seems to be a favorite debate rebuttal. There's a part where he goes to Japan with his IT company. It's so damn funny. Jesus Christ. Pulling out your children's teeth instead of brushing them is fucked up. Cutting off your children's earlobes to facilitate proper ear cleaning is fucked up. But cutting off your child's foreskin instead of using soap is good parenting. Intactivism is the funniest thing because, like, it does make sense on principle, but it is only a cause that the weirdest dudes will take on. Because, like, the moment that you... I can't think of another... Like, I can't think of a single other thing where, like, you are technically right, but it's only the worst people that advocate for it. Does that make sense? Like, I obviously jokingly talk about intactivism... Uh, Child trafficking too? No, no, no. Child child trafficking doesn't is not the same because like child trafficking is not normalized in the way that like circumcision is like mass adopted in the US and normalized, even though it is like objectively insane. When you think about it, it's like a wild thing that we do here in the United States of America. Uh obviously it makes sense for like why Muslims do it. I myself am obviously circumcised due to Islam. Um, and America is like one of the only countries where there's mass circumcision adopted, even though there, it, it's not like for religious purposes, Islam and Judaism, uh, have circumcision. Christianity does not wait. Why do Muslim do it? What do you mean? It's called Sunnit, <clears throat> which is a important ceremony. It's like the, the bar mitzvah almost. It's like a considered, uh, like the cutting of age It's a religious practice. Or cutting of age, coming of age. Yeah. 
I got cut. My parents are atheists. No, that's what I'm saying. Americans do it across the board. Everybody does it. It is really interesting to think of, though, because, like, like I said, it makes sense as to why you'd be like, well, that's kind of fucked up. But um, <laughs> it's only advocated for by the nuttiest people. Whereas child uh, trafficking is not the same. Everybody objectively is like, no, that's wrong and fucked up. Nobody defends or, or even thinks about um, child trafficking in a similar way. Do uncut men face prejudice in the U.S. from sexual partners? Man, I don't fucking know. Anyway, like I said, it is one of those... It is one of those weird things that makes no damn sense, but everyone just kind of goes along with it, and the only people that are advocating for it are just, like, so obsessed that it just kind of, like, makes it so that nobody really will ever be prejudiced against it unless they're like completely insane see look at this who doesn't like the look of a natural penis and refer to their otherwise beautiful and natural looking instrument of intimacy at a certain point also i think you're just simply talking about baby penises like that's the other part of this problem for the intactivists is that you have now preoccupied yourself with baby dicks that's the other thing it's the same like it, it, it's it's it runs into the same problems with uh like the matt walsh of the world who are like psychotically obsessed with uh like gender uh confirmation surgery and things of that nature where they think obviously there is no like morality associated with that it is actually immoral that they're advocating against like any kind of gender confirmation but but having said that because of their uh, insane obsession and, and thinking that they're, like, morally righteous in their cause, they end up coming across like insane people. Does that make sense? They come across like absolutely insane people because they're just constantly talking about, like, teenager genitalia. And nobody wants to talk about that un for understandable reasons and for good reasons. Uh, anyway... Medicaid considers circumcision cosmetic and won't pay for it. Folks below the poverty level scrape together the money to pay for it because it's the norm. That's crazy. Stone toss in Japan, by the way. Attention, if you're a single white woman living in Japan, I know an eight and a half out of ten tall white man employed as a programmer in the U.S. who's currently open, but probably only briefly. So hit the DMs for details. There ain't no way he put himself at an 8.5 out of 10. Also ironic because he presented himself as a tall white man. Now, I don't know if he's tall or not, but it, it, Japan is like one of the places where being white is not actually a benefit. But of course, in his mind, he's still operating with a white supremacist attitude, so he thinks it truly is a benefit. In Japan, it's not. I guess he's tall in Japan. He's tall by Japanese standards. Stone Toss being Latino is one of the funniest reveals I've ever seen. General at white savior. You're browner than I expected. Oh, he was looking for a white woman. Oh my god, I didn't even see that. I thought he was doing the classic libertarian guys with Asian wives shit. I didn't even, it didn't even, dude, my man went to Japan to be like, hey, any white ladies out here that want to fuck? That makes it even weirder. Very weird. Very weird. Not as weird as thinking that you'll avoid the top of the hour ad break by not subscribing at the top of the hour because there is a three minute ad break whether you like it or not. So if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. With the Twitch Prime, I connect to your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. You can also get gifted a sub. Here's a three-minute ad break now. All right. The weather in California is beautiful. After today's reveal, the bitter insult comics are quite a bit funnier. I can send, I can send, I don't. And who are you? The man who would have married you. <laughs> of course, women can do anything men can. Just watch. The ability to disagree with a man and not mention penis size, how much sex he has, how much other women want him. Or calling him an incel. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so funny. Oh my god. Oh. Incels, society's most dangerous men. Incels, danger. Oh, he's like, he's saying like, uh, welcome to Detroit. Like, black people are way more dangerous because they steal TVs. Sup, babe, did you fall out of heaven? Because you're ghosting me. The reason he was so hard to find was because he was scrubbing himself from the internet, including removing himself from family obituaries. And removing his Latino heritage? Shut the fuck up. No way. Note the revision here in the first version of the Stone Toss character supports um, sports a shirt with a Celtic cross, tied to neo-Nazism and white supremacy that serves the logo. I like that there's like a thousand fucking tweets in here that specifically talk about a thousand tweets in here that specifically talk about like what him like to justify or to 
to basically say like, here's why he's a Nazi. Because unfortunately for liberals, you got to do that. They love symbolism and they refuse to recognize when someone is a Nazi. It is basically impossible for them to recognize when someone is a Nazi. So you literally need like 50 points to describe how this Puerto Rican guy, this Puerto Rican guy can, as a matter of fact, be a Nazi. Okay. That's just America, baby. He was like, Abuelita, stop posting pictures of me with my, with, with my familia. I'm trying to be a Nazi online. No, he was. Yes, of course, he was a gamer gator. Obviously, duh. Let's be real. Gravener was also found in a 2014 article in the New York Magazine that noted an enormous bald man named Hans who had flown from Texas for a party of Gamergate supporters at a New York strip club. In the article, Gravener defended the misogynistic Gamergate harassment campaign by 8chan users. Naturally, accusations of misogyny are thrown around. But as evidenced by the presence of women, of which there are a few, it is a diverse group. Hans paused and winked. By the way, table dances are $10 and lap dances are $75 if you're interested. May I recommend Miss Rain? It's evidenced by the presence of women, of which there are a few. <laughs> of course, he's another man who looks like he lactates and hasn't worn a medium-sized shirt since he was 11, always going on about the importance of masculinity and manliness in general. It's never a guy who looks like Daniel Day-Lewis or something. Yeah. You very rarely ever get a dude who's like, who is just built up to be fucking normal that demonstrates this level of entitlement and resentment. Oh my God. Yeah, Daniel Day-Lewis, by the way, not only attractive, not only a fucking treasure in the fields, in the arts, but also an ardent supporter of Palestinian liberation. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis once wrote, he visited Gaza in, I think, 2005 and wrote an article from his experiences, the harrowing experiences of, of the, the daily conditions that Palestinians in Gaza are subjected to. He is the motherfucking goat. Anyway, uh, at 34, he's much younger than expected. He is 24 in this image alone. His comics are genuine and expose and some of the shit that deserves saying. Like at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. Wait, no, I just ran that. I ran the ad break already. You missed it, my friend. I hit it five minutes ago. You're late. Yeah, Stone Toss has been an out and about Nazi for a minute now. Wait, what? Jordan Peterson is beefing with fucking Elmo? I, oh, I thought you meant like Jordan Peterson is beefing with... What? Kill yourself, you Hamas supporting child abuse? No, this is not real. No, there's no way this is real. No, that's, a, that's fake, dude. Come on, Jordan Peterson would never say that. To Elmo, at least. Yeah, if it's a screenshot, I don't believe it. Anyway, let's get back to Stone Toast. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So who is Hans Christian Grabner? He has his info eradicated from identity data sites and his home removed from Google Maps. He didn't delete his Facebook page, but it was emptied of content and the name changed to somewhat generic. But it gets weirder. The lengths he's gone to obscure his identity show an unusual level of dedication. For example, Hans Grabner's absence from a family obituary seemed odd, but a cached copy showed him deliberately edited out. Is he also hiding his Latino heritage? Oh my God. We found scores of seemingly bogus emails with username H. Grabener that seemed to create an attempt to flood the zone and confuse search results. Could the same strategy possibly explain 1,723 domain names we found registered to the original H. Grabener email addresses? And uh, his home removed from Google Maps, they just blurred that shit out. Now it stands out on his L shaped street. This is M. Hud posting live, by the way. I asked him to send me a pic of his activities. <laughs> He's thick as hell, dude. He thick as hell. <laughs> um, anyway, in a now deleted 2015 tweet, Red Panel said, Great stream with Cernovich in Vox Day. We did run across the name Hans Grabener appearing in a now deleted YouTube stream of the same show, Embracing Masculinity. Oh my God, these guys left nothing behind. They literally went nutty mode. He also left the glowing review of the Gab Android app. In December 2016, Red Panels went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the equally idiotic yet more skilled debater Sargon of Akkad on the merits of anarcho-capitalism versus classical liberalism. The humiliating public slapdown likely played a role in Red Panels' retirement a month later. Oh my god. Wait. Sargon of Akkad caused you to fucking quit your... Cease your ways? See, I'm not one of those authoritarian liberals who are driven by emotional thinking. I'm what you call... A classical liberal. Basically, I'm a rationalist who believes in the value of personal, economic, and political liberties. Well, accepting minimum wage and... Wait, 
accepting what what is he minimum wage and anti-discrimination laws of course they protect my feelings and he's smoking black dong cigars uh now the reason why this is important is because this deviation existed very important to remember now why is that very important to remember because these guys like sargon of akkad who you now take for granted as like out and about white supremacist pieces of shit used to hide under the guise that they were classical liberals. Now, can anybody in here tell me if there is any debate YouTubers who do similar things? Maybe one that wears a beanie that still claims to be a liberal regularly. Now, of course, there's some other versions of that as well. People that claim to be the real progressives. I have been doing this for 10 fucking years plus now 11. So I'm very familiar with the strategy because I saw it happen. I saw my former colleagues go down this route, Dave Rubin, to be exact, claiming liberalism and real progressivism while saying that anyone else that actually uh, called out Islamophobia, for example, were regressive. Just saying. Something to consider, something to think about. Stone Toss also appeared on the much more hospitable kill stream with Ethan Ralph, another Nazi. He later got cold feet and attempted to erase. Also, these guys are some of my earliest haters and also some of the biggest, like, grossest scumbags of all time. Like, like they're such fucking gross scumbags that other almost equally gross scumbags hate them. Like, this is the type of dude that, like, other pedophiles call a pedophile and say, no, like... That's a different kind of pedophile, right? That's what we're talking about here. You guys do not know the fucking underbelly. You have not even scratched the surface. This is where the tactical N-word happened, by the way. Oh, this is where Boosh did the tactical N-word. Yeah. So it's really interesting to think about because like when I had like 30 fucking followers on here, like 30 live watchers on this platform on twitch.tv slash Hasanabi, they were in here. Some of my oldest community members will probably remember. Literally, while I was in here, they would be in here every fucking day, carefully combing through every single thing I did so they could go take it back to their own uh, Nazi live stream and make fun of it and, and talk about how, uh, how awful uh, it was. Straight up. Some of those guys, um, what is his name? One of those guys was like a uh, flamingo or something. That was his name. He now is like a, I think he's like an influencer on his own. He's like, he went from uh, cyber stalking me to becoming an influencer on his own uh, in as a part of this like a uh, group of individuals. Yeah. He's a teacup dog VTuber. Oh, wow. Yeah. Deep lore. This is like shit that probably little bear doesn't even know. Possibly because Flamenco, he's a teacup, teacup dog YouTuber, VTuber. Yeah. Um, the reason why I'm uh, so much fucking effort and time spent just on trying to keep a beef between two people going. No, this was again. My, in my career, there's never been a fucking moment of solace where I had like a two-sided beef. This is all one-sided beef. I avoided them and I stopped talking. I never talked about them. This is the first time I might have even like, I, I have in the, in the, past i have brought them up on stream to like debate them to and it never works but yeah no these are people that were in here in perpetuity like since day one they've moved on to other targets i guess but that's why it's like uh it's it's uh endless didn't pewdiepie defend him getting banned or something yes he did um so yeah that has never like that's never stopped if anything uh throughout the years like it basically went away in the Trump presidency because a lot of it, it was way more fashionable to present yourself as like a radical, um, a person with the radical politics. But they've definitely, um, but they've definitely come back in fashion, especially with like Twitch basically, um, Twitch basically turning it or not Twitch, sorry, Twitter basically turning into this like right wing shit fest and 4chan poll. Um, there is, uh, there is, uh, definitely. A, a resurfacing of this like drama content it's like always presented as like it's always presented as something that it actually isn't right like a lot of these dudes will be straight up neo-nazis what okay dude um a lot of these dudes will straight up 
be neo-Nazis, but will refuse to recognize it and will say like, oh, no, I'm not a neo-Nazi at all. I'm just like defending white identity. Why can't I be proud of my white identity? And then there's also like the introductory to that kind of uh, neo-Nazi sentiment, which will always present themselves as a liberal or a classical liberal or some other version of like a liberal, even though they just simply align in almost every way that matters in the important ways. Uh, they will align with the uh, neo-Nazis. Sometimes they debate them. Sometimes they have minor disagreements. They're just simply being edgy, for example. But ultimately, they end up platforming said Nazis always. Oh, boy, was it memeing? How come this community thinks he's a neo-Nazi? I met Sargon. He's not a neo-Nazi. Not sure if you're memeing. Brother, Sargon of Akkad might not be ideologically a neo-Nazi, I guess, uh, if you want to go into the weeds of it. But he has uh, a long track record of repeating white supremacist, white nationalist propaganda, aligning with actual out and about white nationalists. We are not going to relitigate 2014 era commentary here. It's crazy. Okay. Uh, especially when, you know, the man himself has said he is a white nationalist and has defended the concepts of uh, ethno, uh, defended the concept of like having an ethno state. So, it's weird because, like, I think when you get outed as a person like this or when you finally openly recognize uh, and openly admit that you are a person like this, okay, a lot of people forget after, like, they take it for granted because they're like, okay, these guys are, you know, these guys are the way that they are. They've admitted it, and let's move on. And then enough years pass by, 10 years or so, now you got new fans that are coming in because he's doing the same old shit again. We found Hans Grabener working in the Houston office of Open IT starting in 2017. He was a part of a delegation who went to Japan in May 2019. The photos on the Facebook page were suspiciously awkward, cropped to remove Grabener, but were intact on LinkedIn and YouTube. Did you see the stuff with Sean King, how he reverted? Yeah, I did. I feel like some liberals might have reposted some of this shit back when Facebook was popping and feel guilty about it in retrospect. I think that a lot of liberals, uh, without recognizing or finding themselves in the throes of the same reactionary fundamentals that got them to be right-wing shitheads that they now think they're not. That's why I always say you got to fucking kill the bigot inside of your mind. But a lot of liberals don't do that, and they simply resort back to their, like, edgy ways and slowly but surely find themselves in the throes of the alt-right once again. Very sad. I feel like it's kind of like Adam something. He thought he did all the work and got mad when people said, no, you still have a ways to go, buddy. Yeah. Is there even an alt-right anymore with the popularity of mega fascists? Yeah. It's no longer supposed to be alternative. It's just the right. And if you're not liberal, if you don't like Joe Biden, then you must be the right. And the right is now uh, indistinguishable from the alt-right. I guess like not all of the major right-wing figures openly will say Jews are responsible for everything. That's the major difference between the alt-light and the alt-right. Like Ben Shapiro believes in everything that these Nazis believe in with one major exception. The exception is that people that are like one deviation further to the right think that it's the Jews that did all of the problems. Ben Shapiro is Jewish and doesn't think that it's the Jews that are responsible for all of those problems. He thinks it's uh, liberalism. OSINT not breaking the fash allegations. Guy makes edgy comics on the internet. Liberals and progressives on Twitter. Les Dogs will threaten both him and his family because we're the good guys. Oh my god. OSINT Defender being like, wow, you guys are doxing is pretty funny, by the way. Bro, you do OSINT. You do open source intelligence. But not shocking that you would use the are we the bad guys meme to talk about a literal fucking Nazi. Listen, if you're finding yourself defending Stone Toss, like... You know, or claiming that he's just edgy. You know, you think you agree with his politics. Not a stretch to assume that you think his politics are just edgy. His politics are not just edgy. He is a fucking Nazi. Like, literally. I mean, he out and about. The reason why this thread is 99 long is because most of the thread details why he's actually a Nazi. Using his words and things that he has openly shown throughout the many, many years that he has operated as a Nazi, uh, as a, as a out and about Nazi cartoonist. One of Stone Toss's most popular cartoons depicts a tug of war wherein a libertarian and a fascist are struggling mightily against a team of consisting of communists and a character vaguely representative of big business and moneyed interests. 
I have often talked about how easy it is to launder fascist ideology by simply talking about anti-communism. Okay? Obviously, one of the greatest indications that you are talking to a fascist person is if they are anti-Semitic. Another pretty solid indication that you're talking to a fascist person, potentially fascist person, is how hard they go laundering anti-communist narratives. Now, obviously, the most heavily tele uh, 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 televised incident that I'm talking about is specifically the Waffen SS Ukrainian Nazi that got a standing ovation in the Canadian Parliament. If you recall, you might you a lot of you wondered back then, like Hassan, how the fuck does a Ukrainian Nazi, like a literal out and about Nazi that worked in the Waffen SS Galicia Division, the the foreign brigade that participated in the slaughter of Jews in Ukraine and the Polish people in general, like how the fuck does that guy get safe harbor in a place like Canada who's supposed to be anti-Nazi? And I told you back then, it is because Nazis are anti-communist. And Canada and the United States of America are also anti-communist. They are more anti-communist than they are anti-Nazi, which is precisely the reason why post-World War II, they very quickly reoriented their allegiance in, uh, in favor of fascists in an effort to expel Europe of the, of the specter that was haunting it, the specter of communism, which is ironic because that's exactly what the fascists wanted to do anyway. That is precisely what Hitler wanted to do. Why he lost the battle, but Nazism inevitably and fascism inevitably won the war. While Nazi Germany may have lost, fascism won. The torch after World War II was carried by the Americans. You're triggered. I'm just trying to help Hassan learn more. He should talk to some people smarter than him. He should try to talk to Zizek. MAGA communism is based off dialectical materialism. I thought Hassan was a dialectical materialist. You should have a conversation with Infrared. He would educate you on the working class and political economy. That's awesome. My man said MAGA communism. How's that going? He said it's dialectical. <clears throat> I really hope this guy's doing a bit. Anyway, so yeah, Stone Toss is a Nazi. Uh, and in other unsurprising news, he's very ugly. And in some, I guess, surprising news, he's also a massive intactivist, like a massive one, which is pretty cool. Like, the fact that he is a huge intactivist is pretty funny. Um, Hans Graber is an anti-Semitic, racist, insult, anti-LGBTQ, Nazi weirdo who boosts his own content and, worst of all, likes his own tweets. Um, they found his email. Oh, that's the other thing. These guys love, and I mean love making, like, fake. They love making fake, like, LGBTQ plus, like, fake liberal accounts, radlib accounts, or even, like, socialist accounts. They love that shit. And it's so funny because, like, there are still boomers out there who believe these, like, dumbass alts. Like, there's always, like, um, there's, like, that one guy who's, like, Hassan Piker Defender number one or something. And it's, like, th that account has been going on for so long. Let me see if I can find it. It's such a funny, like, did they delete it? Oh, fuck. I don't know if I can find it. He's, like, vaccinated 11 times, like, that type of shit. My Afro-Puerto Rican uncle is extremely racist, too, so Sontas... Don't toss being a Puerto Rican Nazi cracks me up, but I'm not surprised. Yeah, it's like Hassan Piker's number one defender or something. Is it possible to have a conversation with you in the next few weeks about this? The alt accounts and spam on Twitter is actually such a huge detriment to conversations and information. I know this isn't the time or place, but shoot your shot, you know? What? I always see a Twitch chatter named like Hassan is God that pretends to be a fan of yours and is just shitty to women in other chats. He's banned here. The lengths that people will go to utilizing all of the uh, all of the offerings of anonymity online is unimaginable. Okay, but yeah, that's Stone Toss. Also, here's Aiden Ross apologizing to Andrew Tate. Really fucked up, and Andrew Tate's team confirmed that I fucked up, and Tate told me right, I fucked up, and thank God he did not get put back in there because I would have felt really guilty. Tate had spoke to me and he said, "Dude, just come to Romania." I want to give my, my people and your people what they want to see. Let's do some content. You're okay, and I forgive you. Because I apologize. I felt really fucking bad. Really bad. Um, and I really, really feel bad about that, and I'm sorry. I honestly did not mean for that to happen. There, my motive and my reason speaking about location was because I didn't want to get swatted. So I basically, which was really stupid, really, really fucked up. And Andrew Tate's team confirmed that I fucked up, and Tate told me, right? I fucked up. 
And thank God he did not get put back in. Lemo, the tater toss that came in here earlier saying that you were lying is seething. Dude, you think those guys remember anything? Someone fucking, yeah, someone, someone, someone jiggle some keys in front of them and that's it. They forgot all about the things that they were advocating for earlier this morning. They respond literally to, to stimuli instantly. That's it. They don't do anything else. It was probably um, not tater tots that were in here saying that, by the way. Oh, I know you covered it today, but can you give me a quick summary? No, dude. Literally Google it. I already fucking covered it twice today. Twice. Please. You can find it on YouTube already. Fan accounts have already uploaded my coverage. There's a YouTube video on my channel. Wait, what? I uploaded it. Oh my God. I already uploaded it, dog. Go watch it there. God damn. My editors are fucking operating fast today. They're going to get 10% less whippings for that one. You know what I'm saying? Finally, dude. Less lashings. You get to see. You get one phone call to your family. It's three minutes long. And it will be coming out of your salary. Which doesn't exist. They probably didn't ha beat Hot Center Productions, though, because Hot Center Productions doesn't do any extra editing. He just cuts it down. He doesn't add all the shit. Anyway, what was the banger jacket you just had on? It's a Teamster jacket that I'm currently wearing. Um. Anyway, TikTok has pushed Chinese propaganda ads to millions across Europe, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Aaron Rodgers and Jesse Ventura are top RFK Jr.'s list for running mate. Shouts out to, shouts out to Willard Neff. Mr. Kennedy said he had been speaking with the Jets quarterback pretty continuously for the pa uh, past month. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I think Aaron Rodgers RFK ticket would bang like RFK. Ro the, the Kennedy Rodgers ticket would go so hard. Please do it. At this point, I'm in a, I'm in a fuck it YOLO mode. And I think American politics should reflect that because American existence reflects that it is the dying gasp of air in a, in a dying empire. So the least we can do is just like have fun in the demise. Yeah. Jail, Jimmy Kimmel, you know, running on a policy of like, uh, if you're vaccinated, you have to go to prison. Who do I think they would steal votes from? Uh, more on the Republican side for sure. This guy called it a year ago. Oh my God. Jets fans going to be big mad when Rogers doesn't play in 2024. So we can be Robert Kennedy's running mate. That's incredible. Listen, Al Gaib. What do you want from me, ma'am? It's about that time when she's starting to get unruly. Imagine Aaron Rodgers having to talk to world leaders and now sound like a dumbass. What do you mean? We had Donald Trump and we currently have a literal corpse. Guys, every time Lolo posts, you don't have to link it in here. Okay? You don't have to. I don't know why he's I don't know why he tweeted this, but he's dead to me because uh he was supposed to come with me and he bailed. So he's dead to me. He's banned from appearing on the stream. Have you thought on having RFK on your stream? He seems open to visit several different themed podcasts, etc. Yeah. There's a complete shutdown on all Lolos coming on the Hassanabi broadcast. Believe me. Am I going to stream Kai's birthday party? Fuck yeah. Guys, I'm a 32-year-old adult man. Who, I, I am not a white woman. I'm not throwing a fucking birthday party for my dog just for the fun of it. I'm doing it for content. Okay? <laughs> of course it is going to be streamed. There is not a world in which it doesn't get streamed. How is this guy still in the race? Excuse me. He's the, he's the most dynamic, youngest presenting guy on there. Not by a lot. He does also sound like he's dying. But at least he can bench press like 75 pounds. You know what I mean? I talked to Bradley Martin about meeting Trump and he said he's a big boy. Bradley Martin went to the latest UFC fight and Trump was there and he said he's actually kind of a big boy. And I was like, yeah, he, he was like, he was, he was actually really nice. And I was like, yeah, he was really nice to you because you're a fucking ape. He's a size queen like us is what I told him. I was like, he's a size queen like us. So he respects size. He respects big boys. What? Checks calendar. Nope, not April 1st. The city with the highest skyscraper in the U.S. will not be New York, not Chicago, not Los Angeles, not Houston. Chusuton. This 1,907 uh, tall skyscraper will be in Oklahoma City. Developers secured $1.5 in financing and now hoping for a building permit. Why? Bro, there isn't enough people in Oklahoma City to fill this fucking 
skyscrapers. Dude, Oklahoma is so funny because as a state, as a state, it is flush with a shit ton of like oil barons that desperately try to make OKC like a fun place for young people to live in. That's why you have places like, I think it's called Dumbo, where, or was that? No, Bricktown. Sorry, not Dumbo. Dumbo's Brooklyn. Bricktown, where like you go to OKC and it literally looks like, it looks like a hollowed out Brooklyn. And it's very funny because it's like, it's very clearly built so that young people will go there. It's perfect because it's considered a low cost site for all matter of different kinds of commerce because like less regulation, you can get away with like a lower cost of living. Uh, so you can get away with like lower wages in general. And it's actually very cheap for factories and shit to like, you know, exist there. But absolutely zero people want to fucking live there because it's Oklahoma and it sucks dick. So you go there and it's like they built all of these things because there's a lot of wealthy people that desperately want to bring talent into the city and into the state. And it's just empty, just completely empty. No matter how hard these guys try, no matter how much money they put in, it's still Oklahoma. I'm here and you're not wrong. Yes, because I've been to Oklahoma many times. My opinion, I love Oklahoma. It's a fascinating place. Oklahoma is when I realized, like, I think you have more in common living in Paris or living in Istanbul or living in any fucking actual city on the planet with a guy living in Los Angeles than you do between Los Angeles and Oklahoma. Straight up. I think that you have shared lived experiences living in a fucking city no matter where on the planet than you do living in, like, the rural part of Oklahoma. It's not an insult. Only people that live in the rural parts will take this as an insult because they think like, you know, that somehow means like um, that, that somehow means that like uh, people living in the rural parts are like barbaric or something. I'm not saying that at all. I I'm not even remotely saying that. I'm simply stating don't don't succumb to your inferiority complex. I'm simply stating that cities by and large, we're talking metropolitan cities you absolutely have more in common globally with other people living in cities around the world than you do with someone living in a rural part. I stayed in Oklahoma once and there was a notice in the hotel room not to use the towels and bed liners to clean guns or boots. While storm chasing, we drove past a herd of zebra in the middle of Bufu, Oklahoma. Wait, what? Zebras? Rural people also know this. It's the suburban people who fantasize that they're both, uh, despite being neither. I think that's a pretty solid assessment. You're right. Like, uh... Suburban people, rural people exist in the rural parts of the country because they were born into it, and so were their parents. People in the suburbs, however, escaped the cities because black people were there and had equal rights and equal representation all of a sudden, even if it's in theory and not in practice. So the suburbs are the, the actual areas where all suburban, uh, all suburban people think that they're, like, rugged and real like the rural people. And as civilized as the city folk, but somehow better because at least like there's no black people in the suburbs. So that's why in many instances, in many instances, you, you see a lot of people who are LARPing as though they are living in like rural neighborhoods, but they're actually living in suburbs. A guy I grew up with got arrested last year for stealing like $10 million in the Catholic college he worked for in Wyoming, where he was also doing world's fair, fair style promises to the locals of Lander, Wyoming, promising to build them a skyscraper skyscraper taller than the Burj Khalifa. That's what I'm talking about, dude. No one in the suburbs thinks they're rugged. No, they LARP as though they are. Come on, man. What are you talking about? That's where if we were to look at it, half of those fucking Twitter accounts are suburbians who are terrified of the big city that like fantasize about, uh, that talk about how like it's gay to like women if they're strong. That's the dudes that we're talking about. The groiper fucking Nazis who who claim that they're like who who claim that they are using their pickup trucks in the cul-de-sac exactly yeah Naperville motherfuckers for the most part being like I want a trad wife to present the traditional lifestyle anyway I don't understand this because won't this just get torn the fuck down by the first tornado yeah there ain't no way that's being built dog come on oh yeah the suburban cowboy a tale of two islands 
Because there's a chain of islands. In that chain, there's a lumpy island called Hispaniola, the most populated in the Caribbean. And sitting on Hispaniola is not one, not three, but two separate countries. They are Haiti and the Dominican Republic. One side speaks Spanish, the other speaks Creole and French. One is mostly mixed, the other is mostly black. The cities are different, the industries are different, the music is different, the way of lives are different, and most importantly, while the Dominican is the fastest growing economy in the Americas, Haiti Anyone that ever compares Haiti to the Dominican Republic, instantly I suspect that they're going to be like a neoliberal. Am I correct? I don't know uh, who Hoser is. Like almost instantaneously. I'm not going to watch this video. Hoser is so non-progressive. I'm just not. I, I feel like if I watch that video, I'm going to get fucking yelled at by his fans. React Gate 3.0 type shit. You know what I mean? When are you going to watch my video, Hassan? Hits and gigs, podcast animation. If you're shifting, I'm following. Probably never. React to this drama. Kill me, fam. Kill me, fam. Uh, blocked me. Bro, at least he's like consistent. You know what I mean? This guy. Okay, some of these are different actually. Never mind. I thought he was a consistent hitter. Turns out like he does actually deviate from the norm a little bit. Like like when her when her pussy loose, he starts hitting it extra hard type shit. At first glance, a simpleton would probably think uh, that the technique is always the same. But you realize that there's nuances to it. His stroke game develops. His stroke game evolves. Like, look, see? See the hand positioning right here? When her pussy wet, I assume? I'm going to beat Debo's ass for blocking you 100%. Thank you, M-Hud. When her pussy tight. When her pussy loose and you hard. I say right foot creep. Respect. This is what the internet has led to nowadays. I hope he makes his proud with his parents proud with this loser. Why are you mad, bro? This dude is fucking. I think he's just mad because he's piping. He's piped up. And this guy, this blue check mark, is getting none of that. Alright, we're gonna watch. YouTuber falls in love with obsessed fan instantly regrets it. This is a M HUD certified. I'm in love with a fucking stalker. And how dare you? And you know what? Go to sleep tonight and f***ing sleep on your f***ing pillow and know what you did to this woman. Oh, the one in my pack says the world is my oyster in my Leave it up to YouTube, you know? I don't get it. She's the YouTuber or is she the obsessed stalker? Leave it up to YouTube. This is Morgan, better known to her thousands of online followers as Unstoppable Morgan. And in the summer of 2023, she proves that the name is earned. Taking some time off from her usual travel videos, Morgan immerses herself in a summer romance that turns into a living nightmare of venomous allegations and twisted mind games involving money, reputation, and even... I informed her with text message John show me in photos of posted claiming he gave her the black eye and how she demanded 400000 for her sons to go away. Morgan stated, I know what it looks like, but he knows. And violence. The question, is Unstoppable Morgan the innocent victim of this madness, or is she the architect? And now he has my dogs. Now he has my dogs. Now he has my dogs. It's August 16th, 2023 in Sparks, Nevada, and the Washoe County Sheriff's Department gets a very unusual call. Hi, I'm calling to report a crime. Okay, what crime? Extortion. Okay, where did this occur? It occurred online. I had called the FBI last night, and they uh, told me I needed to notify the... I love this account. For obvious reasons one because they always have the fucking watermark in the most gruesome scenes uh two because they t they take their job very seriously and write stuff like stock imagery posed by model under the 911 dispatcher and last but not least they have the vibe of a super bowl commercial when also talking about gruesome crimes it's pretty funny they always they always have like the, yes, 
And then this family of four was executed ruthlessly by the killer. And it's like, damn, dude, why do you have that same level of energy for every part of this video? You know what I mean? They're qualified forensic analysts are often very biased. Yeah, no shit. Wow, shocked. That's how every criminology uh, account looks like on YouTube. Local authority. Oftentimes also shoveling the boot down the throat too. But ah, it depends. It depends. It depends. Some of them are either like based ACAB guys. Pretty as well. Okay. Is the computer at your house that this happened? No, it's being done by social media. Okay. What is her relationship to you? She's my ex-girlfriend. Okay. And what exactly was the extortion that she made? She wanted $400,000. She made a post saying that she got a black eye, but she didn't say how or that it was me. She alluded to it and made several other posts after that and actually did, again, say she wanted to be, quote unquote, paid out. She said, buy me out like the last kick you f***ing bit, 400K. It's not every day that a call comes into 911 reporting an alleged online extortion. But as we'll soon hear, that's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes it's to wild John's. It's like 911, what's your emergency? I'm being extorted. Seems kind of wild, you know? I feel like that's a non emergency hotline type shit. Extraordinary story. Okay, and I'm not on that property, by the way. It's only her. Where were you? I've been sleeping on a dirt road up in the desert up north of there. What? Okay, we need you to meet with our deputies to take a report, so where do you want to meet at? Could we meet at uh, my office? Okay, sir. The dispatcher has deputies meet him at his office later that morning. It's there that John shares the stormy tale of a romance gone sour. We also find out that this isn't John's first contact with the Washoe County Sheriff's Office this week. Yesterday, I responded out for to the house to, for a wellness check for right. her. I was here. She was kind of in an emotional state yesterday, so I, it wasn't super clear. So just kind of when you guys started dating. We started online dating, phone, distance relationship. Okay. And, and how did you meet her? Online. She's a YouTuber. Okay. She has an online presence. Okay. John goes on to explain that just like thousands of her followers, he was a fan of Unstoppable Morgan's YouTube. Damn, she got 156k subscribers. YouTube channel. The pair met online and started dating. Soon, he invited her home. She had these ideas about, you know, what she wanted to do for her next project, for her channel, and this and that. I got space. Why don't you come on out this way? So she came out this way, stayed for about a week. She went up to Idaho for a couple of weeks to... She fucked a fan? Yeah, do not get any fucking ideas, you psychos. You understand me? Don't go tour some hot springs and film content for her YouTube channel. We had still been talking on the phone. You know, I was working like on working, things, working on things. Okay. Yeah. She was like, OK, well, I'll come back. But John tells the officers that things quickly deteriorated from there. The only dick I got is for your moms. She just progressively got more unstable. And so I was like, look, bro, that's crazy. So the stalker guy, the stalker guy's like, yeah, I was stalking her, but like, she was the unstable one. That's insane. You got to be extra unstable for that. You know, still love you as a friend, but I, I don't think we can, you know, have a relationship on any kind of romance. Then started going online and doing stuff. One day she was like, oh, yeah, we broke up. And she took a bunch of stuff out of my house and was posting a live on YouTube saying that she stole my dog and she stole my Rolex and all this stuff. And was driving around live streaming. As John relates the story to deputies outside his office, the details of this shattered romance grow. Wait, why? Does, oh, I thought it was a fucking police office or something. Wait, this motherfucker has an office, but he's just laying on the side of a dirt road in the middle of the desert. That's where he's sleeping. Why doesn't he fucking sleep in his office? Hello? grow more and more outlandish. Their living situation in particular has been a major source of conflict. The officer asked John when Morgan moved into the home's mother-in-law suite. She okay. was never really in. fully in the mother-in-law suite. She okay. was in my room right. for quite a bit and then moved into the mother-in-law's after the first call when your partner said, look, you know, I checked the house. She can lock the door and told her, you stay on that side. You stay on that side. And what was the what was the reason for that call? I've kind of read through it a little bit. Right. Like, what was the whole issue with so that? So the whole issue with that was on Sunday morning, my sister um, had said, hey, I was just made known to me that there were some live videos that Morgan had reported inside the facility. 
She signed the NDA saying that she wouldn't film or take photos or anything, blah, blah, blah. Can you ask her to take it down? So I asked Morgan, you know, hey, I talked to my sister. She's asking if you take this video down. She flipped out. Tell me what time, what time stamp, mother blah, 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 going off. John explains that Morgan had posted several videos of the inside of his family business setup despite signing an NDA regarding pictures or videos of his work when she had visited the facility. John says that his sister then came to him wanting to know why Morgan was still living at his house. I was like, I've been trying. I've asked her nicely. I've told her this won't work as a romantic relationship, yada, yada. And she's like, okay, fine. John's sister and her husband decide to go out to the house to convince Morgan to take down the videos she's filmed without permission. But the conversation quickly turns heated. She was going off. She was drunk. When they went in there, they were like, okay, well, it appears that she... I don't know. I'm, I, I might be a little uh, biased here as being a content creator myself. But, like, immediately, a couple red flags. One, he's a stalker. Two, he's sleeping, in his own words on a dirt road in the desert while he has an office. There's a lot going on that seems very suspicious. An NDA for a tour of the of the facilities, like that part I don't really understand either. She is packing her things up. She's clearly intoxicated. We can't ask her to like drive away or anything like that. So I've literally since Sunday night been sleeping up the road by the off-road section right outside of Pyramid Lake. Yeah. John explains that Morgan's tantrums and sudden... How do we know he's a stalker? Title. Title, spoiler alert. YouTuber falls in love with obsessed fan. Outbursts had scared him to a point where he'd packed out of his own house and had been sleeping in his car up a dirt road. In his quest for a solution to the problem, John even reaches out to Morgan's family. Their response is astonishing. I called her brother yesterday, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Your sister's been drinking for a few days. She says she's going to leave. She still hasn't left, and I'm not sure what to do. He literally responded, you do what you got to do, man. She's just had an ongoing issue with everyone in her family. Her brother was like, you know, if you got to try to get her 5150, this, that, and the other, he's like, you just do obsessed fan doesn't mean stalker i must have missed the stalking part what do you think obsessed fan means obsessed fan that actually physically meets with the youtuber is definitely stalker territory how else do you think it was a meet cute brother it says obsessed fan if they physically came in contact with one another the moment an obsessed fan turns into a stalker is the physical aspect that's when it becomes a stalker do what you gotta do 5150 is a reference to laws that allow for the detainment of persons experiencing a mental health crisis meanwhile john tells the deputies more dark details about the messages morgan has been sending no i want 400k for my silence i'll leave we had a, a text exchange about her demanding money and then saying see great example cutie is an obsessed fan if she started tracking where Taylor Swift was going and physically put herself there, then she would be a stalker. There you go. This is a great example, okay? An obsessed fan could potentially purchase a subscription for $5 to avoid the ads. A stalker would, you know, come to the house to watch the content with his own two eyes. That's the difference in an unwelcome fashion. Now, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. Well, I know you're broke, so I'll settle for 20 k for my silence. What is she wanting her silence for? Like, well, she's claiming that she'll ruin my reputation. With serious allegations hanging in the air, deputies must consider all possibilities. Is John trying to get out ahead of the story with a tale of his own? Or is Morgan inventing accusations for financial gain? John tells the deputies his... King Henry the Fourth. Thank you for the twenty gifted subs. Here's the three minute break now, by the way. Version of what happened. So I went and I knocked on the door. I actually thought she might try to pull some. So I had my phone recording in my back pocket, audio only. She finally answered the door, just soaking wet, like she'd gotten out of the bathtub, towel on, very disoriented. I was like, "Hey, I'm just checking on you. I saw the posts you made about help me, help me. I need help. I'm not good." We're still just standing in the doorway. 
And she's like, I don't know, something, my eye, I'm like trying to look, I'm like, what's going on, right? We have a brief conversation, she slams the door, I leave. It's a simple enough story, but is it the truth? That's something police must investigate. But first, they want to see exactly what Morgan has been posting online. Last night at like two-ish or so in the morning, she sends me some texts. Oh, she's still texting. She's still texting. That's the most recent text. She's trying to say that because of her antics, she's gained more subscribers and is making more money and then demanding for her. She even sent her bank account screenshot with her routing info and everything. Yeah. She's saying she wants the money for silence. And then she started posting early this morning around 2 or 3 a.m. Photos that apparently that she's taken down that showed that I had physically abused her. Do you have those photos on here? Can you yeah, they're in, screenshot they're, them? Right? They're in the email. As the deputy reads through the posts, he finds a message in which Morgan references something ominous. What's this unstoppable army? What is that? That's what she calls her followers okay. on her uh, social media platform. Okay. Police now understand that Morgan's threats have teeth. Her popularity on YouTube gives her a wide audience, and her loyal followers will likely believe any allegations she makes against her ex-boyfriend. John also explains a little more. Bro, what the fuck? She's crazy so far. Or about how the situation between them deteriorated so drastically this week. I had given her till yesterday at noon to be gone. That was the deal that we agreed to by a text. She said, okay, fine, I understand, I'll, I'll be out. And I said, the, the other option is that I will have to go down and get an eviction notice filed for mm -hmm. you. So you pick. And obviously she didn't like that ultimatum, probably not the smartest thing on my behalf to even state that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. You mentioned here that you, you contacted the FBI? Yes, last Already? night. Last night? Yes. Okay. What did the FBI tell you? They took the report and then they said, call in and you know, report it to local authorities. Okay. And I planned to do that this morning, but by the time I woke up, I had already seen all this stuff this that she was putting out. So I immediately called as soon as I woke okay. up. Make no mistake. I do think that the lady, the YouTuber lady is fucking crazy, regardless of what the, what the title reveals. Cause like the fuck are you doing? Oh, here she just posted again, 400 K and I'll shut up. Ask to write the check two minutes ago. John seems to have all the evidence he needs. Nonetheless, the deputy explains that bringing this case to resolution may not be as simple as it appears. This is my other problem. Okay. Talking to her yesterday, she was very adamant of not coming out of the house. Yes. And very adamant of me not going into the house. Okay. Even if I have probable cause to arrest her for extortion. Yes. People's, you know, rights outweigh... Uh, Absolutely. My, my ability go to go in, in. so so I yeah. can't go into the house. Sure. I can't rip her out of the house, even if she answers the door. Like there's a threshold there, like I can't sure. violate that. Right. So if she refuses to come out to talk to me, then I probably won't be able to arrest her today. Indeed, because of this legal barrier. The Cause she is a woman, lol. Cause she is a woman, lol. Lolle. The deputy actually discusses with John a few <laughs> options for getting Morgan out of the house, including potentially having her meet John at a neutral location. As it turns out, however, no ruse is needed. In the following body cam audio, we join the deputies as they make contact with Morgan at the house. Hey Morgan, how are you? I'm okay. You okay? <coughs> What's going on today? <coughs> Nothing? There was some, some posts about your, you injured your eye. How, how did that happen? <coughs> Someone hit you? When did when did it hit you? It came back and like it was not ready to talk about Okay. What if, what if you talk to my to my partner? The no, I'm like just like Okay. I I would like to talk about that with you, you know, just so we can make sure you're okay. Yeah, right. I'm fine. Can we come in and talk to you? So what so that looks pretty you have a light? Can I turn the light on? Because Morgan lets the deputies inside willingly, they no longer need a pretense to lure her out of the house. And, and when did this happen? You said yesterday after after uh, we were here? Monday. Oh, it happened on Monday? Did do you have your phone? Did you were you able to call the police? For what? Well, I mean that's that's a battery. Like that's it's not okay to well, like, I, like, I feel like I'm making it sensitive a little bit. Like, I'm, because I'm still here. Perhaps sensing that something is off about Morgan's claims, the deputy tries to get more details about the altercation. Tuesday, it happened. So that was yesterday, right? And you said it was after I came out and talked to you yesterday? Yeah. 
Okay, so so he came home. What was the conversation? He was upset about why the f- are you still here? Okay. Anything else? It just started with that. Yeah, just like why are you still here? At what point? Got, like, super frustrated. Morgan tells the deputy that she has a recording that will demonstrate the truth of her claims. She pulls out her phone and plays the evidence for all to hear. And this is all from yesterday when he was here. No, when he called me after. Oh, when he called you. Okay. Why are you calling me? You know why? No, I don't. No, you do. No, please tell me. I was like looking at my phone and like looking at like nine to one one and like. Should I call them? And so that's why I was calling you. Like, do I call? Did you call them? No. And I wasn't what sure. Saying? What are you saying right now, Morgan? That's what I'm saying. I like, I wasn't. What you're talking about. Yeah, like I wasn't sure if I should. Like, should uh, I? Why don't you? What are you gonna What are you gonna do? No. Why would you call them? What for? Um, e- yeah. extremely abusive and and threatening me. What did I threaten you with? My life. I did? The recording doesn't get the deputy any closer to resolving the matter, but it seems Morgan herself is eager to put the whole thing in the past. He's a nice guy. Like I said, I feel like I I enticed him, like I'm still here. He doesn't deserve any action. Yeah. This was a big mistake. What was a big mistake? This just whole thing. Like coming here or dating him or what part was it? No, like anything okay it was like just a big mistake has he ever been like no, violent with you in the past or physical ever. with you just the deputy clearly isn't impressed with morgan's evidence but he continues to ask about the altercation and its fallout warning her to take the matter seriously her response shows that there is more to unstoppable morgan than meets the eye like it's fine everything's fine yeah. like he's he's gone and he's left me alone and but but what what happens if he comes back because he does live here so. i have a gun you have a gun I'll shoot him can i Uh-oh. if he comes yeah. in here i will shoot him can i well i am if you feel like your life is in danger you do have a right to defend right. yourself right? So i'm not recommending that. that dude i love cops cops are so funny like in the same breath they'll be like so how did this happen? Is there domestic violence or not? In the same breath, they'll be like, well, you know, you do have a right to kill your, uh, kill the person coming into your house. Like if you don't believe the domestic violence accusations and you think that she instigated it, then why are you simultaneously saying you should kill the guy? Like giving, giving them like basically legal permission. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. He's playing. It's his house. I know. I'm saying that like, <laughs> cop is like, good news. She's not planning on extorting you anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so funny. He's just cops like, hey, listen, listen, lady, I'm in it for the drama. Okay. I play both sides. So I always come out on top. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wasn't with you until you said you're going to have a, a self-defense style situation. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps realizing that the situation between John and Morgan has the potential to get much worse if left unresolved, the deputy steers the conversation in a different direction. So did you send him any uh, messages or anything about any money? Oh, that was a joke. He gave his ex-wife 400000 so I was joking. He said I wanted 400 k to be you. That's a good joke. Did you, did you tell him that you were joking? No. How does he know that you were joking? Wait, how the fuck does this guy have 400k? What is happening here? Is this like, okay, here's the thing. Is this like a reveal where she's like a small YouTuber? Okay, and she's actually the obsessed fan. And then we find out that the other guy is a much larger YouTuber. And he's actually the YouTuber in the title. Much larger YouTuber. Falls in love with obsessed fan. Much smaller YouTuber. (laughs) Instantly regrets it. By the context of it all. Well, I, I read all the, the messages, and I've seen all the posts. They, they don't yeah, seem to be joking. I know. He knows. Leaving aside the question of whether or not the posts were mere jokes, the deputy explains that there are some discrepancies in Morgan's timeline. What was it that you were referring to about, about being silent if he paid you the money? You, you told him that if he paid you the money that you'd be silent and just leave. What was that about, about that injury? And that, and that happened yesterday? Like I said, I 
it's okay. it's like very distraught. Well, well you, you said that it happened after I would talk to you yesterday. Yeah. Some of those messages. Yes, bro. I know Stone Toss is a, is a Puerto Rican man. And no, he's not living in Japan. He's a Latino living in Japan trying to find himself a white European chick. No, he is. Stone Toss is a Puerto Rican dude living in Texas who presented himself as a white dude. And one time he went to Japan, he was looking for white ladies to have sex with. This were before yesterday. What were those about, about being silent and just leaving? Morgan doesn't seem to have an answer for this. So the deputy tries to determine why she posted pictures of her black eye to her army of followers. But when you posted the pictures, was that to imply like that he did those? Is that why you posted them? To hurt him? Is there a specific reason you want to hurt him? You, you said that he's a nice guy and he's let you stay here. The reason that, that you posted those to hurt him specifically? Well, that's something I have to ask. And so it's like this tit for tat thing going on right now where he's like, I want to destroy you. And I'm like, what actions has he done to, to destroy you? Threatening to, he said that I need help okay. and I need to get in an institution. Okay. And he was like, I'm going to make sure that you get there. Okay. And I was like, why would you do that to me and my dogs? Do you think that's, he's trying to destroy you by, by saying that you need to maybe get some help? Do I need help? No. No. I am 100% mentally sane. Okay. Morgan takes the topic of her mental health off the table, but she lets the deputy know that her anger at John comes from a wellspring of betrayal. Why, why do you? Puerto Ricans are S-tier racist operators, all the power of being an American citizen and all the racial ambiguity to be shielded, a weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Ridiculous take. Puerto, Puerto Rican vegan socialist, not true. I mean, Puerto Rican hogs are some of the greatest of uh, all time. I'm Puerto Rican Lamau. <laughs> I'm Puerto Rican passing as Arab. No, I've seen it with my own two eyes. You guys forget I lived in Miami. Okay. I've seen, I've seen the, 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 the depths of of that uh, hog variant you hate him so much like he just tricked me how did he trick you he just tricked me he like he told me everything i ever wanted to hear and like coerced me and he like it just feel like so it was like it was just me lying about everything i i wanted a, i wanted a baby and like we're having unprotected and like as dramatic as these details may be, the deputy is more interested in hard evidence of wrongdoing. He makes one last attempt to get the truth about their supposedly violent altercation. How many I'm times so confused. There's curveballs in either direction here. Like, why did they fucking present this as YouTuber falls in love with obsessed fan instantly regrets it? If, like, she's not... Everything the guy has said and has presented himself as seemingly makes him look like the victim and everything she's done so far makes her look like the villain of the story i don't understand there's like we're 20 minutes in and it looks like he's the victim is he the youtuber did he come over here yesterday no he didn't come over he's just been driving past so he didn't come over at all yesterday like i said like i have to look at my phone when it comes to the altercation but after that he's been gone Will you look at the phone and guys don't do the why does it lie clickbait used to fucking at least like be tangentially related to the to the heart of the story okay it's clickbait if it's the exact opposite okay you could say obsessed fan falls in love with youtuber instantly regrets it that's still a unique and compelling plot point okay that's still very clickbaity this is literally the exact opposite <laughs> seemingly of what happened unless Unless something crazy happened here. And then see when the altercation happened? Because yesterday when I talked to you, you didn't have the black eye or anything. Right. But but now you tell me that he didn't come over here yesterday, so I just... No, I didn't say that. I feel like I need a lawyer. You want a lawyer? You don't want to talk to me anymore? Morgan is clamming up, but the deputy reveals that he knows more than he's let on thus far. Would it surprise you to know if I told you that... that recorded that conversation because he thought that there might be like some allegations so he recorded his conversation with you when he came home yesterday okay and in the recordings it doesn't sound like he was being violent or anything right is this is so 
the sky. It's like the most thing I need to him. And so I'm here still. He's mad about that. I will not be pushed out. There's a detailed account of John's recording in the official police report. In that account, it's said that John knocks on the door for approximately eight and a half minutes before Morgan answers. John says he's just checking on her, and Morgan replies that she is good, but her eye is not. Observing that she's all wet, John asks if she slipped in the tub. Morgan says no. John asks her, did you slip on the floor? This time, Morgan says, yeah. John attempts to get more information about what happened, but Morgan simply says, you tell me. The police report notes that the audio conversation is consistent with John's verbal statement. Unfortunately for Morgan, the recording is not cool. consistent with her story of John hitting her. The deputies know that she's been lying to them, and the next step is inevitable. Do me a favor, ma'am. Go and stand up for me, please. Come on over here. Why? Ma'am, please just stand up, okay? No. Ma'am, I don't want to do anything. What are you doing? Like, just stand up for me, please. Stop. I have just three dogs. Okay. I understand that. Hands behind your back. Wait, what? No. Ma'am, relax. You are not relax. doing this. What are you relax. doing? Morgan, just relax. Why? Cops at one speed, bro. He went from, hey, you can defend yourself with a gun to like, you're actually under arrest. I, I decided. <laughs> what the fuck? This is crazy. The cop heard watching? that she has three dogs and went to get a shotgun. Yeah, he went feral. <laughs> like, I heard one bark. I didn't know there was three. <laughs> Three for the price of one. Hold on. Why are you doing this? So, Morgan, so I told you I'd explain it to you. All right. So, right now, you're being arrested. Wait, he changed the title? No way. Stand Three up. dogs. Okay. I understand that. No, he didn't. Hands behind your back. You debated me. No. Man, relax. You are not relax. doing this. What are you relax. doing? Morgan, just relax. relax. Why, okay. you guys? Why are you doing this? So, Morgan, so I told you I'd explain it to you. All right, so right now, you're being arrested for extortion, okay? Extortion? Extortion. So... Dude, cops are crazy, man. I never, ever would have thought that they would actually follow through on an extortion case. Like, these guys must not have any anything else going on. I feel like the way that this is... I feel like the way that this is normally presented, like... The way the cops normally uh, act like is that they're just like constantly working. They're overworked. Oh, for the twenty thousand dollars. For comment. for asking for four hundred thousand dollars for your uh, silence and for you to leave. Right. All right. Okay. It was a joke, but okay. Well, I didn't think it was a joke. He felt like you were being serious because you asked him several times about it. Okay. So. Okay. But God forbid, women have hobbies. That's where we are right now. Okay. Extortion. Morgan spends the next few minutes digesting the reason for her arrest, and when we catch up with her in the back of the police car, she's come to her own conclusions about the situation. I know what's going on right now. But he did say that he's been in contact with your brother and... With my brother that lives in... Yes, ma'am. Right. Of course he's in contact with my brother. Of course he's in contact with everyone that I know. I fell in love with a stalker. And I know why. Aw, it's cute. Like, she said the L word. You know what I mean? Like, they obviously advanced to that degree in their relationship. It's very nice to, very nice to hear about. This is happening because I know that that family owns this town. Morgan He's believes monetizing that access to the arrest files through a Patreon on Stavel Morgan. She's no the way. victim of a powerful conspiracy, and she blames the deputy for his part in her persecution. And how dare you? And you know what? Go to sleep tonight. Sleep on your pillow and know what you did to this woman. This is exactly what he wanted. And now he has my dogs. Now he has my, now he has my dogs. If, if you want, ma'am, we could, we could call animal control. No, please, please. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Just, again, more... God, you gotta love cops. <laughs> they just... They have only one speed. He's like, yeah, we'll bring pest control. They'll murder the dogs for you. Okay, don't worry. He'll, he won't have the dogs neither. <laughs> we'll send an animal control. Send those dogs to the pound real quick, ma'am. Please, no, 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 he'll be good to them. Okay. That's what he wants. Morgan's emotions run from sadness to anger and back again on the long ride to jail. Yeah. 
wave hello and say goodbye. Your hatred of cops clouds your judgment? Wait, what? Dude, come on. Like, this shit should be handled by, like, a fucking social worker, a counselor, a mediator. Not with handcuffs. She's very obviously mentally ill. Fuck the... What the fuck do you mean my judgment is clouded? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? She's clearly not mentally well, okay? Can you please turn this sh music off? I can't. Kind of music would you like? Just I nothing can't. at this point. Just like, but this is like the worst song ever. The song in question is Semi-Charmed Life by Third Eye Blind. This is not the song I need to go to jail to. <laughs> no. Just silence, please. You tricked me. I invited you in the house, and I know that if I didn't, I wouldn't be here. You tricked me. I wasn't trying to trick you, man. I was trying to... She ain't wrong. That is how cops are. I want to make sure that you're okay. Yeah, and you came inside because you knew that you would only have the authority to arrest me if I either crossed the threshold or I let you in. You tricked me. I hope this is meeting your f quota. Damn, yeah, she's a -cab. yes, you do. She's a cab. She's a cab, bro. Let's go. One of my best friends is a police officer. Yes, you do. Never and mind. She's not a cab. I take it back. Very quickly, I was okay. Never mind. Turns out she's not a cab. Okay, very quick. Very quick uh, turn on that. Loves to deny that. Perhaps unsatisfied with how that exchange went, Morgan turns her attention to another source of her troubles. What, what is your occupation? I'm a man. Oh God, I hate saying that. Oh God, I hate saying that word. No, YouTuber. Yes. Leave it up to YouTube, you know? Leave it up to YouTube. This is like my last straw. Like, every person that I meet on YouTube is the most f***ed up piece of Like, leave it up to YouTube. Morgan may be having second thoughts about dating her fans, but it isn't long before she turns her bitterness back to the deputy. So all along when you walked in the door, you already knew. Trying to figure out what Yeah, he did. That's what cops do. What's going on? Like wow. all those questions and like acting like you cared. Yeah, you care, man. That was I'm just all that to, was all just a game. Trying to figure out what happened to your eye. I was trying to figure out, you know, right. what and like, that happened, what happened, why you didn't call the police, you know? Like be a human for a second. Like you know how crazy women can get and i was yelling and i i know what i'm doing and like i don't think that i would have done what he had done had i not been doing what i was doing morgan's explanation seems to assign equal blame which makes it all the more difficult for her to see any justification for her arrest so he just called you and this is how much pull he has Okay. He called and explained your guys' relationship to us mm -hmm. and everything that's been going on. The text messages between you two. The concern about the money. Okay. The concern, you know, all I know is that I was standing in the doorway of the garage and he went f nuts and then I locked the door. Morgan sticks to her story as it relates to the altercation, and she maintains that her posts are not as incendiary as they seem. For the record, it was a joke. Okay, it was a f joke, and I thought that I had privacy to my own platform, and I even blocked him on there. Like the fact that he even saw that, I don't. He must have created like a new screen name or something. Like it was a joke. Morgan's story has no effect on her circumstances, so she focuses instead on her immediate environment. Would you mind turning the air on, or at least letting the window down? Turning it on? Yeah, just like, or at least let the window down or something. Well, that doesn't work. <laughs> Where is it blowing? <laughs> I need some modification. Morgan clearly isn't happy about her accommodations, but she hasn't lost her sense of humor completely, as we see in this comical exchange. Do you have any uh, tattoos? Yeah. What's your biggest one? The one on my back? I don't know. What the f question is that? Like, I just, one in my f crack. I just need you want to see it? I just need a list of tattoos. Yeah. So so we'll the one in my f crack says, The world is my oyster. In my it's 100 percent true you want to see it okay no i'm not <laughs> First time. wait is she being for real she literally has a world is my oyster in her ass ass crack what is happening dude she is she's a great she's great i, I don't know what else to say she's fucking great whoever got
She also reveals that this isn't her first run-in with the law. I have assaulting a police officer on my record Yo, what the 10 years that? ago. I don't want to say the same scenario, but like I drove drunk and I purposely rammed a car with my Bronco because she was driving too slow. And then I went back home and then the police officers came to my house and I had this like dog fence up. Yo, this is the most insane woman of all time. She's mental because YouTube is the hardest job. Yeah, it turns out Twitch streaming is not the hardest job. YouTubering is the hardest job. And he like tripped and fell over it. Yeah, he like tripped and fell over the dog fence. And then he claimed that I assaulted him. If Morgan is able to see the funny side of her troubles, her sense of humor vanishes when the deputy tells her that John is taking out a protection order against her. Protection order? Over what? <laughs> Whatever. I protected him. But this mild display of anger is nothing compared to what we see inside the sheriff's office when Morgan realizes that police intend to comb through her cell phones. Do you give me consent to go through your, your phone to acquire that information related to this case? No. Okay. Go through my phone for, excuse me? For, for the text messages, the conversations, the things that you're posting about, do you give me consent to do that? I feel like I need a lawyer. Okay. It's just yes or no. No. Nope. She said the magic words. <laughs> Uh-oh. Guys are like, oh, I just need a yes or no. Okay. In this scenario, we're- Lawyer up, dumbass! What are you doing? Requesting a passcode instead of a fingerprint or face scan is seen as testimonial under the Fifth Amendment. While courts differ on this, the Supreme Court has yet to address it directly. That's insane. It's advised not to share passcodes to protect one's Fifth Amendment rights. However, under the Fourth Amendment, searching a phone without consent or a warrant is generally deemed unreasonable. Law enforcement must obtain a warrant based on probable cause for a phone search without consent. Well, so, you can log on there if you want to. But we're going to download it all. Okay, okay. I will help you do that. I just have I to can be... sign on to Patreon right now and you can see the post if that's what you need. Like, log on. I gave you my I phone password. You did. And I can't download them here. I have to take them upstairs. What do you mean download? Like, I'll send it. I'll send it to you. We're just going to download everything off that phone. You for cannot. The case. There's over okay. There's over 6,000 videos. Okay. On uh, that we're, phone. we're only going to be getting the videos that are related to this. No, case, you're not. not. All your other videos of, of your YouTube. But there are stuff. no videos. It's a post. Okay. And so I was telling you, if you. Open my phone right now. We can screenshot the Patreon message. The post that I put on Patreon, we can screenshot it. it has Wait, she posted on Patreon about her like, oh my God, she's so crazy. What the fuck? It's nothing to do with videos. Okay. It has nothing to do with photos. I, I'm just going to apply for a search warrant for those things at this point. Right. right? Of course you so, would. Yeah. Okay. So once because we both know who you are. So once we're, once they're downloaded, then you can go through the process. Download it. There's nothing to download. It's a f post on Patreon. Man, I need to. Uh, you need to relax. Okay. Officials at the detention center administer a breathalyzer test for safety reasons. Morgan blows a .303, indicating severe impairment. In a video uploaded to her Patreon eight days later, Morgan said, quote, I like the idea of living a 100% sober life, so if this is what it took to get me here, then I'm grateful. Despite all the emotion of the day, the Washoe County District Attorney's Office decided later that month not to pursue the charges against unstoppable... Bro, this was the worst title I've ever seen. Point three oh three is wild. Um, so it turns out the dude wasn't a fucking fan at all. Was he even a fan? Don't ever say, pay me 400K. The max it'll get you is 20. The max it'll get you is 20. The max get you is 20. Don't ever say. She has a new channel now. If you'd like to watch her make a burger three months ago. Oh, oh it's public. I think it's still going. Oh, buddy, you want me to lift you up? Come on, sit up here. Oh, you stole your bed? Okay. Just a little bit more. Imagine what great things people will be doing with PCs in 30 years. Bill Gates. Dude, what the fuck? Bro, I just want to know what happened with the dogs. We just saw them. She has the dogs still. I think that I was just kidding. I was just being a little... Gal, can a lady have hobbies? Defense work. It probably, my assessment is she's very clearly mentally not stable. Duh. She is a YouTuber after all and a YouTube live streamer. Um, 
and it, the the ex boyfriend probably felt bad and didn't want her to go to jail for fucking being just a little unhinged. Get her on stream? No, fuck no. Hard work like that would make anyone crazy, you know? The Daily Wire's new show... About what you're about to see awesome. is not so much a history documentary as it is a horror film. The scale of the crimes defy imagination. So cruel that it defies understanding. Welcome to hell. How can you talk about how seven men could murder 20 million people without understanding the system that put them there and allowed them to commit such a crime? Both the race-based genocide of the Nazis and the class-based genocide of the Soviets killed... Class-based genocide of the Soviets? Yo, oh my god. So many liberals are gonna be Daily Wire Plus subscribers after this. It's not even funny. Without even a shred of, like... Without even a shred of, like, uh, confusion or moment of self-reflection, so many liberals are going to become daily wire-pilled after this. Every single fucking liberal that's always, like, talking, oh, my God. Millions of innocent people. Terrorism, spying, mass murder, torture. So why are we encouraged to never forget one and then intentionally taught to forget the other? Oh, my God. Oh my god, they're just straight running with a double genocide. They're just like, <laughs> yeah, guys, you should forget the one genocide and not the other, I think. <laughs> Come on, forget about the Nazi genocide. The real genocide is the much larger one. After all, 20 million, that's a much larger number than like the 12 million, right? Well, we're going to find out. I'm Bill Whittle, and this is an empire of terror. <laughs> Trotsky, Lenin, Stalin, and then Putin. Yo! Yeah. Oh my god. Famous, famous communist Vladimir Putin. Don't their fans glaze up Putin? This won't work on their base unless they're appealing the libs. No, they're appealing the libs. Also, there's still plenty of, um, there's plenty, there's still plenty of right-wingers that think that Vladimir Putin is like a, a lefty. Even some mega communists about a future presidential candidate, Steph Curry for president. Can you please stop linking me, Steph Curry running for president? Potentially, I don't care. Okay. Thank y'all for uh, welcoming us here. Yay, nay, maybe. Maybe. Do you have an interest in politics? I, I have an interest in leveraging every part of my influence for for good in the way that I can. So that's why he was leveraging his fucking influence in in ensuring that affordable housing doesn't get built. Netarai Carta, an ultra-Orthodox group that supports the liberation of Palestine, arrived at the protests happening now in Cedarhurst, Long Island. At first, Zionists cheered their arrival. As they joined the pro-Palestinian <laughs> demo, the Zionists went ballistic. <laughs> what is going on, man? Yo, that's so funny. Oh, that's hilarious, dude. Look at this. By the way, that is like... <laughs> this is the Jonathan Glazier story. Obviously, he's not Netarai Carta. But like... What, like this sequence of events, this sequence of events, by the way, this is so straight up Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like this literally is the most Curb Your Enthusiasm moment of all time. But it is pretty funny. It is pretty funny because this is exactly what happened with like Jonathan Glazer's, uh, <laughs> Glazer's <laughs> Oscars uh, acceptance speech. <laughs> What is going on? They just like get together and, and duke it out. Come with us, you're a Jew. No, Larry, come to this side. Whatever you want, come over here. Larry, Larry. you belong with us. Come. Get out of this issue. Get over Larry. here. Larry, you, me, and Yasmin, the three of us. All right, that's enough over here. Just get the fuck over here. Stop being an idiot. Larry, come over here. Larry, don't be get a over here. Just stop this stuff. Get, 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 get over here. Larry. Anything Larry. you want, Larry. Anything you want. I mean, come on. Very easy decision. Um, I just realized Northern Line is so Larry David coded. Why? Because they're both bald? Where are they? This just seems like a random street. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on here at all. I don't know why they're doing this. The energy on the two sides is prominent. A man walked past the pro-Palestine crowd eating a watermelon to antagonize, and a Nassau County detective firmly scolded him and made him leave. Cops are facing towards the Zionists, backs the pro -Palest backs of the pro-Palestine crowd. As the pro-Palestine demo against a Zionist real estate event in Cedarhurst and the counter to it dispersed, Zionists kept surrounding the people getting into their cars, including 
One full of Netherite card at one Zina shouted Trump 2024 to antagonize. Fuck you, Shahmuta! It's like, bro, what is happening? He's trying to speak. He's trying to speak Arabic, and he somehow arrived at a, an, a, at an Israeli accent, and they're in fucking America. Like, what the fuck? How is this even possible? Everybody out. Everybody across. Wait, is it Hebrew? Is Sharmuta is Sharmuta uh, in Hebrew as well? No. He is Israeli, and Israelis use that word now too. Wait, what? No. I did not know that. Yeah, I think it's in North Carolina. No, Hassan Abi, I speak Arabic and Hebrew. Don't stop saying Israel invented Sharmuta. <laughs> God damn it, I can never get a fucking clear answer uh, in this stupid fucking chat. Oh my god. Stop. I think they're in North Carolina, but I don't know. Maybe they're not. Oh no, it's Nassau County. It's Nassau County Police Department. Yeah, Long Island. More like Strong Island. I saw NC and went North Carolina. It's Night City. So, Sharmuta is originally uh, Arabic. So, I'm, uh, I didn't know that it, people, I didn't know that people say it in Hebrew too. Germans say wallah like their life depends on it. Wait, really? Wait, kus immek? Israelis use kus immek? No way. You guys are lying. What the fuck? A lot of Arabic curse words are used as slang in Israel. Israelis pretty much only know Arabic curse words so they can try and humiliate or embarrass us. It's a very common occurrence. Anytime you see these kinds of protests, you see a Jewish person attempting to cuss out Arabic in Arabic t 10 times out of 10. Wallah, brother. Brother, uh. Kus immek is uh, your mother's pussy, I'm pretty sure. Kasochtek is your sister's pussy. Gahpe is a uh, whore, right? And then, um, and then, do, 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 do. it means crawl up your mother's pussy. Modern day Hebrew uses a lot of words from Yiddish and Arabic. No. Yes, the most Alman motherfuckers speak the most Turkish slang. Bro, you are the most Alman motherfucker. Alman means German and Turkish, for the record. And that is a German chatter who knows what that means. Alman. Alamanje is what we say to uh, Turks living in Germany. Alamanje. How do you know all these Arabic curse words? As an Iraqi, I have the right to know. How do I know Arabic curse words? Uh, I had Arab friends in college. I know Urdu as well. Like Benchot, Madarchot. Kalp is, yeah, dog. I don't know any Farsi. Kutarbacha means son of a bitch in Bengali. Oh, fuck. Just spilled all over myself. Ipni Kelp means a uh, son of a dog. Luckily, most of the fucking I just I spilled mostly on myself. Now it looks like I pissed myself. Oh man. Did you ever cover Haiti? I've been working all day. Nah. What's going on in Haiti? Something very odd happens when you zoom in on the hands of Kate Middleton's eldest George and examine the layer transparency. Yeah, god damn it. Fucking stop, dude. I was expecting some unhinged, like, psycho conspiracy nonsense. And you hit me with the fucking cerveza cristal. Gangs of the president is forced out of the country. What? Japanese man rents himself out, offering nothing in particular. We're going to skip that. Oh, I wanted to watch this. M for mature. Rated M for mature. Rise of the Ronin. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can only nut so hard. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Forces. Great white whale that's eluded all others. But my vision is clear and my harpoon ready to go. The name is Gilles Brunet. I just need spirited young folks who I can teach to fight from scratch. As an interpreter, I have many contacts, you see. And though I cannot fight like you, I am confident that I will have a role to play. The dubbing is ass. What I, can I, the pe I'm pro shogunate. people possibly do? They must stand behind the shogunate, or we all fall to the foreigners. I have some contacts in the shogunate. If you are interested in doing a favor for them, I could make the necessary arrangements. By our deeds, our name will ring out over Kyoto. I'm expecting you to play your part as well. 
There are things one cannot accomplish alone, but a strong bond makes both parties involved stronger. Yeah, I don't know why the audio is so bad. I don't know why the audio is so bad. Since those ships arrived, Japan's been in turmoil. Come on. The thing is, we're not. Bro, this straight looks like Sekiro. Have you seen the new Shogun show? Come on, bro. Please don't ask me questions like this. Have I, do I breathe oxygen? Do I need water to survive? The answer to all three is yes, brother. What a question. Like, how do you come to my motherfucking chat and ask me such a question? Do you know me that little? Is that what it is? It's crazy. Brother, uh. Not really part of either faction. I know that whichever path we choose, we'll be doing it for Japan's future. Now is the time to show the world the tenacity of our place. The day of reckoning is at hand. Frankly, we need all the help we can get. I'm going to need you on our side. Will you finally finish second of this year? I did. Shut up. Not gonna lie, this this does not look the best despite being about a very interesting yet horrible time in Japan's history. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty. It doesn't the graphics look literally Sekiro level. Okay? It does. The graphics do look dated, but knowing what I know about the developer, the combat system will probably be relatively difficult. The fights will be relatively difficult, but good overall. And that's not what the game is uh, supposed to be for. The game is probably going to be not like a like a visual masterpiece or uh, or anything, but it's more so for the gameplay. Yes, I did play the Neo game. Uh, it was very hard. I didn't finish it. And how dare you? Sekiro looks much better than this. I think you're forgetting what Sekiro looked like. It's a fucking. It's not supposed to be that good. Come on, you're. It's a. It's this is this doesn't look like a PlayStation Five game. It doesn't look like a PlayStation 5 game. But I think two metas are popping off big time. Okay. With Shogun, obviously, like, uh, you know, this period, like, Shogunate era Japan, that is, like, a huge period, I think, that's, uh, that is that is going to seep in the mainstream culture more than ever before. And also Arab meta. Arab meta and Japanese meta with, like, Dune and this kind of stuff, I think is definitely going to make a lot more normies invested in the culture. Looks worse than Ghost of Tsushima on PS5, bro. Yeah, I know. That I I love I would love Shogun RPG focus more on dialogues and story than just fight. Yakuza Ishin, I played it. It was incredible. You think normies make the Dune Arab connection? Normies make no connection. It is the tastemakers that make these connections and lean into it until it makes its way not to do the devil wears Prada. Uh, argument over and over again until it makes its way to the bargain bin at Ross Dress for Less. Some normies will make the connections, but it's n usually not the normies that uh, make something impactful, like make something have cultural impact. It is the tastemakers. You had that, you that hard do is going to take off like the Vikings bun. It's like the opposite of some Alamount. No, I don't think that people are going to do this hairstyle. You should do it. No, thanks. Um, I'm balding, so I have this hairstyle. Mr. Fortune, it just hit another lick again. I said I never trick again. The lies just didn't stick again. I booked it at the wrist again. I chose the one with tits again. I bet out we're not done with the 90s, okay? Because the United States is the GOAT at destabilizing other countries and then being xenophobic when their citizens try to immigrate. I couldn't see the watch and flip again. The motor knew the frame was older. The drink was warm, the ice was colder. Stumbled on the three... Shoes that pull no bitches. We got shoes that pulls no bitches. We already did the hoodies that will leave you celibate, but now it's time to do the shoes that will leave you even worse. Let me know in the comment section if you ever wore any of these shoes before. And let's do it. Yo, y'all niggas with Rick Owens aren't fooling <laughs> me, bro. Y'all spend $1,000 on a pair of shoes and talk to no bitches. Don't get me wrong. I fuck with how Rick Owens look, but how y'all niggas be acting after y'all put these bitches on y'all feet? Y'all be moving mighty weird, bro. Go outside all black on some opium shit. Go to a party and lean against the wall. Bro, get your little weird ass on. I'm not taking no slack for any niggas who wear Crocs. I know your bitch count gotta be Ludwig. mighty low. Females, let me know in the comment section Ludwig. if a grown ass man, not a little boy, a grown ass man. Ludwig. In a pair oh my of God, Crocs, he's coming after all my friends. The comment section gonna vouch for me, bro. This is some kid shit. I put Rick Owens on the list. I gotta put high top vans on the list. 
These bitches are actually horrible, though. Now, when we was in, like, the eighth grade, middle school, these shits was cool. But, gang, 2024, you can do better than this. If you own a pair of phone runners, let me know in the comment section oh are you in a relationship. Oh, my God. I know oh, the answer going to be no. And on top of that, I got a homie who be wearing these bitches with no also socks. Fair. All it helps his feet breathe. Facts, that nigga foot is... smell like death. This is put on all black Air Maxes. Y'all aren't here for the bitches, bro. You oh, might as well put okay. A on your I, mean, head I, I mean, come on now. This is a... Uh... This is a good shoe. This is a good shoe. I think he's being disrespectful to the Nike Air Max Plus here. You might as well put a hoodie on your head and a ski mask because your ass is here for the violence. Okay, I fair. Hassan owns the shoe. I do not. I don't own any of those shoes. Uh, well, I do own the Crocs. Did you see Ghost of Tsushima is coming to PC? Is there a Design DLC? I saw a lyrics title was like Ghost of Tsushima DLC. Uncles have stolen our home. Killed our samurai. I will kill them all. I want to know what's wrong with Vans. There's nothing wrong with low top Vans. Everybody wears it as a stable, but when you wear high top Vans, it's like you're a kid. Not all, all black Air Maxes is almost like black Air Force energy. I don't think so. I don't know why. All black Air Forces uh, have a different vibe and a different energy altogether than, than uh, all black uh, Air Maxes. <sighs> high top Vans have the same energy as Osiris shoes. Have you seen the canceled Spider-Man multiplayer leak? I did see that. Um, I only saw it in passing, though. Does anyone have the the actual full... Is it like a meme or something? Whether it's all black Air Force Ones or all black Maxes, you only put those on when you have chosen violence for the day. Best TikTok ever. How's it going? How's it going? I've already seen this. This is an old-ass TikTok. I finally memed your right-wing incels talking point. Go back to tradition, motherfuckers. Them in the tradition. <laughs> Yeah, get in the fucking hole, dumbass. New York City. Nothing in the whole world I wouldn't do for this big, beautiful apple. One moment, you're scarfing down a slice from Vinny's. The next, you're stopping a supervillain prison break. Sometimes you can swing it as a lone wolf. But you're way better off with some friends. No fucking way. It's PvE? Saying Vans high tops is Osiris means you never skated once in your life. Couldn't be more different. Bro, bro, talking about being a poser. I'm a 32-year-old man, bro. Are you really coming in to the Twitch chat of a 32-year-old man talking about being a skater poser? Bro, you think I'm in high school? Are you crazy? I'm about to be 33 in a couple months. Do you know how far removed I am from being a skating poser? Bitch, if I even tried to skate right now, oh, I'm thinking about skating right now in my mind, immediately my knee buckled, okay? It's over. I already tore an ACL thinking about skating. I've seen the Sinister Six before. Never so methodical, so savage. Bro, they could have done, they could have turned this into the next Grand Theft Auto, I think. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's PVE, so it doesn't... I, I don't know how they could make this PvP. The entire city would be full of fucking Spider-Men. I don't think I'm gonna be enough this time, guys. But together, it just might be. You in? How have you developed a community of debaters while not debating and being so anti-debate, lol? Because, um... I've said this before. Everyone is always looking at, like, one opportunity, one angle that they can fucking come in. Because I'm in a more so educational position every day of the week or the one time where they feel like they can fucking new cardi out I can't listen to this. It's gonna fucking mute the VOD, at least for the next three minutes, where there's a three minute ad break. You know what I'm saying? At the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. If you no longer wanna see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free, baby. That's right. Here's a three minute ad break now. Let's go. I said, my body, I'm the coolest. Try to lean you for a cougar. Jump out the jungle, go hit it. I'm leaving that boy in the. Did you just say you don't know nothing about gangster shit? Are we. Is Playboy Cardi gangster shit? Like, what the fuck? I feel like that's got to be a white supremacist take, right? Like, you have to... That's like... That's not just like a white guy. That's like an old white guy. That comment... <laughs> that comment basically... That comment literally is so... 
is so white. You are the type of person who locks your door when you see a black person in the neighborhood. 100%. Cardi has gang ties in New York. It's not racist. Man, shut the fuck up. I, am I crazy? I, I feel like I feel like opium slash Playboy Cardi is like not. First of all, I don't know who the fuck says gangster rap. Okay. Also, I think it's Lil Yachty who's singing here. It's not even who's also not objectively gangster shit. Cardi is holed up in Utah with anxiety issues. Gangster shit, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like gangster rap would be a specific genre depending on who's talking about it. All the people chirping in here are not real vamps. Yeah, no. Anyway. <sighs> Hassan, what is the next census? I need to know how little black people there are in here because, oh my gosh, that was bad. Well, you could tell how little black people are in here by the fact that everyone always is, is saying, oh my God, the new Playboy Cardi just dropped. We must listen to it. You ain't opium, slat, things of that nature. 100% of the people who write stuff like that on the internet are white. So... That's another way that you can figure out the, the white demographics of this community. <laughs> Bro, I can't hear you. I'm stuck in an ab break. Also not white. <laughs> um, do we get your comment about the fall of your Turkish king? Sources tell me Odd Pedanshagen has suffered a grade three right ankle sprain. He will miss several weeks. Tremendous sigh of relief, but this likely ends his regular season. Dude, they hit him with the heart attack gun. Okay. They saw what he did to Wemby and they hit him with the fucking heart attack gun. I swear to God, they do not want to see a Turkish king thrive out here. It is fucked up. It's fucked up. That's what happened. That's what happened. I know it. 45 points on Wemby. Boom. Got to take him out. It's too much. It's too much. Let's use the, yeah, let's use the, the ligament gun. Also known as the ligma gun. Yeah. They know what would happen if a Turkish king... Popped off Rockets like that. The Ottoman, a the Ottoman Caliphate right would be restored like that. Tremendous eye relief yeah. is he's avoided any damage to that right knee. He's avoided surgery, but this likely ends his regular season. Houston is five games out of a play-in tournament slot. Sengun, though, he's had a breakout season. 21.1 points a game, 9.3 rebounds, 5 assists, over 63 games. And when you look into the offseason, he will be eligible for a five-year, $225 million max contract. And Albert Sengun has put himself in that category of being a max contract player. He sure did. Wemby alert. One more stop. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh! That's insane. One more stop. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh! He put the entire country of France in the basket. He put the entire country of France in the basket. Welcome to the league moment. More but more stop. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh! He put the entire country in the basket. Take that eight foot wingspan with you. What? Hassan, I have some controversial content for you. Even more controversial than talking shit about the new goat, Wemby. You mean the new goat, Alpera Shangin? Do you fast? I do not. I'm too fast, too furious. All right, guys. I'm going to hit you with it anyways at this point. I think that about does it. Goated block. Better than LeBlanc. Dude, how fast? How like fast do we get chatters in here immediately spreading sports clips it's very you odd hit your head on the back floor. yeah i hit my head i think on the rim it's hurting real bad and i landed on my wrist but i mean you know i saw him with the lane i knew he was going for the for the layup and i was just like man i'm finna go get this i ain't never jumped that high in my life oh. dude look at that bro went parallel dude he jumped up so dude it looks like a joke it doesn't look real Look how high, look how much higher he was slated to get <laughs> if he didn't hit the fucking rim. <laughs> what the fuck? Bro, look at this. He's already going parallel. That's crazy. That, that looks like a, that literally looks like a glitch. Like, dude, 10 feet, like falling. That's like falling off of 10 feet. Okay. That's falling face down from like eight feet. 
Like, look at that. Let's not say 10. Let's say eight feet. You're falling face down from eight feet. That's literally like, that's insane. That's insane. Like, chat, think about your house, your apartment that you're in. Okay. Now think about if you fell from the first story directly face planting from the first story. Look at that. Yeah, he jumped so high he activated fall damage. Exactly. Your face falling from your ceiling to the floor. How are you not a sports guy? You love this shit? I respect sports. I like playing sports. I like seeing impressive athletic feats. But overall, I don't really enjoy watching a whole game. I just get bored. Bro is horizontal for approximately two seconds, and he's still above other players' heads. That is insane. Okay, he is he is horizontal above other players heads for two seconds as he's falling down. Bro, you got upset at Austin and Cutie for not watching the entire movie get bored of a basketball game. Yes, my my genuine belief and it's a controversial one is that if a lot of these athletic endeavors were fun in and of itself, then people would not have to drink, eat wings and also gamble. To make it more fun. Very controversial take. I know. I think like. Like I can raw dog a movie. But I can't raw dog a, a, a basketball game. And I love basketball. Baseball especially. Basketball is like more bearable in my opinion. And so is football. But baseball I just. I can't stand. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Alright. I'm, I'm out. On that bad note. On that low note. I'm out. Okay. That's the last thing I'm going to say. Before I call it quits. I play sports and a lot of the guys I know from hockey have the same exact take. I think it's a lot more common than you think. I don't know. I just, I love playing sports. I don't really enjoy watching it. I know I'm weird. I'm the weird one. I do love playing sports though. I get very, I'm very invested. Anyway, love you guys. I will see you tomorrow as always. Bye bye. Peace. The starlight to the starlight to the dark it just begun There he is again Her son is streaming Her son is streaming There he is again Her son is streaming Her son is streaming Reviewing the P.O. Box Uncle Uger's face Sad in this good chip prop Great names take on break Tiny Bernie Sanders LGBTQ Air Force The hole left at your fingertips On A at your door H3 crowded up, babe, the Young Turks online show. Three full fucking years of this, plenty more to go. 90 day fiance, talks of champagne, bourgeoisie. A Trump rally live reaction, a mass riot at DC. There he is again, her son is streaming, her son is streaming.